Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing, guys? All right. Welcome to another arena. Uh, this is a arena where we welcome non-Muslims, atheists, Christians, Islamophobes, whomever, to come and challenge Islam directly or to present their worldviews as they believe them to be true, which then make Islam indirectly false. So it's not a stream for Muslims. So please, Muslims, don't fill up the backstage. We've only got limited spaces. We want to get non-Muslims on. We want educated, opinionated, atheists, Christians. Come and preach. Come and tell us the good news. Atheists, come and tell us why we're all crazy for believing in a sky daddy and a book of fairy tales. Come, come and tell us this stuff. This is what we're here. We're here to. We're here for you. We're here for you. All right. So, inshallah, uh, this is what the show is all about. Um, I have gladiators alongside me who are a bit nicer than me who will respond, inshallah, succinctly, intelligently. So you'll never look stupid asking that same question again, inshallah. First brothers, brother support. Assalamu alaikum, Akhi. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you doing, Hamza? Alhamdulillah. I thought I'd start it earlier just so we keep hold of you because you like disappear. Yeah. Like, into the <clears throat> this is actually a perfect time. And I think a lot of viewers as well, they're more likely to be watching at this time. Yeah, I think what is as well, like, you know, the Arab countries and stuff, because they're like two hours ahead or something, and Turkey's two hours ahead. And so I thought I'd drag it back a little bit. And it helps me as well, because if we can finish like at 12, beautiful. Alhamdulillah. It never does. Um, got... <laughs> huh? It never does. I've seen it for like six hours sometimes. You've Depends done eight hours, haven't you? You've done eight hours. I've done eight hours, yeah. Depends how I'm feeling. Depends how I'm feeling. Allah. It's just the Trini. Salam alaikum, Afi. Wa alaikum assalam. It's good to be here again after a resounding victory by Chelsea Football Club 3 0 against AC <laughs> Malala. Alhamdulillah, the Blues are on top, and that's all that matters. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to let that slide, Hamza. You needed a script for that, mate. No, I, I, you know, Hamza, you, you guys need to be careful, right? You had an open goal, Ronaldo in front of it, and he misses. So I hope today you're not like Ronaldo, and I hope you don't miss those open goals. Take every shot you get, okay? Inshallah. I'll be like Haaland, mate. Uh, Actually, I'll be like the Bruyne. I'll just be lining them up for you. Inshallah. Inshallah. Well, well, I'll put the link out anyway, so let's get the ball rolling. Brothers Hashim is going to join us about 8.15, and inshallah. Sharif about 8.30. So okay, inshallah. inshallah. So we can have some fun and games. I've done a bit of a warm up. Uh, there should be a guy called Pete who might be knocking about the atheist. He's and then there's the Apollino, who's like this kind of hateful Christian guy. He's looking for contradictions. The age of consent apparently is 13 year old in the uh, Hebrew yeah, Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apollino. Fascinating, fascinating claim. But sometimes I feel I'm a little bit too harsh on them in the warm up and they're scared to come to the main event. A little bit. But they'll come back, inshallah. They'll come back. Yeah, if you just... um if you suplex them through a table and then <laughs> you expect them to crawl into the arena, it's like that's it. You know, that's it. I, this is wasn't the... there a time that you said you were being really nice to this this guy? <laughs> <laughs> the problem was right. This geezer came in the warm up and he was acting kind of nice, and then he started calling Muhammad a rapist and a pedophile. And then everyone in the chat said, "Do him." So I did him. <laughs> Stop for Allah, these people, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm just reflecting some of this stuff you've been teaching me as well. So, yeah. Hamza, you said you were reading a book on critical thinking. What book was that? Okay, so the book on critical thinking is this one A Concise Guide. Who's the author? Uh, Tracy Bowell, Robert Cohen, and Gary Kemp. I'll look Doing this with uh, Mr. Ponders, so it's, it's really Ooh, good, man. Okay. Really, really good doing it, really going through it. And I'll be honest with you, you know, what's happening now, subhanAllah, it's like when I when someone says anything to me now, right, it kind of like yeah. freezes in the sky. I'm like, right, was that a comment? Was that an explanation or was that a, a, a claim? And I said, all right, right, the claim, was it? Okay, what was the conclusion and what was its premise? And it's like automatically just that one. Anyone says anything to me straight away, it's like... <laughs> Okay, someone says something like, hey, what's your bloody argument? I can't I start formulating people's arguments for them. Okay, so what you're saying is this this, this means this then. <laughs> oh, I don't know. People have this you know, problem of forming an one argument. Of the most, 
it's one of the most worrying aspects of debating when your opponent says, so what you're saying is that your first premise is this, and that's your second premise, and your sub-assumption is this, and are you saying this is a necessary... All you got to do is take your opponent's argument and put it in, an, uh, put it in a... Dissect it. And automatically they're like, ah... Okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> basically this guy is preparing me. It's like those wrestling videos, preparing me to put me, put me on a table. They're climbing up on the ropes. And <laughs> <just getting ready. laughs> Whoa. Uh, it's it's going to be tough to do that with a Christian because then they'll stop you and say, uh, lo logic isn't from God. That's man-made constructs. So you can't, you can't frame my claim that way. That's how it typically goes. I had a Christian tell me the other day that God is logical and illogical so he can do the illogical and make that illogical thing seem logical. And I asked him, what the hell did you just say and how are you making sense of that? And he just looks at me like the spirit confirms everything I think. I gave up. I left the stream. I packed up and I went home. You should have said to him, your words are a social construct, so I'm going to actually interpret them. <laughs> I think you just gave me a recipe for cheesecake. And then you just start, go you know, you uh, the, the, this this particular um, idea that they have that they could pick and choose. Okay, so we're going to use logic here, but then we're going to say okay, not here. Yeah. Sorry. They want to use it here, but not here. I I, I don't know how that function. Like to read a sentence, I told them to read a sentence. You have to use the laws of logic, the law of identity, the law of non-contradiction. That's how sentences work. You have to know what each and every word means, why it's in that place, and the context that it's in. So just even to be able to think is using logic. Being able to read, you use logic. Being able to yeah. speak, you lose logic. But yeah. unfortunately, Brother Sibu, as you would know, most people don't really think. Did yeah. speak from emotion? Yeah, I mean, Asadullah speaks about this often, that most people are like, I mean, the whole pragmatic view is very important because people, they just look at what benefits them. And because they think atheism benefits them and these things, when it actually makes people miserable, which is why I sometimes like to, if people are acting like that, I like to skip the logic and go straight to the pragmatic implications of atheism and the pragmatic implications of Islam and saying, well, which one's going to make you happier? You've got a worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like this um, analogy. I'm going to use it now. And it's a, it's a good one if anybody wants to steal it. Right. So um, you get a Muslim coach. Right. Who's telling the boxer, listen, you're about to enter the ring. You're going to get punched. You need to punch back. Life's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. You know, this and this and this is going to happen. You've got to guard yourself, X, Y, Z. Then you get a liberal, woke, atheist coach telling the fighter, life's going to be all about pleasure and joy and rabbits and rainbows. And everyone's going to be happy and people are going to hug you. The boxer is not going to hurt you. And that's the difference between <laughs> atheism and Islam because Islam prepares you for a difficult life. And life is difficult, <laughs> but atheism mm. just tells you it's all about pleasure and hedonism. When in reality, all all that ends up happening is that you just end up being lonely and eating pot noodles in front of the TV. So, oh, someone out there is going to feel really personally attacked right now, and I don't know who that is. So, yeah, <laughs> I hope you didn't beat anyone up. <laughs> yeah. Is it the link is on? Is it the link is there? Pinned? Yeah, it's pinned. Okay, alhamdulillah. Oh, I just thought that you guys know. Um, I've been a Muslim twenty one years today. Allah 21 Allah. years ago today, I became a Muslim, mashallah. Allah October the 7th, 2001. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Man. I'm proud to say, I'm proud to say, I'm the first person to do a video with Hamza. Indeed, you were. The interview. Really? Man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, How he interviewed me. How long ago was that? How long ago? How long ago? This was about 11 years ago. Wow. This You've is been before the world knew Hamza. This is when they thought he's just some nice white guy. <laughs> he's a, I, I am, he's a, I am a nice white, white guy. guy. I am a nice white what? guy. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> we know the the uncle still call me a new Muslim, though. New Muslim. What, <laughs> but they always years. do that. To them, you would always be new. Always. You'll never be an older, mature Muslim. I promise you that. Oh, I know that. Yeah. All right. Let's, I've, got the, I've got the guy who was making the most ridiculous arguments earlier. So I'll bring him on. Well, he can have a play. Apolina Lumbera. Hey man, what's it, how's, it, how's it going? All right, mate. Hey, I'm sorry if I if, if I sound a little uh, nervous. I'm just not used to this kind of uh, stuff. No problem. Uh, okay. Uh, about your question earlier, I wasn't a. 
I didn't go into that topic, but uh, you did give me uh, uh, the the curiosity. So uh, I looked it up, and I'm sorry I didn't uh, about what I said. You're not 13 or 12 years old. I was wrong about that. Apparently, the Bible says there's no age of consent. The Bible says the Bible says the Bible says when the when you are mature, when you are uh, uh, when you when you have a uh, purity, uh, what's the word? Yeah. Okay. Purity. So if a girl has puberty at nine, then it's okay, yeah? No, 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 no. Purity starts at uh, apparently at 13, 14 years old. When you have blood, hair over there, you know, a woman. In Ezekiel 16, uh, I'm going to read it. And when I passed by thee and I saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, when thou vest in thy blood, live ye, I said unto thee, when thou hast in thy blood live, and I caused thee to multiply as in the blood of the field, and thou hast increased in, 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 in waxing great. And thou art come to excellent ornament. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown. Where, where, where areas thou hast vast? Okay, you don't need to look, look, Apollino. You don't need to explain to us what puberty is. Because... Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, <laughs> that's the that's okay. the beginning in the Bible. Okay. That's the that's your answer. You don't need to explain to us what a girl what puberty is. When, when yeah, a yeah, girl yeah, menstruates, there's no pedophilia. There's no pedophilia in the in the Bible. That's what I'm, that's what I'm okay. saying. No well, I'll make it easy for you. My daughter menstruated, I think, when she was about ten. My it's eldest. okay, man. Really, really, I really, I really don't care about about that topic. I really, I really don't care about Muhammad being a pedophile. I really don't care about that stuff. Wait, I, just, you I just care about the Quran the Bible. You can't, you the can't word, make a statement. Word, oh, word. Excuse me, you can't just make a statement like that. I didn't you're make the statement, bro. You're coming, he, you're coming, you're coming onto this plat, uh, this panel, and we're trying yeah, to have a civil yeah. discussion, and you're throwing out words like that. If you, if you say that, then you're going to have to say that about a lot of biblical characters as well. And I'm I sure know. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it civil. Yes, pedophilia okay. is endorsed in the Bible, just to be clear. It is something that is taught. In fact, Christ Jesus in the New Testament, when he's speaking about his followers, he tells them, follow the Pharisees for they sit in the seat of Moses. And the Pharisees in their Targumim and in the Talmud, the minimum age is three years old and one day. And Bro, Christ Jesus says, obey and follow them. So then Christ Jesus... Please, brother, we didn't interrupt you. So as a consequence of this, many Christians in that time period continue to marry children. And still to this day, in some areas, we find that practice still occurring. Even recently, up until France, we spoke about this the other time. A girl at the age of 12 years old was considered perfectly fine. So, yes, the Bible does endorse pedophilia. Thank you for raising that point. Apollo, really. what is your next point? Okay. okay. Where is the Quran inspired? What? Where is the Quran inspired? Where did the Quran come from? Come from? It came from the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to Jibril alayhi salam who gave it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who gave it to Muhammad? An angel? Jibril alayhi salam, yes. Okay. Gabriel, whom you call Gabriel. Okay, so because the Bible apparently got corrupted, right? It is corrupted. We know this via the manuscripts. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So be, you say the Bible is corrupted because it has contradictions yes. and errors? And stuff Not like just that. that. It has additions, omissions. It has oh, yeah, interpolations. It has entire word, books and chapters there's actually, added there's throughout. Actually word, there's actually a warning for for men like that. Men that add, add a man that add or 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 take verses from the Bible. Apollino. Apollino. Okay. Yes. Let me just kind of make your argument. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing it. Okay. Do you accept? that the Bible that you read has been corrupted or not? Many times. To it has day. been corrupted. To this day. Okay. You and have, can I ask you, are, you, are you a Catholic? No. What, what, what kind of denomination of Christianity are you? I'm a fundamental. I, I just follow the Bible. Independent Fundamental Baptist, IFB. So he's probably a KJV oh, onlyist. Oh, KJV onlyist? Are you a KJV onlyist? Uh, Reina Valera, uh, Spanish version, uh, and like, like I said, a uh, manuscript. I like, I like to check, uh, uh to DTC, you know, right? So, um, you accept the manuscripts have been the, the, the Bible you read today is corrupted, yes? Many times, like, like I said, to this day, the Bible has been corrupted. You, you have, like, like, for example, we have the get the gay Bible. So, why do you believe what it says? I don't believe that, that one. You have, like, like, like I said, you, you, you have to be. 
you have to check everything you read. Check everything you read. I, th I think make any said, sense. I think he said he doesn't. I think he said an example of the Bible's corruption is the gay Bible, but he doesn't believe in that Bible. He believes in the not gay Bible, which I'm the not one, sure which one that is. He I says believe, it's in Spanish. I believe, I believe in the Bible that is most accurate. That is most uh, appealing. Which one is that? The King James Version and the Reina Valera. Okay. That's the least accurate. The King James Version and the Reina Valera. It is the he says the red letter KGV. That's the least accurate. Why? Because it contains interpolations from the Byzantine type text and the Western text and Caesarian text. There are some, yes, I know. I know some. Yes, I know. That's why you accept authenticity. Look, look, like I calma, said. Calma, 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 calma. Lo siento. Uh, understand me, understand me. Do you understand that the KGV that you use today? In Spanish or English, so that's corrupted. Do you accept that? Yes, there are corruptions. Okay, good. Look, look. I'm gonna read a, a, a passage, okay, from 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 Revelations. For I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues, the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the word of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away. She's part of the book of life and on to the holy city and from the things which are written on of this book. There's a punishment for those men that take that take verses or add verses from the Bible. They die, literally. They die. It's ironic you read from the book of Revelations, mate. Well, I... I, I, who, I who, gave the, who, who gave that information to John? God did. Jesus did. Sorry, is that what it says? Do you see, this is literally God talking. That's not what it says. Yeah, that's literally Jesus talking. It, it says an angel came to John. No, he was taken up. What? John was... Uh, was read it for me, read it for me. The whole chapter? No, read for me where he was taken up. I'm sorry, uh, I, I really don't remember that. that. Okay. Hamza, the link isn't pinned in the comments, by the way. No, no, I'm doing it. I'm doing it now. You were revealed to him, okay? You were revealed. No, who revealed it to John? Revelations. Who revealed it to John? God did. That's not what the verse says. That's not what the, the book says. Then why is Jesus speaking there? Jesus, Jesus, and and, and many other many other uh, characters. Well, not only an angel. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jazz. There, there were many, and the elders, and many other uh, other. Mm -hmm. One second. One second. It's, not, it's, not, it's not only talking about just one being. It's talking one about a lot, of, a lot of them. One second. Okay, yeah. There's, there's also Gal Galatians from 1 to 79, which is not another, but there are some that will you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach and other and, and any other gospel into you that which have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we said before, before. So, so say I know again. If any man preach any go other gospel unto unto them, ye have received, let him be accursed. Like I said again, Muhammad was visited was visited by an angel. And when Muhammad started, he was taken in a cave by darkness. He, the guy, literally wanted to kill kill himself. Not only that, he was in doubt. He he had he had to go to his wife. That's incorrect. He didn't want to kill himself. I know he was not taken by the darkness. There's no, there's, there's no reason to make there's no reason to make things. In the Bible, no man has gone to his to his wife for confirmation. Because because when a, in the Bible, when when a man when God to, uh, talked to a man, the man obeyed, no doubt. In I the Quran, Muhammad was in doubt and, and went to. I have no idea what he's saying. I'm sorry, man. Uh, my my is not, jumble. No, it's not your mic. It's your thinking. That's the problem, I think. My friend, I'm just talking about, about the Bible, about Muhammad in the beginning, the angel. If you look at Joseph, Joseph Smith, uh, the Mormons, that guy too was visited by supposedly Michael the angel, and supposedly gave the, gave him tablets, golden tablets, with a new message. Who knows? Maybe the the Quran the Quran got, got corrupted. 
And maybe it's just Hamza. I think he might be a bit mentally ill. It's just like a really like strange word salad. I think so. He's reading anti-Islamic sites. That's the problem. No, when he's I, I just, I, no, I just think it's a word salad. I don't think he's. I just a, love the word. I just love the word. Thing. I don't. I don't want to like the bit. I don't believe really, um, uh, you. Uh, I just love the word. It? Not mentally there. It, it would be better just to drop him. To be quite honest. Good. All right. Sorry. Okay. Fair enough. Why not answer my, my, my questions? Because you're talking gibberish, my friend. I'm just talking about the Bible. You're not you're talking. You, you talk. You say you're talking about the Bible, and then you're talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then you're talking about the Quran. Yeah. You're talking gibberish. You're no, talking no, gibberish. No. You what? It's understandable. I know my English is not that good. I know that. It's, it's nothing to do with your English. It's comprehension. Look, it just if you, it, it's just logical, logical thinking. No, there's nothing logical about what you're saying. If Allah, if Allah did say he would preserve the Quran, and if he did preserve the Quran, why are there so much contradictions in everything the oh, Quran? Oh, okay. So, why? let me make it easy. Assalamu alaikum, brother Hashim. How are you, my brother? What, what, um, what contradictions are you referring to? Uh, okay, there's one. What? I'm going to give you one. Wait. Uh. There, uh, there's many. I'm, I'm just going to give you one. So what, what we'll do, like I said earlier, we can Corona play a game. Apollino. 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 Yeah. Pay attention. Don't okay, quote to me Quran verse numbers. I want you to tell us what the contradiction is. So that's your that's your conclusion. There's a contradiction here. And here's your premise. This is says this, and this says this, and this right. is a contradiction of that. And like I said earlier, we'll play a game. You can bring a contradiction from the Quran. And then we're going to, cause because your standard of accepting a text is there's no contradictions, I'm assuming. Therefore, if we can demonstrate contradiction in what you believe, in the book you believe in, I then you'll I, have to I, reject, I, one second, one second, according to your standard, you'll have to reject what you believe in because it contains contradiction. Not really. Not really. The Bible, the Bible. Do you accept if the book contains contradiction? One second. Do you accept if a book contains contradiction, it's not from God? My friend, God knows the, the, the hearts of man. He, Apollino, he, do you accept if a book contains contradiction, it's not from God? If it contains contra contradiction, it's not from God. It's not from God? No. So if a book contains contradiction, it's not from God. That's your claim, yes? No, no, no. No, I believe. Because like, like I said, the Bible has contradiction. So the Bible has contradictions? Yes, by man. Yes. So, so, so you believe it's reliable? The Quran, the Quran, more than yes, more than the Quran, because the, the Bible has warnings about this. A lot of, a lot of, lots of warnings. The Quran says it's per perfectly preserved and it's from Allah. If it is true, why couldn't he follow the fine, what the fine thread? And not why are you believing in a book that's corrupted and contains contradictions? This, I could I could like the same to you. Why do, you, why do you believe a book that contains contradictions? And it, one second, just I try to understand your 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 madness. So it's no madness, my friend. You just love you. You believe a book that's been corrupted and contains contradictions is a reliable source of information. Is that true? I'm gonna get up with simple. God, those who are saved by Jesus Christ, those who believe... I'm not interested in your preaching. I just want you to address the question. Are you saying... Uh, well, I'm, it's a question I'm asking you. Why do you believe a book is reliable that contains corruption and contradictions? Why would you believe it's reliable? Why? Because it's from God. But why? How would a book from God contain contradictions? How? Because God gave the message. He didn't write the book. If the book was written by God, that book will so be... the book's not written by God? It's written by man. So why do you trust it? Because men commit, commit errors and contradictions. Men are, are men. Oh, so why but are you believing in a book that contains errors? Why are you believing in a book that contains errors? How do you know what you're believing is true is not part of the error? Because I have the Holy Spirit. I can, I can, I know. You have the Holy Spirit. Why do you believe you've got a Holy Spirit? It's simple. I can, if you come with me with a new message, I, I can discern. 
that's under that, that's under message and 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 tell if it's from God or not. No, you that's can't. Me. Yes, no, I can. You, you can give me a message right now, you and I'll say if it's not from God or not. You 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 simply can't. Why not? Anyway, bring your contradiction. Bring your contradiction. <laughs> Who was the first Muslim? Who was your first Muslim? Can you bring your contradiction, please? May I'm not going to make the argument for you. Just make your contradiction. It's just a question. Just a question. Who was, the first, Who was the first Muslim? Amongst whom? Mankind or Arabs? No, Muslim. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. From who? From the beginning. From the beginning? Yes. From all, Adam. All, all, all this time. All this time. Adam. From the beginning to, to, to this point. Who was the first Muslim? Adam. You're wrong, my friend. Why does the Quran say differently than, than you? The Quran is, says perfectly that it was Muhammad, that it, that it was uh, somebody, some, someone else, that it was somebody else. There's no telling who was, who was the, first, the, the, first, the first Muslim in the Quran. Have you got the reference? Bring up the reference where it says that and then we'll explore it. Yes, okay. Uh, wait a minute. I'll put my notes somewhere over here. I have a mess. <laughs> By the way, do you know what the term Muslim means? The first believer, believing in God. What does the term Muslim mean? Believing in God, uh, he who believes in God. Okay, so did Adam believe in God? My friend, is your definition. Well, you, yeah, but you agreed with that. Does Adam I'm believe in God? I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Christian. I know you're not a Muslim. I, I, asked, I asked you for the definition of Muslim. So, yes, which, but who is your definition of God? Anyone, anyone who, who does is your definition of God? Anyway, bring the references. We'll have a look. Okay. Right. But I agree with uh, Hamza when he said that why would you believe in a book I which you the, the clearly have conceded okay. that has mistakes and errors and contradictions in it, like the Bible? Why would you even consider that to be the book from God? Why do you consider the Quran? Because we, unlike you, we believe our holy book does I not have contradictions. The, I believe the word of God. No, no. I'm saying, yeah. unlike you, we Muslims do not believe our book, which is from God, has contradictions. You believe your book from God has contradictions. There's Man a big make, difference here. Men make contradictions, my friend. Men are not perfect. Men can be tempted. Very can, God, can God make mistakes? No. Okay, so the book you got, is it from God or is it from men? From God. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The message is from God. The book is from men. So the message was corrupted. Is that what you're saying? Part of it. Part of it. But the main message, the main message, who is God, who, who is Jesus Christ, is uh, is stays the same from Genesis all the way to Apocalypse. Okay. So from Genesis all the way to you mean Revelation. Okay. So, yeah, so Revelation. who who in Genesis? Uh, let's you say the find, first. Let's you, say you, the first, you can the find old, hidden messages, hidden messages in the Bible. No, no, about I'm saying in the Old Testament, if you're saying I'm going to give you a reference in, in, in Genesis. Yeah, yeah. While you're bringing the reference, let me just tell you this: that in the Old Testament, did anyone forget the Old Testament? In fact, the Old and the New Testament, did anyone worship a triune God? A triune God? I really don't know. You know what's a triune God? A tri no, not really. Okay. Do you believe? In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Oh, yes. Okay, so that but is a triune God. That is a triune God. Show me anyone in the entire Bible who Look, worshipped the Father, uh, Son, and Holy Spirit as God. The Christians. Anyone, any, any one person, whether he's a prophet, a messenger, a non-prophet, a disciple, an apostle, doesn't matter who it is. Anyone in the entire Bible who ever worshipped a triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as God. Anyone? Yes, Other anyone. Christians? Show me I'm any sorry. person where they worship a triune God. Go on. Any From person. the entire Bible, Old and New Testament, both. Paul. Who? Paul. Paul. Yeah. Okay, show me where Paul worships a triune God. Go on. My friend, it's not that God is one, three in one. No, it's not yeah. that. That's what I want to see. Where does he believe God is three? I don't believe in that either. I don't believe in three. In three equals one. No, he's wrong. 
The Bible never speaks of that. The Bible. I just asked Bible, you: Do you believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? You said yes. Sir. Yes, I do. But okay. you don't. You don't understand the connection of the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So apparently, did Paul, apparently did Paul worship the, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit anywhere? Yes. Show me where. He 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 worshipped the Father and the Son in the Spirit. No, no. Show me where he worships the Father and the Son in Spirit. Look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I can search it. I can Hold search on. it. So, yes. you know, let me get this right. In the entire Bible, I don't think it was important for God to tell anyone that he manifests as three persons and he should worship me as a triune God, not just no. the Father. No. Is that what you're telling me? It wasn't it's important for God to say that, right? Which is a, is you told me that was the central the central message of the Bible is the same to it worship this, this God to worship this Jesus one Christ. God this one God Jesus made of three persons this Jesus was the Christ central is message. message Jesus but Christ nowhere in the Bible it says that that's your Jesus central Christ message coming to this earth and dying on, the, on, on that cross is the main message no no earlier you, you said in, you can find that message in Genesis you said the main message was to believe in this one God and then I asked you is it the triune God and then you agreed with me. And now you switch. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that is. I claim God. I don't know. I know about the Trinity, but I, like I like I said, I don't oh, believe in that. Then, if you know about the Trinity, look, the that, Trinity. that thing from, from Trinity, I claim God. From comes uh, also uh, Indians and other other cultures. Like I said, that 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 that, that, uh, that belief comes from the the Catholic belief, the Catholic truth. What the Trinity comes from the Catholic belief. Oh yes. Well, your, ent your entire yeah. Bible comes from the Catholic belief. Not really now. It didn't exist uh, until before the 16th century. Is that right, it just? <sighs> they didn't exist before the Protestants. Look, you. I I check the manuscripts. Okay, I come from the from from the original manuscripts. I check them. What the original language? manuscript? Apollino. What original manuscript? Yeah. The one that we <laughs> all of them. Man. They're not. It's not just one. There are a lot. Do you, do you believe you have an original manuscript? Do you know what language it was in? Forget about the date. No, forget, forget you know that. Forget that. Do, 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 do you believe Greek, you have an original? Christian. Okay, so what's the, the earliest Jewish. manuscript you have of the Bible? The Jewish. The New Testament. The Jewish, the Hebrew. What is the earliest? Give me a date. Uh, New, New, New Testament? New Testament. Uh, I'm sorry. I uh, really don't. I haven't gone into, into, into that that, that depth yet. I thought you studied you, the You just said you had an original. Well, I really did. I really did study, but I really don't remember. I don't remember. Okay. okay. Anyway, I think we are going too many tangents. Let's stick to the. Let's bring you back to the. You were going to show us some contradictions. Have we got the reference. Yeah, yeah it shows a contradiction. So we, we can just mock bring, you first. Bring up the reference. What's the, what's the reference? I'm sorry. The link is still not pinned. I think it should be. Oh no, it is. Yeah, Hold yeah. on. Oh, I see it. My bad. That's Hashim's fault. I told the atheists and non-Muslims to put the big boy pants on. <laughs> You see all the thumbs down, Hamza. Watch, look, look all the thumbs all right. down. All right, Apollino, you you you're a waste of time. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> From the frying pan into the, into the fire, basically. Hey, is that Jason? Hey, is that Jason? Jason, Hello? turn off your YouTube, man. Jason, turn off your YouTube. Hello, Jason. Hello, Jason. From Manchester. From Manchester. Hi, guys. You okay? I can hear you. Turn off your YouTube. Turn yeah. off your YouTube. You got your tab open, I think. Is it, is it better? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that no. okay? Oh, no. Uh, I can still hear you. Uh, Switch off YouTube. Hear you. Switch off YouTube. There must be a YouTube tab. Switch open. off YouTube. There must be a YouTube tab open. Uh, just give me a second. You can't hear me. Yeah, I think it's better now. Can, 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 yeah, I think it's better now. Can, can, can you hear me? Why not? Yeah, I can still hear the echo. Pete McKenzie. Oh, hello, gentlemen. Pleasure. <clears throat> so, as you see that, I've uh, taken a couple of religions in a bucket. And out of them, uh, your religion was quiet, standing, a unique one, but still there are barriers that I 
want to, to clear. I hope that you guys can clear it on behalf of me as I see. Uh, say me something that actually make your religion different out of the others. Pete. Yeah. Are, are you reading from a piece of paper? Uh, no, absolutely not. Because you just said the exact same thing to me in the warm-up and I responded to you. We should have moved on from this point again. You're acting like no one's ever answered you. No, 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 no. I mean, this was, I, I mean, you did not give me the answer. You said something, but actually that was not the answer I was supposed to. Well, no, no, so I, I, just, I, I exposed your worldview. You was going on about uh, marrying a nine-year-old was wrong. You then yeah, realized yeah, you have no standard of morality. Right. Anyway, make your point, make your point, go on. Mm. So who's Pete? Is he an atheist? What, what is his uh, background? Hello. Pete. So, you know, what, as you see, you said belief? same What's your like, current belief before you ask me? Yeah, what? Are you an atheist, agnostic, Christian? What are you? What's your belief? Yeah, of course, I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist. Well, so I picked up a couple of religions after a demise of my uh, beloved one. And then out of them, a logical religion and your religion quite stands up. But the barrier is that I need something that makes your religion unique out of all of them. A unique one. As Hamza, he told me. Yeah, of course, bro. You told me that. Uh, if okay. Hinduism so was true to the followers, then every single religion is false. That's like, there's no differences, but that was not what I was looking for. I was looking for something that actually changes, that, that's unique, that's unique beauty. I'm searching for that. Okay, and I'm Pete, looking out for can that. I ask you, can I ask you a quick question? What is, it that yeah, made you, what is it that made you to seek a religion after the demise of your loved yeah. one? What is it that triggered it? Uh, what, what are you expecting yeah, from like religion? This. Yeah, you know, since my birth, I was being an atheist, right. and I did not believe in the God. Uh, recent around a year ago, my wife she just passed away. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I was all alone. There is no one. It's all alone. It's almost been three, six, three hundred days plus being all alone. No one. Just that type of thing triggered me so much. And that stressed at me so freaked out. I don't want to find an answer. I asked people. I went to the church and they told, yeah, they told something weird. And I just got back. And looking for one answer. Just send me one clean my barrier off. That's it. So, Pete, I, I just want to yeah. just make one small point and then Hashim, uh, you know, you, um, you can carry on. Go ahead. Because I was really burning to say this for some time now. The thing is, you want to know what makes Islam different, and the answer is yeah, that, of course. That, that that was the thing I was searching for. Yeah, yeah. So the answer is that Islam is the truth, and because it's the truth, it is something that your innate nature will yearn out to. So the concept of God in Islam is a concept that you can come to, even if you've never read the Quran. You can come to that concept. It's a very clear concept. It's something within you. It's part of your innate disposition. And the promises of God in the Quran, the promises that when you remember God, you will find peace and that this life is a test and the trials of this life become easier with our relationship with God. And when we love God and we have hope in God and we trust God, these things you will experience yourself, Pete, when you read the Quran and you apply its teachings. And I really recommend that, you know, if you've gone through especially something like a loss of a loved one, I'm very sorry to hear that. You really need to experience Islam. It's not just some abstract thing where you know, giving you formulas about this is the truth because of this. Like you, 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 I think if you get yourself a copy of the Quran, we can send one out to you and you start reading, especially uh, when it comes to chapter 18, where it deals with these things about death and pain and suffering and sometimes good things happening to bad people and bad things happening to good people. Um, and, you know, all, this life is essentially a test, and again and again, this comes up in the Quran. So, Hashim, please continue. Sorry for interrupting, but I really wanted to share that. No, no, I wanted to hear what you have to say with regards to this. I'll just give salams to Sharif. Welcome, brother. Wa alaikum salam and salams to the brothers as well. Wa alaikum salam. So, yeah, Pete, I think um, 
uh, Saburis, right? That somehow it seems like your your fitra, which we call in Arabic your inner disposition, has somehow been awakened in a way, uh, because it it is something that every child uh, is born with. You know this nature of theirs to seek out God, to seek out this one God. You know, uh, I think there was there are some papers in the uh, journal of uh, in the International Journal for Psychology of Religion. And they found out that it uh, initially they thought that anthropomorphizing um, God in in some way was the nature what children would seek out too. But then on further research, they they, dis, uh, they have discovered that this wasn't the case. And it is they have done quite a few experiments uh, and surveys, and this is uh, something they found quite uh, interesting uh, in research in their recent develop in a, in the in the recent development in in their research. Mm. So. When your dear one, any loved one, say somebody's parent or their wife or the children die, I think even atheists realize that there must be something more uh, in life than this. You know, we don't just, we are not just born, uh, you know, grow up, uh, eat, drink, you know, get married. Um, I don't know, do have a job, go to college, school and all that, and then die eventually. You know, there must be something more than that because our life, it's not just defined by this 70, 80, 100 years, whatever we live in this world. There must be something more than that. So do you believe that there is a possibility of afterlife, after death? Yeah, of course. Uh, I never believed in it, but certainly very recent times since should her demise, uh, I was somehow pulled into that by some force. I don't know what, but actually it just pulled me for that state of believing. Could there be something more? I see that we're born, we grow up, and age, and we're death. And that's it. That's that's the point of life. And that's I just want to. I got that type of thought. Yeah. So you see, as human beings, we differ from the animals. Yeah. We have rationality, which you're using. Alhamdulillah, we can see that these are the faculties you're using in order to understand life. The animals, you know, they graze, they die. Uh, it's it's basically just a life cycle for them. But for us human beings. That we, because of our faculty of reasoning, we know that there is something more than that. So this is what differentiates us from the animal world. Yes, our rationality and this God-given intellect and rationality is something that we utilize on a daily basis. So tell me, because you know earlier when you came on the stream, the first thing I think you said was there was something unique about Islam. What is it that you found yeah. that was unique in Islam? I just... I found it quite to be a logical concept of God, the concept of how they just don't deny the prophets and um, Jesus being instead a son of God and just being a messenger after all, and Moses being mentioned, and all this kind of a triggered me out. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Mashallah. You've been speaking to some good Muslims, oh, I hope, <laughs> because what, what you learned is, uh, is absolutely true. You know, as Muslims, we do not distinguish between the prophets of God. You know, for us, all of them in the Quran, Allah says, "Land of Arabia, ahadim min rusuli." Okay, do not we do not distinguish between the prophets and messengers. Now, because all the prophets, all the true prophets of God, they had the same message. Yes, so they yeah. were all reminding us to believe and worship, and to do the will of this one Almighty God. And this is unique. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the religions, you know, especially in Abrahamic faith, uh, in, in Judaism, yeah. Christianity, Islam, you'll find this in the scriptures, in the Bible and also in the Quran. The similar similar names of the prophets, you know, um, in, there, there's differences, obviously, in the stories, in the narrative. But as Muslims, you know, we do not stop at Moses like the Jews did. And nor we, do we stop at Jesus like the Christians did. We stop at the last and the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Therefore, yeah. we, we believe in uh, Moses, in Jesus, uh, in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And obviously all the prophets before Moses as well. All the so, way up to Adam. Well, yeah. So as you see that uh, in the Quran of yours, it's been mentioned that Jesus was a prophet and Moses was a prophet as well. Absolutely. But I guess Absolutely. it's in the... In the Judy scriptures, uh, in the, they just in the Judy scriptures they just mentioned about Jesus, I guess. And uh, is there any script? Any is there any prophecies regarding uh, the arrival of the final messenger in the Bible? 
Yes, there is actually. Um, so there is in Isaiah 42 and also in Deuteronomy 18. And perhaps uh, Brother Ijaz might be able to give you more. But this is, you know, something, if you look at the, the story of all the prophets and messengers, yes, they all want to save mankind and make them come back to the original um, message of God, which is to believe and worship only one God. Like, you know, I don't know if you were listening to the previous guy who was a Christian and I asked him to show me a single passage in the entire Bible where God tells yeah, well, I, I was listening for him. I was listening for him. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for him. Comes to thought that there was an Iran uncle uh, that would be shut yield, and I was waiting. Right. So I was asking him if, if he can point out a single passage in the entire Bible where God tells anyone, or in fact, any prophet or messenger has ever worshipped a triune God, a Trinity, and he was unable to give. And this is usually the answer we uh, we are waiting for from the Christians, which they haven't provided yet. So their most important doctrine of the Trinity, which is not in the Bible, is strange, isn't it? Like in Islam, the most important um, doctrine of ours is to believe in one God, you know? So that when, when somebody becomes uh, a Muslim, we ask them to testify that there is no God except Allah. And that is the first pillar in Islam. Now, if you look at the Quran, you will find this throughout the Quran, that Allah is one, that is Allah had. Yes, it's very clear. So we don't have to go about uh, a philosophical lecture or something to find out uh, and to know about the Trinity. Even a child will yeah. understand. When I, all I need to do is read the relevant passage to a child To when they ask me, okay, where does Allah say that he's one? Uh, go to chapter 112. Yes, the very first line of that, the first passage uh, in that. That's it. And they'll, they'll get the answer. So anyway, bringing you back to uh, the understanding of afterlife, about the prophets, about the oneness of God. The message of Islam in its essence is pretty simple. It's very straightforward. Yes. So, Pete, let me ask you, was your wife yeah. a believer in God? No, she was not. She was just... Okay. Anyone no. from your parents? Uh, I guess somewhat my okay. father, he just partially believed on it. I think he was a... Right. Uh, the, the reason... Yeah, the reason he was not much of his faith. He was not much of his faith. He just didn't bother. He didn't just, you know, make a big mess out of it. And right. he was just, I think he was just a believer. I'm not sure, but you know, I'll, I mean, we, he, I lost him at a very young age. Okay. Like 12 to 11. All right. Sorry to hear that. Uh, it, it does make life difficult. Um, obviously, with members of your family, you know, passing away, it, uh, and it gets more difficult. And I'm, um, I'm not surprised that it make, made you think about the afterlife because this is a journey which we all will have to undertake. You know, whether you're an atheist, agnostic, regardless of your belief as a Muslim, Christian, doesn't matter what it is, there's one thing yeah. certain, and that is death. And the mm -hmm. question, this question has remained, you know, like from, from, I don't know, time immemorial, what happens to us after death? And Islam provides you that answer, you know? And it's pretty clear that on the there'll be a day of judgment and mm -hmm. God is going to judge us. Yes. And he's, this life of ours in this world is a test. Yeah. Yes. So God is going to judge you based on how you performed in this in this world. Yes. He didn't just send us in the world without any guidance. He sent us prophets and messengers who were human beings like us. Yes, and they showed by yeah. example how to lead a life which is righteous and pleasing to God. Okay, and this, yeah. uh, for example, we believe in the Torah, which was given to Moses. We believe in the Injil, which was given to Jesus uh, Christ. And we believe in the final revelation, the Quran, uh, to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. And yeah, one more, I forgot, the, the Zubur given yeah. to uh, Dawood or David, peace be upon all of them. And so this if, is I, if, I, so if I accept it, just will I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'm very bad. I mean, just a lot of sins once done, and will it already be forgiven? A lot of sins, I mean, a lot of them. Look, my okay. brother, you know, one thing that the Prophet ﷺ, Prophet Muhammad Sallam taught us is that anyone who accepts Islam, anyone who says the Shahada with a sincere uh, intention, all his previous past sins are not only wiped out, 
but they are even converted to good deeds. So it's yeah. it's like you've so, you've won yeah. you've won the jackpot basically, you know, without doing much other than obviously this step of coming into Islam. So it's it's something that is a mercy from Allah, you know, mercy from God that you're willing to take that step to do the will of God and then to lead your life based on his will rather than our whims and desires. So if I accept it, that, that, what, that what about my wife and is there anything I can do on behalf of her? You see, when, when you will be standing on the day of judgment in front of God, yes, you will be yeah. accountable for what you did. And they will yeah. be accountable for what they did. Okay? Before you breathe your last, you have the opportunity to make a U-turn from that sin for life, that life which... I mean, what about her? What, what about her? I mean, that's... Like I said, said everyone, you know, on the Day of Judgment, you're not going to answer on my behalf. You're not going to answer on behalf of Hamza or these brothers here in the panel or your, or your mother or your, your wife or your children. Everyone no, I mean, asks no. for themselves. I mean, what is, is there any do? way? I can... Yeah, go on. Is there any way I can just? Is there any way? So I just make her. Just she never knew about religion. And, yeah. yeah. So God will judge her based on that. So we are not going to make the decision here in this panel whether she's going to heaven or hell. That's not up to us. Okay. If she didn't hear, if she, if the message hasn't reached her, uh, or. There is anything that, you know, one thing that we know for certain is that God oh. will not be unjust with anyone. He will never, ever be unjust with anyone. So know that, that he'll be fair on that day of judgment, unlike the judges in this world, okay? Unlike the courts in this world, unlike the lawyers and solicitors in this world. I mean, okay? Who can be corrupted? God will never be unjust with you, your wife, your children, any of us in this world or who live before us or are going to live after us. I, mean, I, just, want, I just want to know that is there anything I can do behalf of her? Because she was this, she was a cause for my vagueness. It's in the hands of God. That's all I can tell you. Because you see, I cannot speak on behalf of God. All I can say is that God is not going to be unjust with her or with anyone. So if she, if the message hasn't reached her, if she didn't know about religion, if she didn't have the opportunity, then it's up to God Almighty. He's, he's the most merciful, the most kind. You know, there's there's a hadith which says, there's a, a, a prophetic narrate, narration which says that Allah has created mercy and he has divided it into 100 parts. And of that 100 parts, he has only sent one part, 1% 1 of that in this world. And this 1% is what we see in the world when we see a merciful parent, all right? Whether it's the mercy for a human parent or an animal or anything, all the, all the love and I'm mercy sure. that you see is something which is only 1% of what he has sent. He has reserved the 99% for the Day of Judgment. Okay? I mean, no, yeah, no, if I, if I converted... Going to, make a I mean, decision. if I converted... If I, if I converted, will, will, she be, will she be giving a second chance? No, no. When you convert, or when you do a good yeah. deed or a bad deed, only you are the one accountable for that. Only, the, only so, you... So what about be, her? It, like I said... For her, it's her deeds, it's her, uh, it's her role in this world, it's her test, and God will be the one who will decide. Like I said, he's, he's extremely merciful and he's extremely just. So if, if any other brothers want to add something, please do. Please feel free, inshallah. But Brother Pete, I think he's... Pete, what about you? Yeah, so uh, Pete, well, I was going to just, just add... Is there any rituals or something like that? Is there any rituals or something like that I can perform? So, look, Pete. What, is there any when, rituals? Is there any, is there any forms of prayers? Is there any forms of anything, anything, probably anything? Yeah. So, the, look. And, and the money is not a matter of fact at all. The money is not a matter of fact at all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a money issue. The thing is, every person is only accountable for themselves. Um, so, in terms of her that's for herself for you it's yeah, for of course, yourself that's for her and but, behalf, she, was, she was she was my beloved and she, she i have to do it with something behalf of is there anything anything no problem yeah, but brother yeah, Pete, so. why are you assuming that she will be in a bad place why don't you have faith in god almighty being merciful 
being just, being kind, and being loving. But she just didn't give. She 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 was she was you know she was just sometimes. How long were you married, Pete? Pete, how long were you married? For ten. How long? But you know, she, I want I want an answer. She was like, she was not that. She was sinning. Now, how long were you married for? How long were you married for? From 15. What? Why do you keep banging the tin every time? That's a good question. So, so, Put the tin down! Yeah. So, 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 Pete, look, there's, there's one thing I just wanted to share, which is, look, you're going through pain right now. You're going through suffering. You're going through an immense amount of trauma. Islam has a solution for you. And that is that in the remembrance of God do, do hearts find rest. God tells us in the Quran that human beings are going to go through tests and trials. and No, well, well, I came for answers. I came for answers here. I need an answer. Yeah, yeah. So, Pete, what, what I'm trying I mean, to say. I'll do anything on behalf of her. Yeah. So, look, Pete, uh, I, I sympathize with what you're saying. I understand the no, pain that you're... That. I, I need an answer. She was, she was the only thing. Okay, so Pete, what 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 are you assuming will happen to her? What do you think? Because it it seems like you are thinking negatively, like something bad will happen to her. What do you think will happen? Was, Look, we all, you know, was, everyone on this panel, a human. Pete, everyone okay. on this panel and outside it, sins, yeah. Every single human sins, but the best of them is the one who repents. Yes. So please try to understand. I know you you want an answer right now, but right now is not the day of judgment. None of us know in what I mean, state. What can I do? Out. Like I said, right, what Pete, do you think Pete, you... can I just tell you? Yeah, yeah. go on. Nothing. Right, Pete, what I was going to say is that do not assume the worst. Okay? But you you still have a chance in terms of bettering your life and like it's not, my, it's not family. my life it's hers as well she's a cause yeah, her, her life ended it's everything of mine her life ended yours did not so we leave the faith of your wife to god almighty who is just kind and loving and merciful yes what we can do is what we have at present is our lives how do we improve that how do we get better okay just because you know just because somebody sins it doesn't mean that's the end of the world we, god created us with this weakness to sin and every bunny adam every single human sins there's no doubt about it it is how you how you make the change from that sinful life to a righteous life that is what you need to work upon rather than just worrying about the sins that you have committed what is the next step? What's the point of worrying about the past when you got your whole future in front of you? You have children, Pete. Has he left? Yeah. He, okay. He's may, left. may Allah um, make it easy for him. May Allah give him hidayah. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a tragic thing to have a death in the family. It, it does. It's, it's not an easy thing. Yeah. It, it, it is, but you know, maybe he's still listening and maybe he got, he was emotional, so he left. But look, if he is listening or anyone's listening uh, and they're in a similar situation, at least for yourself, because you're going through pain, the Quran is there to take, take you on a paradigm shift so that you understand what this life is all about. And only Allah can give you peace in this life. You know, everyone's going to go through pain and suffering and, and the you know, the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family members passed away. Um, so, you know, like Hamza said, you can't do anything for other people. You only can do things for yourself. And at the end of the day, people are going to be tested uh, and God's not going to be unfair to anybody. And, you know, something which I really try and emphasize a lot when I get these types of questions is, my concern, Hamza's concern, Hashim, Ijaz, Sharif, yourself, all of us and all of humanity and all of us that have ever lived and are ever going to live, all human beings, all of their compassion 
is nothing compared to the compassion of God because God's the one who put that compassion in us. So that you, you can't think to yourself, God is going to be unfair to anybody because God is the source of all of that compassion and justice and mercy that we actually have. So it's impossible for God uh, to be unjust because God legislates on himself. God is the one who uh, is never going to be unjust to his servants. God can do what he wants, but he says that he's never unjust. And that's it. We just need to leave it there. We don't need to delve into it further. But look, you know, this reminds me of uh, what a scholar once said about, um, uh, I mean, just paraphrasing what he was saying about life and the difficulties we go through. He said, what alternative is there to Islam? Islam makes the pain of this life easier. There's no alternative. The other alternative is going through more pain and misery. Islam just makes that pain much, much easier. Uh, Hashim, I don't know what else to add, but it was a very difficult um, it is, yeah. I mean, that in a family is not easy. It can affect a person. He said it's been 300 days or something, so it's under a, a year. year. Under a year, yeah. It's it's not an easy thing to get over, especially if you're very close to someone and there's nobody else in your life. He said he's all alone. There's no family. It can be pretty lonely. Um, all I can say is we can pray for the brother. You know, may Allah give him hidayah. Uh, and it's... It if if somebody could reach out to him in his local area, I don't know. Uh, yeah, if you got his email account. address, so if he wants to come back and put his email. Oh, is he in the private chat? No, he left. He left. No, he I left. didn't. I didn't remove him. He removed himself. The yeah. thing is, you see, he needed a kind of reality check as well. You know, you remember Airplane? Remember the movie Airplane? Which one? No. The one where you know the Leslie Nielsen and they're on the plane. Hey, where, where, the woman, where the woman slaps the person. <laughs> Everyone's slapping this woman. <laughs> Let me see. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Stop it. <laughs> you not see that? Yeah. Very, very funny. He needed a reality slap, man. Just come out of this. No, no, no. no. The, thing, the thing is, when you're emotional like that, you just need a heart to heart. And yeah. I think in his. Guys, I have some empathy here. <laughs> the yeah, so the guy's going through some terrible time. I dealt with this geezer in the warm up. He was talking about the age of Aisha and all sorts. Yeah, yeah. but you see, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch with that. There's something always behind that story, Hamza. You need. No, I agree. What, you know, I agree. As soon as he said something, I picked up on that initially, and I did not even go into that Christian thing or Islamic thing or something. Just yeah. find out what the problem was with him. And there was something troubling him. And so, so, if his wife died know? last month, I get it. A year ago. No, but, but look, some people. Yeah, it, they it, have it, so, it, yeah. it, it sounds really. Look, the long of it and the short of it is that when you're going through trauma like this, you're actually in the closest state that you can be to getting guidance from Allah. Because when people are on a ship, as Allah mentions in the Quran, and then, you know, the mushrik even, even the the, the idol worshiper and the polytheist, they call upon Allah and they make their religion sincere to him. So, you know, he is in the perfect position to actually recognize what the truth is. Sometimes these things like the age of uh, Aisha radiallahu or or, you know, apostasy or just any of these types of things, they can be a barrier because people don't understand, uh, you know, how, how these things work. But I think in this particular situation, um, you really have to meet a person face to face, like over. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Stream and it's very difficult to build that connection, you know. Yeah. We need to we need to find out where this guy was coming in from. Inshallah. I don't know, was he UK based? Uh, I don't I think he sounded American. Oh, oh my god, what on earth is that? <laughs> why why are you dressed for the beach? That you know what? That, that that's quite yeah, that's quite an entrance. It's like it's like when the Undertaker used to make those entrances in the why, why are you dressed for the beach, man? Jason, the shades on your inside. Jason, what, what is the message you're trying to convey here? Who's this? Do you know this guy? Yeah, it's Jason, Pastor Jason Burns, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He, he was in the park a couple of weeks ago. What's he doing? I don't I've, know. I've, doing. I, my first question, have you ever read this man? We can't see it. You need to... It's, That's your uh, first question. Dr. Martin, yeah, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Have you ever heard of him or read him? What, Have what you is, ever heard of Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones? No. What is the point you're trying to make? What is your argument? The the point is is uh, Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones. You can get his book at the Banner of Truth. Okay. He preached for many many years, verse by verse, through the Bible. This is by 
uh, Steve Lawson, The Life of Martin Lloyd-Jones. And there are about 12 volumes on Romans, about nine or eight volumes on Ephesians. And the point what I'm getting at is when you have people on the show, they're not representative of Christianity. You're not criticizing someone like Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. It's not there. Right. There's a lack of... So there's Jason, a lack before of we, before wait a minute, there's a lack of... Book. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a, lack yeah. of, there's a lack of scholarship. If you don't know who Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones is, he was the greatest preacher in the West in the 20th century of Christianity, and you don't know who he is. And yet you can be on the show critiquing Christianity, yet one of the main modern defenders of Christianity, you don't even know who he is. Jason Burns, I would love nothing more if this geezer was alive to come on the arena. And we'll ask yeah. him the same questions. What, what is the new thing you learned from him? Let's we, see, we, Jason. We, we, want, you, we want you Christians, what we learn, what we want you you Christians to come with scholarship and come with answers. We don't want you babbling but, on but about the, the Holy Spirit is, and we don't understand because we don't have but, it. But, 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 but when, ha when Hashim's asking a question, when that gentleman was talking about the Bible and there's faults in the Bible, if you'd read Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, go on his website where there's thousands and hundreds of sermons and books that you can read, you will get a coherent defense of the inspiration of the Bible. And you could read what Lloyd-Jones has said and critique it rather Who than get someone on the show. No, but, but he was the Jason. greatest preacher of the 20th century. Who cares? No, no, no. Cares? no, no. He, was the greatest preacher. he was the greatest preacher yeah, of the 20th century. You can't ignore really him. Pre you can't preaching ignore the same, him. Preaching the same nonsense that you preach. Yeah, so what? Okay, no, the, point is, verse, the point is... The point is... He spent... Just one second. Just one second. Listen. You. Listen, heck. Okay, the point is that young Christian lad admitted there was errors in the Bible. Admitted it, the Bible had been corrupted. Hashim didn't need to demonstrate anything to him. He came and conceded that straight away. So go argue with him. Yeah. And, and the thing have you come with that. an argument or is this it? Yeah, this is what you've got. Is this what you're reduced is, why, to? Why would we take this individual from the 20th century above Jesus Christ and his words in the Bible? Is he better than Jesus? Are you telling me that Jesus was unable to convey the message to you and you have to depend on this? guy from the 20th century or the 21st century but why yes, do you just, have to critique well but, but, critique well, why what? do you ha Hashim I'm have to cri cri I'm not critique christianity hashi my dear friend why do you have to christianity using people who don't understand christianity why not use people who are well versed in christianity like lloyd jones dr martin lloyd jones you who is alive Go on, you have studied his I'll scholarship. Tell you what, I will what, go to the mosque next week. Because you have I will go him? to the mosque next week if you can read one of Lloyd Jones' books. Oh, shut up, Jason. <laughs> he's shut up. The mosque. Is that supposed to make us feel better? I hate it. I'll take my shahada. I'll take my shahada if you can do this, that, the other. No, you won't, Jason. You're dying the world Christian who's in Ghana trying to convert villages to Christianity. You're not going to become a Muslim because we answer your questions. I wanted to ask him, why was he wearing shades and a hat? Ask him, why are you dressed why like a flipping Mexican in, in your sombrero and glasses? <laughs> so, because it's a Mexican standoff and, and you're not so willing to di discuss or debate discuss what? about Lloyd what do you Jones want to discuss? and the significance, what about him? the significance of Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones in the What's defense the of Christianity. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Christians because, haven't heard of him. Because Let alone Lloyd-Jones brought a resurgence Listen, Lloyd Jones brought a resurgence of intellectual Christianity to the West, and you don't know that. And the West has regressed you even more. Thank don't you. know that. He yes, tied four so Oxford much. dons in knots. That's how clever he was. He tied promoting. four Oxford so, dons in knots. Okay. That's how in clever he was. Sorry, could I ask you a question then? Could I ask? You, could I ask him a question? I, yeah, I don't yeah. know who this guy is, so I, I know you guys probably have met him, but I, I don't know. So. How did Dr. Lloyd Jones? How did he solve the the logical problem of the Trinity? He solved the logical problem of the Trinity. Are you ready? By expository preaching. 
What does expository preaching he, mean? He preached. Wait, wait, wait. He he preached through verse by verse of the Bible through Romans on Friday night for over thirteen years, and then on Ephesians for over thirteen years, little by little, verse by verse. And you guys think you're clever and can attack the Trinity when a man spent all his life expounding okay. week by week, verse by verse. Look okay, at this. Okay, that's Look. Fine. That's, that's fine. That's, that's fine. One volume. Calm down. Look. Calm down a little one bit. Volume. Calm down a little bit. No, one volume calm, calm on Romans. Let me, one let volume on Romans. To... There are over 13 Sorry, volumes you're... on Romans and you've never even read Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. It's a travesty so what you're you, doing. It's a mockery so of what you're you doing. Educate you should be ashamed of what you're doing, Jones, attacking Christianity. When you've never read Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, it's a disgrace. If you've never read Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, it's a disgrace that you've never I'm read him. him it's a disgrace. So I'm, I'm asking you to help me. Hashim, you should be ashamed of yourself. Ijaz, you should be ashamed. Oh, my God. What is this guy, yeah. Hamza? What character is unlike... I, I, I have to mute him. Go on, make your point, Shane. No, I was, I was just going to ask him, but I think there's, I think it's a bit of a waste of time, to be honest. Yeah. All right. He's, he's the fact that he doesn't even realise he's muted and he still thinks he's speaking. <laughs> okay. Um, in the spirit of your fancy dress, vamos. <laughs> you know what it is? It's, that's just not sincere. Hamza, that is not sincere preaching or engagement in apologetics, is it? What he was doing. He's been rinsed, though. He's been rinsed on all of his arguments. So this is all. But he even if we get, look, person could be rinsed, or person could be, you know, whatever. But the, his whole method, or his approach to that, was just not sincere. He wanted to pick out an obscure point and try to claim that therefore everybody else cannot talk about Christianity. Once we asked him a question about Martin Lloyd Jones' position on a particular question, rather than answering it, he just waffled on. You know, and he thinks that's going to win people over or win an argument. I just don't know, man. It just doesn't make sense to my head. Some of these guys. Yeah, I, I liked what you did there, Sharif. You just you said, okay, fine. This this guy you're talking about, just tell, tell us his position. Not he's wrong. Just tell us. Yeah, that's so, right. So J Jason used to be a preacher in Manchester, and now he's he's a missionary in Africa. Uh, is it Kenya or is he? Somewhere in Africa, anyway. Well, so that's another thing. You know, let me tell you <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Well, not a story, but a couple of weeks ago or about a month ago, we had Christians come outside the Abdullah Quilliam Mosque, which is why I pray Jummah. Uh, and they only came for a couple of weeks and then they, they did not seen him back. And I always found it really strange. I never got to ask them this question. So I spoke to one of them and, uh, you know, we had a good conversation. But I wanted to ask them this question, but I forgot to ask them, which is, why are they outside a mosque? Why aren't they outside pubs, bars and nightclubs? Why is it that they think they have to go to the Muslim community who represents 5% of the population when 95% of the British population are leaving Christianity? Churches are closing down. You know, people, you know, are becoming more and more secular, uh, abandoning aspects, you know, the fundamental theological aspects of Christianity and simply adopting a very much a cultural, secularized version uh, of Christianity and society at large. Why are they going to Africa when the problem is here? This is the point. It makes no sense. You're absolutely right, yeah. I think I've think i solved the logical problem of the Trinity. <laughs> I've solved it. It's finally happened. Lloyd, Lloyd Crater Jones Jr. What the bloody hell is going on with some people? <laughs> It just has uh, got some new addition to his reading list. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll show you the hypocrisy of our mate Jason Burns, right? Last time I had a conversation with him about Paul and the reliability of Paul, yeah. And he said, are you a scholar? And this, that, the other. And I said, well, no, I'm not a scholar. How dare you speak about this thing if you're not a scholar? You've got no right. And I'm thinking, well, wait, you always bang on about the Quran and Hadith and this, and you're not a scholar of Islam. So what, what, wait a minute. So we can't have a pop at what you believe, but you can have a pop at what we believe. And it's just double standards. And Jason is just reduced to mental now. I don't know. I think he was drunk. He looked drunk, man. You know, it reminds me of Hamza. You know, a TikTok video you did where the uh, where you talk about the mental bus. Yeah, bro. Uh, have you is seen that? that on the bus for him, Jason? Shall, shall, shall I share that just while we're here? It's been a while. <laughs> Jason, get a ticket for the bus. It. There's a mental in Speaker's Corner. 
Mental, have you seen? Mental, I swear, it's like the local mental hospital had a day, has a day trip every Sunday and the coach piles up and Hatun gets on it and Acid gets on it and Captain Bloodfire gets on it and Kay gets on it and Soko gets on it and you are they all and they bring it to, to Hyde Park and they all pile off. They spend the day at Speaker's Corner, go for a meal later and then it's back to the hospital because they're all mental. That says it all. That's, that's a beautiful video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't remove it. I can't remove it. There we go. So you haven't answered the question, Hamza. Is there room for Jason on the bus? Oh, definitely so. <laughs> but you know who's driving the bus, Victor? No one can get him off the steering wheel, honestly. And I'll, I'll show you what, just one more other thing I did uh, with regards to these Christians here. And, and I think this one is very apt as well. I don't know if you've seen this. Just a quick one. Another TikTok. Credit to Benny Cry as well. Because this is something as well. Yeah, I agree. Okay, just a quick one. Right. I did a video yesterday about likening the Christians of Speakers, Speakers Corner to mental patients on a day out. Okay. You supporters of these guys are not helping them. Yeah. You're encouraging the mental illness. You're, you're, you're saying, well done. You, you won the debate. Well done. Hamza was smoked. The problem you've got is... You don't even understand the argument being presented. You don't even, that means you don't even recognize how miserable the, per, the Christian on top two failed. All you saw was a Christian ranting, uh, producing rhetoric. And because they're a Christian, you blindly applaud it and think they did something. You're encouraging their mental illness. And it needs to stop. Honestly, and, and this, this, this is the problem. The, the Christians think they're doing something because their supporters in their chat, oh, yeah, well done, yeah, Hamza was smoked and all this. And you're like, and then they turn around and they say things like, well, you Muslims and we don't slap people and stuff. And I said, look, the speaker's corner, there are crazy Muslims, agreed. And we tell them to shut up and we tell them to stop doing crazy things, right? But your speakers are the crazy ones. <laughs> your speakers are the crazy ones and you're like, yeah, well done, son, well done, son. Honestly. The right. yellow, yellow bus on the yellow brick road to the mental asylum. Honestly, subhanAllah, Dean. Right, who's okay. next? I don't know, Rata. I don't know who Rata is. Rata. Hey, it's RT. Uh, Jesus loves oh, it's you guys. Yeah, I just want to read Daniel 9.26 real quick. Uh, oh, just, is this, a, are you an Orthodox Christian? Yeah, uh, well, I, I was raised in Orthodoxy, yes. I, oh, I spoke to came on tap. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago or a month yes, ago. Yes. Yeah, I <laughs> want to say again, Jesus loves you. I just want to <clears throat> talk about Daniel real quick. I won't take much time. I should, can I read? Is that okay? Daniel nine twenty. So you are a Christian. Yes, a Christian. Yes. Of certain what's your argument? What, what's your argument? We're not. You're not here just to read. You're here to present no, I, an argument. It's it's important because <clears throat> can I just? It, it'll take fifteen seconds. No, After no, what's more important is to present the argument and then you can read or whatever so, to support it. <laughs> this argument gives the exact date of uh, the death and the coming of, of the Messiah, the exact mathematical equation from the book of Daniel. Or you <clears> just <throat> you the know? numbers in Hebrew, otherwise it doesn't work and it depends on a textual variant. Sorry, say again? Only if you split the weeks and you use a textual variant, does that work? But if I gave yeah, but you it, a Hebrew version of the Old Testament, even, you would not be right. able to make that same claim. Okay, right. And the book of Daniel is not a prophetic book either. The, it's the, seven. The it's about, it to be it's under seven. Uh, does everybody know what we're talking about? Uh, you, you need to yes. specify the argument. You're right. So your argument is this. <laughs> you're, not even, you're not even letting me give you the thesis. Sharif, can, can I make his argument for him? No, you guys don't let me Go speak. Go ahead, yeah. You need some right. Christian love in your One second, Arti. One second, Arti. So your <laughs> argument is this. It's not my argument. It's from Daniel. You believe... One second, one second, one second. You believe the book of Daniel predicts the birth of Jesus, yeah? No, no, no. The, What's it doing? The exact announcement... Do you know what Zechariah 9.9 9 says? I don't no, know if no, you guys no. know this book because Islam doesn't, talk about, Islam doesn't talk about Daniel as a... Or what are you trying to prove? Of... What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? That the Messiah was to be put to death. It says exact words. Oh, okay, well, okay, well, okay. So, so your argument is this. Daniel 9.26. Ati. Okay, what does that mean? Do you know that? Do you know that? Did you 
Right, I've just had to mute you just a second, just so we can establish what you're trying to do, so we can understand what you're trying to say. At the moment, you're everywhere. So are you saying that the, you have a prediction of when the Messiah is going to be put to death based upon the book of Daniel? Is that what you're saying? Yes, to the to the exact date of the announcement. The exact date. Exactly right, nine nine. Right. Yes. So you have the exact date have of the death of the. Ah! So you have the exact date to the death of the Messiah. Yeah, that's, that's your right. claim. It's oh, in my book, Muslim, but I can give it to you real quick. It'll take three minutes. Yeah, you go. What? Can you just it's read three seconds? Can you read Daniel nine twenty six? Why won't you guys read that? Read what you like. What's the exact okay. date? What's the okay, exact me... date of the death of? Jesus, according to it's you. It's in the month of Nisan. Hold on. Let me... how, how do you know it? Can I go to the map? Are you... No, no, because what it is, in... is that, look. Just wait. I'll, I'll I'm take... going to get through this math. Just let me answer. Iljaz sounds like he has. Iljaz, have you been to this mathematical equation? Or... Yeah, it's Ijaz, by the way. But yeah, I have been through the mathematics. Wait, of it, Sorry? And you depend on a textual variant to split the weeks. The Jews responded to this. Do, do you accept that Daniel is not considered a prophet in the Did Jewish canon? That Daniel says that the Messiah is going to be put to death. He doesn't. It doesn't say how Mashiach. By the way, it it it's uh there's it's no the anointed article one. there. <laughs> Who's the anointed one then? It's only one. It, you guys idol. No, you Cyrus idol the number one. Called. Okay, don't you second. idol the number one? So one, there can one only second. be one anointed one. You said one second. You said there was only one anointed one, but Cyrus is also considered an anointed one no. in Isaiah. But just this to be clear, it does not say. Look like, at the Aramaic. My... You're no, scared because you, Hebrew, guys, you know the no mathematics work out perfectly. No one's scared of anything, <laughs> dude. No chill, one. No one's, dude. Chill. No one's scared. I'm saying to you, the verse does not say Ha Mashiach. You says it literally says that. Can you read for us where it says HaMashiach? Because I can share my screen with the Hebrew right now. It does not say that. It says the anointed one. The anointed it does not one. say the anointed one. Where does it, where's the Ha? I'm not going to, you have, just take what's what's there. You you can never just analyze. You always have to say, oh, Hebrews, Paul didn't write, nobody knows who writes Hebrews. Why don't you just take the information, the data? Why are you guys I didn't. I didn't say who wrote it. I'm saying in the language itself, in the Hebrew, it does not say the Messiah. You're not a Hebrew scholar. You're not a Hebrew scholar. You're not. Don't, you're, you're are you, one Hebrew. second, Rata, RT. Are you a Hebrew scholar? That, I want to talk about the content, the information. You I, won't I, even... No, forget the content. No, 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 no. Are you a Hebrew yeah. scholar? Are you a we Hebrew scholar? The, listen, the RT. Quran has no data. RT. The last, RT. It, are you a Hebrew scholar? The la There's no half. None There's of no Hebrew definite scholar. article. Where is you, it? Won't, you won't put up the verse because it actually says the Messiah will die. And that kills Islam. It doesn't say what? the Messiah. Yes, On the page in front of you. What, what does the Messiah screen. mean? Where what do you see Messiah the mean? word the Messiah? What, is, what does Messiah mean? Anointed one, but does not what? say the Messiah is singular individual. Where do you see that here? The Messiah is not here. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be put to death. And will have An nothing. anointed one will be cut off, not the anointed one, which is what you said oh earlier. Listen, dude, that's hilarious. You guys are this petty. It's not hilarious believe. because you, you confirmed that the mathematics thing. works. How does that blow your mind? Does it does work. How does that not blow Ma your mind? Because it, it doesn't work. And it you does. Just, you, just, you were just as honest. You said let we wouldn't put it up on the, the screen, formula. but I was sharing it the entire time. No, you. I was sharing it the entire time. There's, there's no reason that the Jews, Jewish people in Israel, would write that their Messiah would die. They, they never. It doesn't say the Messiah. It's the same way with your theory of corruption. Almost the whole Old Testament talks bad about Israel. Why would they write this? Why would they? Why would they write all these bad things well, about themselves? Like, but they like, like pause, right? You're like going a hundred <laughs> different directions like from kindergarten. Rata, oh, like, it's corrupt. It's chill, corrupt. Rata, chill. I didn't make an argument about corruption or anything. To begin with, you said that we yeah. wouldn't show the verse, and we did. Then you said it says the Messiah will die. It doesn't mention. Ha Mashiach, 
Then you said we spoke about uh, being a Hebrew scholar. We never made that claim. Then you said we wouldn't read the verse and we did. So rather than trying to make false assumptions, be an honest Christian and no, argue. We we Look at the verse on the screen. Can you can see? I, I can Jesus show you the mathematics. It says the Messiah will die. Where does and it say the Messiah? Okay. It, it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You it can matters. say. You, you don't have to use any article. Yes, you do. No, you Every don't. time you've quoted the verse, you you've said the Messiah. How, how desperate you are. You're so scared of the mathematics. You won't even show the mathematics. It's on the screen. Arty, do you understand, oh. the, Arty, do you understand the problem you're having? No, you don't, ha you don't even know this verse, Hamza. But you, you understand the problem. You, you, you literally did the, not know no. that the Arty, Bible says the Messiah would die. Do you understand the problem that you're having? Do you understand no, you the problem? Know. You don't even understand Daniel 9. The Quran doesn't even talk about Daniel. You no, do you understand the problem Daniel. you're having with regards to this verse saying what you <clears> think it says? I understand your the, ma the maths is Look, Ijaz's argument has got nothing to do with the maths. He doesn't have an yeah, argument. He's made assertions. So here's the argument. No, no, here's here. his argument. Here's his argument. A... The verse in question doesn't say the Messiah. Do you accept that? Hamza, you didn't even know this verse existed. Why are you talking about this? Let me talk to RT, you. Do you accept the verse in question does not no, say it does the not. Messiah? You guys don't know anything about Hebrew. You're not Jews. Stop do you attaching accept, yourself. Stop attaching you, yourself to Old Testament. RT, and to RT, do you accept that the verse in question, which is on the screen, does not say the Messiah? Do you accept that? The Messiah will die. Everybody knows this. It doesn't me. say that. Where's you the that? Everybody knows. Every person knows that Daniel predicts the death of the Messiah. No, no, no. Where's the that? Do you and understand all the your difference? Are shocked the now because they didn't understand Do you understand the difference between something that's definite and indefinite? Listen, it's not a play on, on language. This it is, is an exact Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew is very Hold similar on. to Arabic. Sorry, what the was your name? Article, you the definite name? and infinite article are quite important. Sorry, sorry. Uh, unless you're English scholars, uh, this is not this is not oh, the area. Let's deal with the data. Let's deal well. with the information. Let's deal with it. I understand the Quran doesn't have information. The last well. 50 chapters fit onto an 18 page word document from the Quran. 18 pages. That's your last whole half of the, of the Quran. There's no data in the Quran. There's zero. Why are, talking about, why are you talking about the Quran? Because you're not. You want to, do you want him, do you want him, him, to, want him to just make his argument and then? Because I'm, I'm, no. I'm curious what his argument is. Go, on, you make his argument then. No, I don't want to make his. I want him to make his. Argument. Oh, so I want to make I his argument. No, 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 no. I want RT to make his own argument. Can I? Can yeah, I show can you make the your argument, RT? Go on quickly. I, I can. I can show you the mathematics. Mathematics of what? Back on if you can. Sorry. He I'm just removed it. Can you put the verse back on? He just removed it. Can you just go to chapter chapter nine of Daniel? What what is the or point you you're trying to you make, make? RT, are you saying you got the exact date of his death? Everybody, or, yes. We know testament? this. Is this that is what you're trying to say? This is huh? Yes. No, I want to know what is the point. No, the exact date of the, of the announcement from Zechariah 9. Let's but you got the mathematics right. You guys don't read the, the minor prophets, so you don't understand this. Oh, oh I know what his argument you know is. I got his argument. Hamza, you, you know what Zechariah 9 9 says? You need so to your listen. argument is this. Because you, you, you have the date of the death of the Messiah, that means the Quran is wrong because it says no, he No, 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 no. Is that your argument? Listen, there's two, three points. One, a Jewish person would never write that their Messiah would die. Just like in the Quran, it says, did the Jews kill the Messiah? No, no Jew would ever kill the Messiah, dude. No, every child has been waiting for the Messiah. You think the Jews would kill their own Messiah? Never. Uh, and uh, you're, uh, you're, uh, uh, no, you're wrong, RT. You're wrong. No, this isn't a prophet. Hold on, hold on. Jews have killed many prophets. RT, RT, can I just tell him why he's wrong about that point? I'm going to tell you why you're wrong about that point. The Sadducees were not waiting for a Messiah. Okay. Because the, the Messiah means... They weren't the ruling uh, party. Well, well, right, don't talk when I'm talking, please. I'll just mute you. Okay. So the Messiah is claiming Jewish kingship of David, claiming Jewish monarchy. The Romans abolished Jewish monarchy in Jerusalem, in Judea. The Sadducees worked on behalf of the Romans. Yeah. 
any threat to Rome was a threat to the Sadducees. The Sadducees would not entertain anyone claiming to be the Messiah because it was against Roman law. Okay. The Pharisees, no issue. The Sadducees did have an issue. So your claim that no Jew would deny the Messiah is completely false. Respond to that, but that's a whole theological discussion. It's very Respond complex. to that. No, no, no. Respond but to that historical claim I made. Don't first, go theological, Jesus didn't historical. just claim to be the Messiah. He claimed I don't think he was listening. the I Son of God, either. which made him... No, it wasn't just the Messiah, the problem. So the I Did you hear what I just said to you, Artie? Yes, but that, but it wasn't what just... What did I just say to you, Artie? Just so I know you're listening. What did I say to you? <clears throat> you you're saying that those Jew, Jewish people under that governing religious body was working for Rome. And that's why... Right. But the Pharisees worked for Rome too. They said, we have no king but Caesar. No, 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 no. The Pharisees were not working for Rome. The Pharisees were against Rome. The chief Pharisee said, we have no king but Caesar, and he sealed his fate. And that's when Jesus predicted the second temple, and they were done. And they've been... RT, RT, RT. They've been moved for the presence of God. You're just just simply wrong. The Pharisees were waiting for the Messiah. There was like other people claiming to be the Messiah. A Messiah, but not not one that was equal to God in this... when, When they... That's why they picked up stones and said, this man... Even he forgives sin. He, he's calling himself a son of God, making himself God. No. Because the son in, in Israel was the image of the father. Okay. Let me ask you a very simple question to, to expose your ignorance. Okay. Do you believe the Pharisees had a problem with healing on the Sabbath? They, they proved that they did. They did? They proved it, yes. Okay. But according to Pharisee teachings, uh, it's compulsory to heal the sick on the Sabbath. When did those teachings come? After in the Talmud, that, that's different. Maybe they got ashamed from what they learned a big lesson with, with what happened with Christ. So unless no, you have a pre Christ. No, 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 see, the problem is you don't understand the history. And you think you read the New Testament and that's history. This, this is your problem. history. You're attaching okay. yourself. The Pharisees had no problem with the teachings of Jesus. They had no problem with healing on the Sabbath. And they You're had wrong. no problem. They had I'll no problem you. with him healing on the Sabbath. And they had no problem with him calling, claiming to be the Messiah. It wasn't a problem for the uh, Pharisees. It was a problem for the Sadducees, not no, the Pharisees. No, no. And how do we know this? How do we know this? The Pharisees petitioned the release of Jesus' disciples, Peter, yeah, from the Sanhedrin, where the Sadducees wanted to have them killed. The Pharisees, Galamiel, the leader of the Pharisees, petitioned for them to be released. If the, Pharisees after, such a, the if, the Pharisees, if the Pharisees had such a problem with Jesus and his teachings, why would they petition for the freeing of his disciples? It didn't matter at that time. Jesus was already dead. Their mission was complete. They didn't think. No, you would snuff out the mission, wouldn't you? You would snuff out the people who were going to. Ati, you're talking nonsense, mate. Well, you really you, are talking nonsense. Listen, that's why I said this is a theological discussion. I didn't want to get into it. Well, I well, no, no, no. You so, made a claim. Do you take that claim back then? That the you said no Jew would die. Die. Do, you, do you take that claim back where you said no Jew would deny the Messiah? Do you take that claim Absolutely back? Absolutely never. No Jew would ever kill the Messiah. Such no as he would. would. That, no, that. Oh my goodness. All right, listen. Can we, I no, don't, I don't want to argue. I, 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 no, I'm, I'm, I want you to. I'm not going to allow you just to make a baseless claim. The Sadducees would kill a Messiah because he's a threat to Rome. You don't have to win everything. Love is not about winning. God is love. First John four sixteen. Get your love. Go, RT. RT. He loves you. Hamza, you RT. Can show, he loves you. Get your preaching. Get your love. The Sadducees would not accept a Messiah because it was a threat to Rome, which was a threat to them because they were Rome's What's henchmen. Love got to do Sadduc- with Sadducees the- weren't the ruling what elite. The Pharisees to were. To they no, governed listen. God. What? They govern. They controlled God in that they control in their minds. They didn't control God, but okay. The their, Sadducees, the high priest of the temple, was a Sadducee. RT, the high priest Who of the temple. The temple? The You've got to stop talking when I'm talking, man. Right. It's so irritating. Okay. The, the, the Sadducees and the high priest, the high priest of the temple was a Sadducee. The Sadducees were Rome's representatives. The, Sad, a mon- the Rome's had banished Jewish monarchy. They'd abolished Jewish monarchy. Claiming to be the Messiah was claiming to be uh, a Jewish king. Yeah? And that's, that is what the Sadducees would have a problem with. The Pharisees wouldn't have a problem being called the Messiah. They were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for someone to go on the mountain and do and bring a miracle from God. They were waiting for their Messiah. But the Sadducees, they're the ones who'd have a problem. So the so your 
claim that no Jew would kill the Messiah or want the Messiah killed is completely false because the Sadducees did and did what I wanted it. Now you've got to take that claim back, mate. It, we could speak for five hours. It, it, the claim remains. I've written a book called Jesus Loves Muslims, a thousand page book. It's, it's all detailed in there about your claim that the, that the Jews killed the Messiah. They, Read by like what, 0 0.1 persons? Sorry? Why is it important that you wrote a book? I bake cakes. Uh, it's not. Or it's not. It's an, actually, the book is anonymous and it's free. Just like the Gospels, right? I, I don't charge for <laughs> consultations like Muhammad did with Allah, right? He charged everybody. Didn't Jesus money. get money from the house of, uh, of who's the leader of the time? He literally had a woman paying for him to support his ministry. Literally, the Gospels say so. So let's not make stupid I'm, claims. I'm surprised huh? he's putting his trust so much in the Old Testament. The, does the Old Testament say that the Messiah is going to be worshipped? No. Arti, are you there? Yes, yes, does yes. Book, does your book cover that part where he's going to be worshipped like the way you worship him? Abraham already worshipped him. I'm not going to go over the same points you guys no, do. about the Old Testament. Over and over again. In the Old Most Testament, does anyone... Abraham wait a minute, wait a minute, listen. You think... In the Old Testament, did God, any... Hold on. No, did Allah... Listen. The, was Allah, the, Allah in the bush? Or was his voice? And that the nobody listens to you. That's the reason you're wasting your time here. I'm not. You guys are just angry. Do you, you not? Need more love. God you has given you two you years for a reason. For the love I of God. We're enjoying this. In order to answer, in the Old Testament, can you show me a single passage where this Messiah that you have been beating around the bush for all yes. this time, does it ever say that he's going to be worshipped? Does it say that he's going to be worshipped? Are you listening? I trust that God is born. Isaiah nine six. Show me where it says. The Messiah is going to be worshipped. Unto us a child is born. He will be mighty God. Unto us we worship God. Look at Isaiah 9.6. Go on, it's finish it. Let's clear. see if you know the passage. Finish it. Go on. Man, I'm, dude, I'm in medicine. I devoted my whole life to medicine. I'm not a scholar, man. Uh, I, I uh, yeah, I, and I'm a gymnast. How is that, that related to the conversation? And now you're saying you're not Sorry? a scholar. I sell scarves. <laughs> I'm I'm can I'm you, not okay. Read, read that I passage have no formal I, education. Tell me in where the Bible. Is the Messiah is I didn't memorize the verse, but I can read it for you. We read know it, you have no it. formal education in the Bible, it's patently on display. Patently, this is supposed to be one of the most quoted passages. He has he doesn't remember that. Go on, and you've written a thousand. Well, pages. until the child is born, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Okay, you so believe Jesus matter. was the everlasting father, yeah. Yes, in a way, because in his humanity, we can look to him as a father. That's why Christianity is so powerful. So Jesus, father, Jesus was the everlasting. Father. So you believe Jesus was the father? Hold on. Hamza, hold on. Can I, with, like, please. And there is a verse in Ephesians 4 that says, be humble and gentle and love each other. Okay? Just be humble for a second. And let me just, let me just film. The, the, he's, not a, he's not the position of the father in eternity. Okay, what you guys are lacking? Who calls him the everlasting oh, father? God. I can't even. I can't even speak for ten seconds. You can watch this back. Just let you me answer finish. the questions you're asked. No, to ten, and let me just finish this. Okay, look, you're missing. You're missing something so important. The Trinity is so important for humanity because it's a model. You see, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live in interpenetrating love from each other. No, no, don't come because, preaching with you. Let me answer the, the question. It comes back to the point. The point okay, is, the point is very simple. Do you, you believe a, Jesus? You do you believe Jesus, RT, was the everlasting father? For in humanity, for orphans, for us in this world, in time and space. Who called him that? Who called him that? Who called, Who him, called everlasting him everlasting father, everlasting father, father in the entire Bible? Uh, dude, you guys. Yeah, dude, what's it? What's the matter like, now? You, the, he's like baby. This is like kindergarten talk. No, Seriously. you're acting like one in the kindergarten and you are, are then projecting it on all of us. We're asking you a very simple question. In, in the New I'm Testament, you, when Jesus came, did anyone address him as the everlasting father? Look, they everybody looked to him as in that position. What because position? Jesus said, let the little children come to me. There are many orphans all over the world. This is why Christianity will never die because... We have a father who loves us. You guys Did are. Anyone sweet. address him Nobody as the everlasting love. father? Please Nobody answer, answer the question. Why is Nobody this not Huh? Answer the question. Anyone address him? He's everlasting and he's yes. going to be in eternity as 
in human form. So in, as he's always in the bosom of the Father, which is his true nature, but he's the word of God. He's expressed. Word doesn't mean... A, we didn't a, ask you about the word. word. That's not the question. Can you answer the question you've been asked? Just say you don't know the answer. No, I told you. Like you, you said, you have, you have, you have the passage you quoted says, you know, be humble. Be humble. You have to have a higher capacity to understand what this means. It's not. I don't think you have the capacity like, to answer. That's why you're projecting it. I'm telling answer. you that the Father is a positional while He's on Earth. That's why it says His gut. This is when the government will be on His shoulders. This is which government was on His shoulder. He when He's born, He's a son, so He's going to. Which the government was on His shoulder? Not, not was in the future tense. No, no, wait, when, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait when a minute. we established. Wait, wait a minute. So when he was um, born, was um, he the father? Was he an everlasting yeah. father when Jesus was born? No matter what you say, right here it says that a waste of time, honestly. he's mighty I'm God. Your child will be called mighty God. The Jews can't answer this. They try to play word games like Il Jazz, in but fact, in fact, nobody called him even mighty God in the Bible. Yes, they did. It's basic, yeah. it's basic where, where did Jesus. anyone call him almighty God? By the way, it's basic exegesis to apply the terms of the sentence God. to the subjects in it. It's not yeah. word games when the Jews have read it that way for at least a thousand years. That you come after and want to change the meaning is not a word game. Why did they do that Doing before? Basic why biblical did, exegesis is not a word they, game. Secondly, you can't say that you wrote a 1,000-page book anonymously when you say that you wrote it. That's not what that's the opposite of anonymous to be given. You're not a scholar. You don't know what I'm a scholar me. of. So these all personal my attacks are Why don't you tell me Allah loves me? So, this is what like, just care calm about. down. Just you calm down. Calm down and answer one question. Calm down and answer one so answer, answer one question. Just, no point. Yeah, I don't think he has the capacity to answer yeah. questions. What what question about the father? I told you it's position. You, you did not show us everlasting father. You did not show us where which uh, which kingdom or sorry which uh, government was on his shoulder. You did not show us who called him Almighty God. None of that okay. applies okay. to okay. Jesus He's Christ gone. because Jesus clearly says this world is not of my kingdom. I hope he's still listening. Yeah, see, he's see, probably still talking. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> see, here's the problem he had, and this is where critical thinking comes in. He was presenting an argument and we were challenging his premise and he didn't like us challenging his premise. He wanted to keep going on with his conclusion. And we're like, we're not worried about your conclusion. Which the premise we're concerned with? Like, for example, why are you telling us the mass about someone it may not apply to? First confirm it's about that. Then we can do the maths and see if, if it marries up. Why are you making claims that these prophecies are about Jesus Hamza, and look, Isaiah? Even if it does, why do we, he thinks that the Muslims consider the Bible as the yardstick to judge the Quran? <laughs> Even if it does, let's say even if the name of Jesus was there and the exact date of his death and his life was there, what does it prove? Yeah, it uh -huh. could have been added later on. We don't have any early manuscripts of the Old Testament. Yes, they are like a thousand years after Moses. Why should we believe any of it? Out the frying pan? <laughs> <laughs> You're just... trying to be funny, Hamza. <sighs> oh, yeah. this guy was cracking me up in the warm up. I thought he had to come and bring this question here. What's happening, mate? What's up? What's up? Indeed. Sounds okay. We're all good. Okay. Um, can you smoke cigarettes in Jannah? I was listening to a clip of Mufti Mink, and he said no, but I just wanted to get um, clarification on that. Is that tr true or not? Like, if you can do anything in Jannah, are you allowed to smoke cigarettes? Will it be Seriously, permissible? that's your question? Yeah, I just want, well, I just watched a quick clip. I have other questions, but I just honestly I'll tell you what, to ask you. What have you prepared to go to, Jannah? Tatbir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but can you just, what do you guys Before you start that? worrying about what you're going to smoke or oh, drink my. or activities, you're going to do that. Have you actually made any effort to go to Jannah? Well, I, I believe that I believe in a different way than you guys do. Well, there you go. So Jannah is out of the question if you're going to do, have a different way than Islam. Because only the Muslims go to Jannah. Sorry, mate. I understand. Okay, but... Your is question there... is it's like, it's like you asking, can I go to, I don't know, Disney World? Okay, without a ticket. No, but to be fair yeah. with him, to be fair with him, he yeah. could say, if you Muslims enter paradise, enter Jannah, would you be allowed to smoke? That's a, that's a fair yeah, that's question. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, can you, can you formulate your questions please. concisely then, please? No, but the thing is, look, and I'm yeah, sick of making exactly. arguments for you guys. 
we we can we can only answer that question if we were given the specific information about that because there is actually a passage which says that you will get what you desire okay i think mufti mink said that you can't you wouldn't be able to light it or something like that i don't know have you ever yeah, seen we that we can clip? only speculate look we can only speculate but the thing is allah has told us that you will get what you desire what, now, what's, what's to be honest with you when you're in jannah the last thing you'll probably be thinking about is having a smoke why would you oh, want to make yourself smell like a dirty See. ashtray? <laughs> yep. anyway, well, well, the first thing you'd be thinking about, thing Hashem, is... if, if smoking cigarettes is the last thing, what's the first thing? Why are you smiling? <laughs> it depends what your desires are, Ijaz. <laughs> and look, are, are you I, trying to say I something? I just asked the question because no, I wanted I'm to good. know if I'm you guys good, had you expertise. On. Hashem's going to be debating um, people there. As well. he's gonna, <laughs> I just look at our comment. He's going to find himself an ancient Greek person and just start debating that. Ancient Greek person? Plato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Plato, yeah, that's right. No, I think that's that's what you're thinking. Come on. Look at that. No. RT has yeah, like said this is what Muslims people. think about cigarettes in heaven. No, a Christian has come and spoke about cigarettes in heaven. We've not mentioned cigarettes in heaven. No, I'm asking because Mufti Mink said no. Is that the true position? Like, because there's no. Why are you so it. concerned about this issue? I just no, I'm not <laughs> so concerned. Trolling. I just, I just wanted to know. Are what. you trolling? Please. No, I promise you, I'm not. I have other questions. So, what's the want, point? I, what's the point of this question? I just don't understand what the can, question is. Can I lick a lollipop? Ask, ask God on the day of what? judgment whether we can smoke. Because okay, okay, that's fine. We can move to the next question. But I was just only reason I was wondering was because I just watched a short clip. If your next question is as stupid as this question, I'm gonna kick you without even answering. You are you, owe me are you, are you a Christian? Okay. Last that supper. Was... Are you are you a Christian the... based on your based on that DP you got? Are you a Christian? The what? Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Okay, so t tell us a bit about the Christian paradise. Hold on, I, my next my next question is, you know, because I've heard from Muslims that you will not be able to smoke because you cannot light the cigarette because there's no fire in Jannah. So my question is, there will oh, be no are you talking uh, about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, You're God. speculating now. Hold on. <laughs> You're speculating oh, no, about I've heard. things That's about we don't know what's in no the Jannah. Fire. Are you heard? So it's not known. That's fine. Yeah, I, are you inquiring yeah, about the Islamic Jannah? No... Because the Christian Jannah is probably boring. Because you, don't, you don't have much no, because to do jinn, that. Because, because jinn are made of fire. If there's no fire in Jannah, there will be no jinn in heaven. So Who's how is jinn, jinn, jinn in heaven? heaven? Wait, wait, That's what I was asking. I was asking if there's... Why, why won't there be the jinn in heaven? Why won't there be jinn in heaven? Because they're made of fire. Why won't there be jinn in heaven? Because they're made of fire. So... Why can't they be in there's heaven no made of fire? Because Where's this no fire reference in about? Jannah. Sorry, Hamza, I've never that's heard this reference that there's you. no fire in heaven. Right, that's what I was asking you if there was a reference. Have you that. heard this? I don't know. Anybody else heard this reference? I, I don't even see the relevance of these questions. I think it's just trolling. okay. Let's go back to what I was talking about with <laughs> something before. that is serious, you know. Uh, I think, okay. I think, I think, let's not. Yeah. Can we get um, that Jason Burns instead? Honestly, it made more sense. He's on the beach, maybe. <laughs> with with that book, hey, be know? careful what you wish for. I got Frank back here. I, I thought it'd be Hamza, hard to... I came to the arena. I didn't come to something. Like oh, don't worry. Frank gets short thrift. Anyway, reflecting right, you're muted, mate. Reflecting oh, hi, right. Am I audible? You are. Oh, you are audible. Yes, you are. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking me. Uh, no, you're so, not. Um... Okay. Not sure so, reflecting eye, where are you calling from? Um, I'm calling from uh, a country. Yeah, I'm sure? not sure. What... We know where you're calling from, for God's sake. We're pretending we don't yeah. know. Calling from a country. Thank so... you for informing us. Uh, <laughs> is it also on a planet? Why, why are you hiding where you're calling from? Uh, just, um, are you, I'm are not you ashamed comfortable or something? disclosing. I'm well, just not well, comfortable disclosing. Why are you so insecure? Uh, location. Why shouldn't I stay secure? Right. Because you, sure. in Middle East, you're, you're somehow hiding something. I don't know. I think yeah. I yes, think I am hiding doing myself. Any of the Gulf Good. Okay. So what? I'm hiding are you in any of the Gulf okay, countries. So, Sorry. Have you got a point you want to discuss? Are you? Yes, exactly. I'm just asking him. Are you in any of the Gulf countries? Uh, no. That... <laughs> so, are you from India? <laughs> 
I'm not That's sure why that's relevant. That's the possible though. way to answer a question. That is the worst. No, 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 it's good. Well, it's what isolated do you do if you he's not in the Gulf country, 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 country. If he's been explicit about not being from the Gulf and he's not being explicit as though he's not from India. You know what? You know what? Uh, literally a five-year-old could have been like more, you know, could, could have had more of a poker face. <laughs> uh, no, right, guys, don't destroy the confidence he has got left. Okay, come on, go, go, come on, Mr. Rai. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not going to tell you my though. bank account details, but tell me what you want. What do you want? What you got? <laughs> yeah, what's your question? Yeah, so uh, I wanted to ask a question uh, about um, in uh, a verse in the Quran. So um, in uh, Surah Baqarah, uh, I had uh, the verse number 286. Sorry, just let me open that. So uh, the the ayat starts with the uh, with the statement that Allah does not uh, burden any soul with more than what it can bear, yeah. and then it goes on to uh, uh, I mean the ayat the, the verse continues, and in this in the second part of the ayat we are taught uh, a prayer. Now, in that prayer, we are uh, taught to pray for something that I think is unnecessary because uh, it says that, Lord, do not burden me, me or do not burden us with more than what we have strength to bear. So my question is, if in the first part of the ayah, Allah is already stating that he is not going to burden any soul with what it cannot bear, why are then we required to pray to for to Allah to not do that very thing? Muslim. Am I clear? Am I clear? Are you Muslim? Are you Muslim? I was a Muslim. I am an agnostic now. So is is this the argument that led you out of Islam? No, I mean it's not one argument. Uh, I think so. There are a number of arguments. What arguments were there? Because that's probably more important to go into the actual arguments that led you out of Islam than looking at the tafsir of a particular verse. No, it's it's not even about tafsir, though. Uh, so I think there are so many reasons. I would say this is one of them. I can only discuss one at a time since, you know. So I just wanted to discuss one particular ayah over here right now. So what exactly is your argument that Allah... Okay, Allah doesn't... So his, his, his argument is this, Hashim. His argument is saying at the beginning of the verse, it says that Allah will not burden us with more than we can bear. And then there's a dua according to him, the way he's translated it, that says, and do not burden us with more than we can bear. Is that right? But that is the dua. That is a part of the dua. Allah will, you're asking Allah no, no. not to burden you more than your, your, your capacity. What he's saying is, if it, Allah said he won't burden a soul with more than it can bear, why would you need to ask Allah not to burden with too much than you can bear? I think that's what yes. you're trying to say. Exactly. Yes. So where where is the second one where he says don't burden us? It's, it's, the, so it's, the, same, it's the very same ayah. Yeah, it's it's in Surah Bakara, uh, ayat number no, 286. It says Allah do not impose blame on us if we forget or err our Lord and lay on uh, okay, I see. Our Lord and lay not upon I us think there are like several, that, eh? which you laid upon the those before us. So it doesn't say more than our capacity. No, uh, so it is. Sorry. Just me... Oh, yeah. So the next one says our no. Lord burden not burden us not yes. with that which we have no ability to bear. Is that the one? Yes. 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 Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dua. It's a dua, basically. Yes. But the, my question is, if this... Allah is not going to burden, if Allah says that he is not going to burden us, uh, with anything that we cannot bear, why are then we required to pray for that very for for that very thing to not happen? It's, if it's not it's going a, to happen anyway. Humility. I'll give you an example. Look, the Prophet Sallallahu his past and future sins were forgiven. Even then, the Prophet Sallallahu used to seek forgiveness seventy times a day. Yes, in in Arabic, the term seventy times a day can be more than that. Even even hundred times it could be. Yes, when Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu asked him. Why do you make so much effort? Why do you pray all night, you know, to the uh, uh, until your, your, your feet are swollen to that extent? 
And then the Prophet ﷺ responded to her, should I not be grateful? So this is the term forgiveness. Doesn't just mean you're, seek, you're asking for forgiveness for the sins you have done, but it is a matter of humility, a matter of your gratitude uh, to Allah Almighty. So when you make such du'as, as, even though Allah has told the Prophet ﷺ your sins have been forgiven, even then he's making his takfar. So it's a matter of humility and humbleness. No, Can so I read the verse? Question then would be... One second, reflecting right. Let me just read yeah, the verse. Sure. I think you've just yeah, misread yeah. it. Let me just read the verse. I'm reading the clear Quran, which is the Quran that I use. Yeah? Okay? Allah doesn't... Well, I'm, I'm, it says God, but I'm saying Allah does not require... So this is the key, the key, the key point of that is he doesn't need anything from you. Yeah, he, does, he doesn't benefit from the good things or the bad things. Or, or right. So listen, God doesn't require any of any soul more than what it can afford. All good will be for its own benefit, and all evil will be to its own loss. The believers pray, "Our Lord, do not punish us if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord, do not place a burden on us like the one you placed on those before us." Our Lord, do not burden us with what we cannot bear. Pardon us, forgive us, and have mercy on us. You are our only guardian, so grant us victory over the disbelieving people. I don't see what the problem is. No, uh, the first part of the ayah that you're reading, uh, Allah does not require of any soul more than what God, God does not require what does that mean? of any soul. What does that mean? That's clear, it was clarified in the next verse. Allah, Allah does not require of any soul more than what it can afford. All good would be for it. For Allah won't benefit from it. There's nothing. Allah doesn't need any payment or anything. That goodness will be to the benefit of that person. And then it says, and all evil, will, all evil that it does will be to it, its own loss. So Allah won't lose anything if someone chooses to disobey Allah and not be a Muslim like you, for example. Allah doesn't lose because you choose to do that. So Allah says in that verse, one, you do good things, it's for your own good. You do bad things, it's to your own loss. Standard. Not a big deal. I don't know what you saw, but your knickers in a twist about with regards to that matter. And it continues, and Allah says, the believers ask Allah not to burden them with a, a bit, with a, something more than they can bear. I, I don't see what you... How that would lead you out of Islam, I don't know. Yeah, I mean... Well, that's not left you out of Islam. You're just lying to us. What, what left you out of it? What led you out of Islam? Yeah, reflecting Ryan... What's that? I mean, uh, reflecting Ryan, what's your position currently? What do you believe? Are you an atheist? I'm an agnostic, agnostic right now. You're agnostic. Okay. So if yeah. you're agnostic, uh, do you care about truth? Do you care about what's true? Well, yeah, I think so. I, you think you think so, or is it actually important? You believe that truth is important, which is why you come here to ask a particular question. But you see, I think that we are limited beings. We have uh, no, no, no. You're you're, yeah. you're just muddying the waters now. I'm asking you a I very simple question. Do you believe truth is important? Do you think it's valuable? I mean, I I I value it internally. Okay, I value feel it. Like okay I fine, value it. fine. Yeah. So, as an agnostic, how can you believe in values? I mean, I value what I feel like I value. That's what I, it's like. I, but why? Uh, why? I feel why? hunger, so I feel like I value it. So that's something that's, uh, you know, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying to, everybody I'm trying can. trying to understand, like, if you're an agnostic, mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to yeah. make a statement and you tell me whether you agree or you disagree with it. If you're an agnostic, you cannot have any values, any morals, any beliefs in any of these types of things. So, therefore, even truth is undermined. So, you've come here and you've, you, you want to know about something which seemed to you like a contradiction, but you couldn't even explain why it's a contradiction. So that obviously shows you care about getting to the truth of the matter. But can you as an agnostic even justify your stance upon truth? Whether it's in, Do you believe truth is intrinsically valuable or instrumentally valuable? Uh, honestly, I wouldn't understand what you say instrumentally and uh, intrinsically. But okay. uh, he, he, yeah. here's, here's another way of putting it. Do you believe in values? Do you believe that there's certain, like, for example, certain things are right, certain things are wrong, certain things we should do and we shouldn't do? You believe in these things. So you're saying something like morality? Is it? Is there an objective morality? Yes, yes. You, you, you could say morality, but you could also say values, right? Do you believe in these so, things? I mean, as far as I can understand, uh, as of my understanding, I don't think there is an objective morality. You have to adopt okay. a framework. If there's no objective morality, 
yeah. then do we need to actually follow something that's true? Is it good to follow truth? Well, if if I am somehow able to identify a truth, yes, I would I would like to follow it if I'm able to Why? understand and I'm able to identify it. Would it be good for you to follow truth? I mean, I mean it depends. If if that truth actually is, uh, for example, if I find that Quran is the truth, and Quran is telling me to, uh, and and I realize that okay, it is something that uh, that is true, and uh, it instructs me to do something. Then you know, because if it is true, then God exists, and then I think I should do what God say, uh, God tells me to do. No, no, that's fine. That that's our theology. What I'm talking about mm -hmm. is you. If you don't believe in objective morality, then mm -hmm. you can't value truth. Truth has no value. Truth being good, following truth, finding out what truth is, that would be something that falls within the moral realm. And with yourself, you have no values, you have no morality. So you've come onto uh, the arena and you're asking questions about a very particular point, as if that point is going to lead you to coming closer to making a decision about your life or whatever. But you can't even justify something as simple as truth. The reason why I'm giving you these examples is to show you that if you've left Islam for something, that something has to be better than Islam, doesn't it? it you wouldn't go to something unless it's better. Would you agree? No, actually, you see, the agnostic position is not something you go to. I don't. I don't think that's that's how it is. If I feel that Islam has some, uh, you know, if I feel that Islam is not true, then I have to. I just say Islam is not true. That if I you, look into the arguments for God, no, uh, no, no, I'm also moving on to the next position. So didn't you now, say? Didn't you say you used to be Muslim in the beginning of the stream? Yes, I, see, I did say. And you said so, you're an agnostic now, so you've changed your position, right? Yes, I did. I mean, when I am not no. So there are two levels. So, for example, if I if I, if I was a born if I, I was born a Muslim, and if I find that if I believe if I start to believe that no, it's it's not true. Uh, there are some inconsistencies in uh, within it. Then I'll say, okay. okay, Islam is not true. Now I'm no longer okay, a Muslim. So, okay, now so, I'm so how, how about this? Yeah, I don't believe there's any inconsistencies in Islam. But if there was inconsistencies in Islam or any other religion or even agnosticism, why would that be wrong according to your worldview? No, it's not wrong. I there have. You go. So why do you care no. about it? <laughs> why, why do you do care, I care about something if it has no value so, to you? No, it depends. So I feel hunger, right? It's something that I feel. So I'll I'll go with it. I so I feel that uh, I have I understand that my intellect is limited. Uh, it must have some limitations. But I feel that there is some sort of processing that is going on. So I'm going to I'm going to use I'm going to do whatever I can with what I have. So that's what I'm doing. I think that I have some. No, you know, it's possible that I'm totally crazy. I'm just everything that's that I'm feeling for, for is just end? in my head. Yeah. For what end? For what? For what end? What is your purpose? You're going to use your rationality to arrive at what exactly? You seem to just become a solipsist. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, a solipsism is actually. A, I would say that's the default position. If you don't believe no. in anything, or no. if you realize. <laughs> That, that, uh, that, that you know, that's if you understand, not, that, no, that's not. Let me just clarify. That's your position. That's not a default position. Now, okay, so you can say that, but if you don't, you are believe, a solipsist. So, sorry. So you are a solipsist. I mean, I don't find any argument in uh, favor of anything else. So. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. You don't find an argument in favor of anything else. So what's the arguments in favor of solipsism? So you see, what is solipsism? Solipsism is just uh, that there is nothing that uh, you can uh, probably prove other than uh, a consciousness that you can feel, right? So, so give, give us evidence for that worldview. I, I'm not going to. Get, so that is just what I I know because I can feel my consciousness. So I think, therefore, I am right. So that is, and even do, that. Do you believe uh, I exist? Do you believe I exist? You. Yeah. Well, 
for all practical practical purposes, but I cannot be sure of that, right? Can't be sure whether I exist. Yeah, of course. I think but we have a conversation here. <laughs> before we end but, the conversation, but you see, if you give me time, the, sorry, right, hold on. So but, just going back to that verse of Quran. Yes, exactly. So you've, got a couple of, you've got Hamza's given an explanation. Hashim's given an explanation. What is it that you see as a problem with that verse? No, see, uh, what Hamza uh, said, he's looking at a particular translation, but he didn't exactly explain what the first part of the ayah is. No, no, I'm uh, asking you what you see as a problem. So, so the you, problem what, what, is... I'm saying you, said, you went to this verse, you were like, oh my gosh, I cannot be Muslim anymore. I'm now an agnostic. Okay, it's not exactly how it happened, though. Uh, this was this is just one of the many arguments. And in fact, this uh, this was something, this, okay, has, this was the first time even when I was a Muslim. Argument. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to explain. So, the contradiction that I find, once again, is that if something, if Allah says that, let's say, if Allah says that I'm not going to uh, be... Uh, unjust to anyone right let's say right now if out of humility i start saying oh allah don't be unjust to me is that right yeah. can i pray it that way don't be oh allah don't be unjust to me oh allah don't lie to me so although allah so, says that he's not going to no, lie. No, no, hold on, hold on, so, hold on, hold on. Out of, so yeah. reflect this was that's really important so is that is that a contradiction is that so an internal contradi contradiction no so what it is is we are being asked to do something which is which is pointless, which is useless. No, 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 no. And I, why not... should I expect? No, no. Hold on. I'm trying to understand specifically. Okay. Yes, your argument is saying, "Well, yes. why do we make this du'a?" Hashim said, "Out of humility, to show our humbleness yes. before Allah." So there's a value in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you're saying there's mm -hmm. a prop, there's a contradiction. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a clear contradiction. Now, I'm not seeing any clear contradictions in this verse. So I so the the inconsistency is I'll tell you what it is. So I believe that if God, if this is the this is the word these are the words of the God, I expect that those words would mean something. And when He's asking us to do something, it would make sense. Now if I read this verse. I read that he has clearly said that he's not going to do something. And right. then he's teaching us a prayer to ask him to not do that very thing. Right. And that uh. makes it an even, uh, uh, even, you know, if we trust in God, if so from, from a Muslim perspective, Allah is asking us to trust him entirely and in, 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 in hundred percent wholeheartedly. Now, if we trust him hundred percent, whatever he says, then why are we going to ask him to not do something that he has told he's not going to do? Out of so humility. He said that he's not going to burden. So, and that, that appears to be you something that us. this has, this was not thought very well, right? Thought it was not thought out. No, very no, no. Well reflecting the point being is this: yeah. if you're if you're going to argue a, that there's an internal contradiction, what you're having to argue is you're going to have to say. There's within the text of the Quran, there's proposition A, and within the text of the Quran, there's a proposition not A, yeah, at the same time in the same way. So you have to argue that what you're arguing okay, so is more based on what I feel the verse of the Quran should say, yeah, and that you're trying to argue that maybe it's redundant. Now, Hashim has given an explanation, Hamza's given an explanation. If you don't want to take Hamza's explanation for whatever reason, you've got Hashim's explanation. And he said that even though the Prophet wasallam's future past and present sins were forgiven, he would still seek forgiveness from uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. I can give, by the way, I could give various explanations upon that verse to remove any type of logical contradiction or even any type of redundancy. Yeah. Actually, there is no logical contradiction, but any type of inconsistency. Now, what I'm trying to say is that if I'm going to refute Islam or the Quran and I'm going to say it's contradictory, yeah, then I have to demonstrate that I'm under the burden of proof. I can't just simply say, well, I think this verse should say X as opposed to Y. Yeah, that's not an argument against Islam or the Quran unless you're saying external reasons as to why I think it should say X as opposed to Y. Yeah. 
Now you're not so doing that. Either. Just uh, yeah. So just to simplify, so I understand that you uh, yes, the first point that you mentioned that it's not a pure logical uh, contradiction. I understand that. Uh, that's why I said it's a sort of inconsistency. And I'm right. I said okay, so logical so inconsistency. Let's, let's but be clear. Let's be yeah, clear. it's an inconsistency. So, so yeah, that, let's let's be clear. So let's be clear. So you you agree that it's not the the verse of Quran is not a contradiction. Not a logical contradiction. Yeah, not. not it's not, not a contradiction. Yeah. It's not. It doesn't contradict itself. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. You're right. In fact, you're right. Not, right. not a contradiction. Okay. In fact, so it doesn't it's an inconsistency. In, right. What yeah. do you mean by inconsistency? How, how do you yeah. define an inconsistency? inconsistency? I tell you. So, in, uh, so what I mean by that is, we are being asked to be scared of something apparently from the ayah, of something that is not going to happen at all, because when we are praying, when you're praying very, very and they, these are very specific, uh, very specific words that we are being asked to repeat that do not burden us with something that we cannot bear when we already know that this is when allah has already told us that he's not going to do it now so my question say, would be why would a wise why would a wise god why would a uh, you know uh, an uh, uh, let's say a wise god would yeah. ask us such to you know pray in such a way he can ask us in any way he can he ask us humility. humility in other ways instead of asking us to uh asking us something that is anyway uh you know not okay. going to do i so understand that's that's, uh, that's the point uh, yeah, yeah 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 so when we say something's inconsistent what we're saying is the thing does not measure up to its own standard mm -hmm. yeah this is in essence when we're saying something's inconsistent is that correct would you agree with that definition yeah exactly right okay so the quran is not inconsistent in this verse because the standard is that you are being told one thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree or judgment and you're also being told, uh, you're being taught a particular dua as well. How is that inconsistent? I would say that is something that a wise God wouldn't say. I no, no inconsistency. Not ask. You've got to be inconsistent. You got to you using words like okay, so, we've agreed. It's not a contradiction now. Oh, I didn't. Now I, I, I never use the word contradiction. I just said inconsistency. But uh, but uh, if if you think that's not the right word, because I'm of course I am not. Uh, uh, I would say a very uh, very well read in logic and uh, uh, you know argumentation. But uh, you might be right okay. that it's not an inconsistency. But I would say that a wise God. I cannot expect from a wise a wise God. To ask us to pray to him in such a way, which is sort of meaningless, and that is my right, point. So, I don't so, find yeah. Right. Okay. So now we're sort of abandoning. There the are two. Sorry. So just just to add one point. No. Let me there finish my point. Many right. ways. No, let me yeah. So just just so half half a sentence. You can, and then you can come back okay, afterwards. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Sure. Because sure, if you sure. stop your point and then you go again. Sure. So the so we've abandoned the point of view about con contradictions. We've abandoned the point of view about inconsistencies. Now you're saying. You think that it's better for a wise God not to teach human beings this prayer because God has already said that he's not going to, uh, you know, uh, burden us beyond uh, more than we can bear. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. So how, and then and then you said another part, which said if if God is going to teach us how to be how to have humility, there are other ways. Exactly, yes. Right. But how do we know those other ways are better? Because if we believe that this verse is from God, then we're going to believe that this is all from an all-wise, all-knowing God, and he knows the psychology of a human being. Because, look, for example, I know, for instance, that, you know, as a human being, I know that God is not going to give me something more than I can bear. But there are times where I feel I am being burdened beyond yeah, there are times where my psychology and my emotional disposition feels that way. So making this dua is a way of comforting my heart. Yeah, it's not changing the state of the reality, the true state of affairs. But what it does do, it helps comfort my heart. In regards to the difficulties that I may face or other people may face. And how do, and why do I think that that's a great thing? Well, that's really important as a human being and therefore it's also being taught by an all-wise all-knowing God and therefore I think actually that's correct as well so it's consistent in that sense as well 
Now, all you're going to say is, well, yeah, for you, it's not. Uh, you know, you you don't think you th it's the right way to create humility. But other people are going to say it is a right way to create humility. And then we don't really have any way of arbitrating this discussion any further. So it's not really an argument that demonstrates any incorrectness within the, within Islam. It's just an argument that you have a particular subjective opinion, and I may have a particular subjective opinion, and it's just two subjective opinions. It's not a criteria for me to say this is objectively wrong or objectively inconsistent, because we've demonstrated that it isn't a contradiction, neither is it inconsistent. You're just simply saying you okay. feel that it should be another way. Okay. So I think what I can objectively say, though, is that we are being asked to pray for something that is, in fact, never going to happen. Right. So we are just that is objectively true. We are being asked to pray for something to be, in fact, to for from protection for some from something that is, in fact, never going to happen. That is if we take the true, reading right? that you've taken. Yeah. And I don't know and the full this is, of that verse. I don't know the full tafsir okay. of that verse because I would go. I don't know. Did you ever? Did you look at the tafsir of the verses? Verse of so I, I looked up the various translations, number of translations. No tafsir. On, uh, I'm asking for tafsir. Quran.com. No, 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 uh, brother. I'm asking. I tried for, to look it up. Imam I tried to look this particular Imam topic. Imam Tabi, so. Imam Razi, mm -hmm. Imam Zamakshari. I'm looking. I'm asking you. Did you look up any of these uh, explanations of this verse of Quran? Uh, no, I didn't look into tafsir, but I was looking into translation. So right, I okay, up yeah, but translation to be. But, 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 so but the Sharif, is he saying he left Islam because of this verse, but didn't bother to look at a single commentary? He only looked at translations. Oh, uh, yeah. Just to clarify, I never said that I left Islam for this verse. I was yeah, very. Yeah, you, you were saying that this reasons. verse but, contributed. What, what is the main yeah, reason? There are many reasons. Yeah. No, no. Maybe, I'll tell you what. Reason. I'll be honest with you. This is one of the what many things, and it's then? not. No, no. Sorry. If you're being honest now, what were you being before? Uh, okay, if you want to, if you want to catch that word, that's fine. But uh, what I'm saying is that these are. This is one of the many things that uh, have concerned me. Uh, but okay, uh, um, this was just something that I wanted to discuss today. Right, but this, right. Look, yes. what you're saying. This right never now, concerned you. No, no, no. Shut wait, up. wait, wait, wait. Serious. Wait. No, Repetitive. excuse me. I never said this never concerned me. This is one no, of the things. No, this never did concern you. You just know where you sat done, reading the Quran and go, oh, wait a minute. Whoa, what the fuck? Well, what you've done right now is you've made a okay. very poor argument, which has failed. And then you've said, this is one of the many things which has led me away from Islam. So you basically, what you've done is you've given us a glimpse into what that other pile is going to be. Because this thing, as Sharif showed, is not incoherent not inconsistent, and it does not disprove Islam. So what you've basically done for the last 20 minutes is give a very good advertisement for the ex-Muslim people. Like this and, is and the right, there's another Actually, actually, there's, just to... There's another point, right? Sorry, one second, right? There's another point, and then it goes back to what Ijaz said, it goes back to what my point was as well, about explain, asking you whether you looked at the tafsir. Because the natural reaction of a person who believes in a particular proposition and with evidence against it, or he comes across as, uh, across as of evidence against his particular belief, is not to just abandon the belief, but rather as sincere as possible to investigate the truth of that belief. Yeah, that's what you would normally do. Because this goes again, it goes to the psychology of a person. If you really believe that Islam was true and somebody comes up with an argument against Islam and you would rinse as much as you possibly can all of the you know references, all of the supporting arguments in order to try to answer this question. And then once you've you know done all of your research, you still got doubt, then that's a separate issue. But what we tend to find with a lot who leave Islam, and to be honest, is everyone I've met, yeah, and I've been on these streams and in other streams, is they do they never done the research when they leave Islam. In fact, they become more knowledgeable about verses of the Quran after they become an ex-Muslim, yeah. Than when they were a Muslim. So then the question then becomes, well, what was it that actually led them to leave Islam? It doesn't sound like it was arguments, evidences. It sounds like it was more psychology. 
yeah, some sort of psychological factors that maybe led them away. Maybe they were hit too many times at the masjid or whatever. I don't know. Had bad experiences. I don't, I don't know what know. masjid you go to, Sharif, but I don't think people would hit people. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm just saying. So maybe that's what he meant. Yeah. So reflecting right, were you a practicing Muslim before you became before you left Islam? Yeah, I I I was a practicing Muslim particularly for two years in my life. Only two years. Very but Yeah, I would say I was very practicing in those two years uh, because I uh, I would say I was. But you, before that, I wanted to clarify. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, Sabur, you said that at the very first, I said something that this is the ayah. I, in the very beginning, I was asked, what, "Is this the ayah due to uh, because of which I am uh, I became a uh, non-Muslim or left Islam?" I very clearly said that there are many reasons, and I just want to discuss one verse today. I was yeah, but you, you said it was, you, you said it was a contributing factor. That was the key point. It was a contributing. Yeah, of course, I said there are many words. There are many points. Can, can you? But read this is one, but one one word that I want to discuss. Yeah, no, can you, you, you did say that at the very start. You're, you're right that this is one of the reasons, one yes. of the many passages in the Quran. Yeah, yes, of course. But you know, when you were practicing for the two years, do you used to pray five times a day? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I used to pray Tahajjud. Can, I have, I, can you recite yes. Fatiha for us? Okay, you want to test me? I can recite it if you want me. Can, that, can you recite no it? Yes. Go on. on. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Rahman Rahim Maliki Yomidi, Yakana Budu, Yakana Sain, Eden Seratal Mustaki, Seratal Lazina, and Amta, him, Hyder Mahdu, we are him at all. Okay. I mean, do you know the meaning of this um, ayat? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. So when you say Eden Seratal Mustakim, what does it mean? Eden Seratal Mustakim, uh, show me, uh, uh, you know, walk me the right path. Okay. And, and when you were a practicing Muslim, and you said you yes. prayed tahajjud as well so what yes. was the main thing that made you leave islam you know from was it a, was it a passage in the quran or something from the hadith what is the main thing that led you to change from a practicing muslim so, praying tahajjud to completely becoming agnostic in, in so, other words as hamza would put it who was she what was the name <laughs> what was the name <laughs> <laughs> nice one <laughs> Well, uh, it's a good question, it Yeah, so uh, just to answer Sharif's question first, there wasn't any, uh, this wasn't a case of a girl, in fact, never, because uh, I'm still married uh, to a Muslim woman. And yeah, I was joking. I sort of, but anyway, Yo, yeah, yeah, how, how yeah. old are you, right? How old are you? I'm 33. 33. And how old were yeah. you when you left Islam? So it was a very gradual process. I would say I I sort of I have been through Pascal's uh, Pascal's wager about Islam for a while before I sort of then I know it sort of piled up, you know, it sort of piled up on me and I was like, okay, now there are too many things that I think I cannot reconcile. And yeah, I don't okay, think well, there I find any particular reason to now what's, believe what's your, uh, for okay, Islam for the truth. What's your biggest reason you left Islam? The biggest reason, man. That was I, don't want one reason. I want a proper reason. I, I want a proper reason. No, my question would be, why would I believe in Islam? Because uh, that no, was... No, right. No, I'm asking why would you, I believe, why should I'm I believe asking in you, you were why you decided in Islam. Islam wasn't That's not the true. question. No, because I'll tell you what. So, there were... Over time, there were many reasons. I would say, you know, uh, logical. Give, give us the main reason. Like, give us your best reason. reason. I, no, I'll be honest. There is no one main there reason. There must have been something. There must be some, something that you, You're a synopsis, for God's sake. Something happened. Yeah. I would well, say, yeah. there are, as I said, there is no one main argument. I I was, was it psychological? Uh, in the phase of Pascal's wager. But if you want me to discuss a few more... Uh, points that I have, I can discuss that because I find, I realize that there is nothing in Islam, but there's no particular argument in Islam due to which I should, uh, you know, stay a Muslim. There no, the is question, no argument. The question I, is, I, I no, 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 no,
What uh, made you leave it? Because uh, you were already Iman, you're contradicting what you're saying earlier. What you no, said no. is you had many reasons that why you left Islam. And now when we're asking you for those reasons, you're saying, I had no reasons to be a Muslim. So you've actually switched it over. Now, what we want to do is we'll we'll happily speak to you about why Islam, we believe it to be the truth and we can see if you can challenge it. What we want to know is your initial proposition, your initial idea that you're putting forward was that there's too many things. There's too many things which are hard to reconcile in Islam. And the most poorest example you gave us. And when that example is shredded to pieces, we're asking you for something concrete. So if you have 10 reasons why you left Islam, just give us one that you think is the most pertinent. That's all we're asking for. And please don't muddy the waters and confuse the situation. Just, just tell us one reason, please. But, but, but Sabah, there's a point also. If reflecting right is saying that there was no reason to remain a Muslim because there was no justification, then it goes back to what you said earlier, which is, well, why would you give up a belief system that gives you understandings about values, purpose, meaning, etc.? For something that doesn't existence, give you existence, yeah. yeah, existence. Because right, what you have to understand is just from a you know um, you know the nature of a human being, you know, from a pragmatic point of view. What I mean by pragmatic, you know, we as human beings, we we require certain things. Yeah, we look for certain things. We look for truth, objective truths about the world. We look for maybe objective moral facts about the world, yeah? Something can be morally true and morally wrong. We're looking for purpose, real meaning and real purpose to life. All of these things we're looking for, yeah? We, we have a desire to fulfill our sanctification and spiritual instinct. What you're doing is you're basically saying, I'm going to rip that away, that desire that I have for all of these things, and adopt a position that gives me none of these things. That doesn't satisfy the human condition. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem that you have. Yeah. And Sharif, I just want to add to your point. From Frederick Nietzsche to modern day communists, they all had these existential crises when they left faith. Leaving a faith-based system, something that gives you value, meaning, purpose, drive. It gives you a grounding for your life for nothingness is a traumatic experience according to the most intelligent atheists in the world. So why would somebody choose something which gives them nothing over something that's at least attempting, even if you believe it to be false, at least attempting to give you a worldview? Why? I mean, let's, let's be frank here. Let's be honest here. This new atheist movement was going on for a few years. It died Half of the people went over to Jordan Peterson's ideas because of he's speaking about meaning and purpose. So it's a traumatic experience. No one denies that. It's a traumatic experience to go from faith to faithlessness. And what we're trying to ask you is, why would you make that decision? And why would you like anybody else to make that decision? Because you're obviously on this stream, not to make mute points. You're here to try and convince us of your worldview. So please elucidate your worldview. Tell us what's so appealing about the position that you have currently and why should someone like me or anybody else on this panel choose your worldview over ours? Well, I would say that uh, my position is, and I think that's the intellectually honest position. I would believe in something when I have a reason to believe in it. I Do you find have a purpose uh, in life? But right, you're taking life. a position where you can't even be sure if any if your wife exists. Of course. True. You see, so how are you going to find? So how is, are you going to find truth if that's your premise? Okay, so that is a in, that is an inherent limitation. You can you know uh, close your eyes to that fact, but you cannot be certain about. Uh, I think at least my. Uh, uh, judgment or my understanding tells me how can you be certain of anything because you point. are feeling yeah I, I mean how, how how are you certain of anything how do you know that whatever you're feeling is yes oh i'm you certain see, because how, i me how are you certain of anything yes how, how, how do you know with this reality unlike you exactly sorry hamza is in touch with his reality unlike you no i practically speaking i'm in touch with my reality as well but if you'll but ask your reality me, doesn't exist. Certain... 
your reality no, doesn't exist. I didn't exist. say it doesn't exist. I say you it said might it earlier, be whether... something very different than what I think it is, right? Okay. No, you, 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 no, 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 reality no, no, in your world view. What is reality in your world the, 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 Reflecting, there's a different point. You can say that I had reality as it is, only as I experience it, or you can say that I don't actually believe that I can prove an external reality even exists. You initially said you're a solipsist, which yes. I said that all I know is my own experience, my own conscious feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then sure of, yes. all, all I can be sure of. Yeah. So the other thing is this. Look, let me let me let me ask you. You said that you don't believe in anything, any propositions that you cannot prove. Yeah. Is that is that in essence what you're saying? Yeah, of course. I mean, I should have right. some. So you you don't believe. So, so because you can't prove your wife exists, you don't believe she exists. Yeah, so I mean, so for practical purposes, I, I, I as I said, for practical purposes, so, I live in right. a way that this reality is real. That's fine. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Like, right, hold on, hold on. This is a really important point. Mm -hmm. Does it make okay. sense to adopt a practic pragmatic approach that your wife exists? Yes, I right. do believe that. So now, what Sabor and I myself mentioned earlier as well is it makes practical sense to believe Islam is true. Of course, because so. it gives you meaning, purpose, truth, value, etc. That's right. A grounding so for rationality. That, okay, that might be something that you feel it gives you value. I used to feel that way as well, but over time, I have realized that it is not something that I feel is necessary. All right. Okay. I'm so you know, my life, and I feel all, all, I feel satisfied. And I feel satisfied. But you're, ch you're changing the goalposts here. Uh, no, no. Reflect. I'm just going to call you Rai because okay. you're not reflecting right now. Okay. Your wife is not necessary. So according to that logic, it, there's no point of you believing in her. There's no point. There's no way I can be certain of that, of course. But I, I, uh, I choose to believe whatever uh, I feel. Yes, well, that's fine. I, that, you don't need to tell us that. <laughs> You've been doing that for the last half an hour. Oh, the yeah. point, the point I'm trying to get, the point we're all trying to get to here, is that every single time you state a position, and then we show you why that position leads to a contradiction in what you have previously stated, you shift that position. So look, let's just let's just. So what contradiction have you shown me till, till now? Basics. For example, let's bring it back to some basics. You believe that the position that you currently hold is better than the position of believing in God. Would you say that's a fair statement? I would say yes. It's it's a more intellectually honest position because okay. I feel that way. I, I can I say, say because I'll, I would sorry, say just to clarify. I, okay, I would I say mean, I've been through past honest. For a while. Wait one second. If it's an intellectually honest position, then tell us why that's the case. Go ahead. Because I feel. Uh, you feel I, mean, I don't I understand. care about sorry. your feelings. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I understand I actually, my understanding. When I say I feel my understanding I, is look, your your feelings don't change the fabric of the universe. Of course, of your course. feelings don't change oh. anything. Tell me why. Apologies, my English. Your worldview makes more sense. Is more intellectually honest than the worldview of someone who believes in God. And don't talk about your feelings, please. Okay, so sorry. Uh, pardon my English. So I, I meant my understanding. I have an understanding. I have a consciousness and I process some information. Now, based on the information that I received, based on the processing that I did, I have uh, concluded that what processing? there is no reason. I don't know. So let, let what I'm saying is... Home, but no one's home. Let him finish. Okay. Okay. So what, what I'm saying is, finish? I know that I'm a thinking self. I process some information and I concluded based on in the, on the on that uh, mental processing that this is uh, you know the arguments that are being presented to me uh, the particularly for islam i don't find them compelling i don't find them to be uh, convincing then that, that's why i think that in fact you're you know not, uh, you're not convinced you exist so why would it matter to you if the arguments for islam are not convincing so, okay so let me how are you no, no, wait, how that. are you answer sure that. of your existence right no? Sorry, right. because you know this discussion. Look, I have seen look, this discussion right. a lot of Answer times. That. But if I want to see the. I want to understand the wait, wait, purpose, second. though. If you're How are you sure of your of existence? The arguments though? of Islam. If you're not convinced of the arguments of mm -hmm. Islam, and you're not convinced whether you, you you exist, right? 
reality his wife exists. exists. You know, the external world exists other than yourself. Why would that matter at all? Why would arguments for Islam not being convincing uh, matter to you at all? You see, okay, so you started asking me these questions. These are philosophical discussions. I understand when you'll ask me, are you sure that I exist? Um, I, I can say I exist. When, if you ask me, you, do you exist? And, uh, philosophically speaking, or I cannot be sure of that. But of no, course, but why? I, no, but you, 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 you've avoided the question you've been asked. So I'm not, I'm not going to allow you to. You I, were asked the question, what is this in, intellectual decision based upon that not believe in God and to be what you believe it is the intellectual, you said it's the best intellectual decision or the best yeah, intellectual God. choice. Why? You said you've done some processing. What did you process? Information. I have what I'm thinking, right? I can okay, what I know that I can process. think. Hamza How does the process? Think, Hamza, okay, I think so, his argument is this. So his far, the way you've described your processing, I can just imagine a, a mouse running around in a wheel. Like I, I can't understand what the input is, what the output is. I've just seen you just spinning around. Sure, he's gonna make his argument for him. So <laughs> so do you want me uh, so right now are you uh, do you want me to, uh, to tell you the input by input, I can discuss one other argument which I found, which I think is among uh, among many, which I think uh, is uh, something that... Uh, I just want to know why you believe your position is intellectual. Okay, so so let, let me... Let so me, intellectual... So, so right, right. Let me give you an example of what you're doing. Yeah, what, the example of what you're doing. You believe that your younger brother is growing in height, you see outside, there's a tree in your garden that is growing in height. And therefore, you believe that your young brother growing in height is linked to the fact that there's a tree growing taller in your garden. You're making an argument for something that you believe using something that has nothing to do with that belief. So we're asking you, why do you believe in your position? And you're saying, I don't find Islam convincing or I find this thing to be inconsistent and we're simply asking you you're here to tell us this is the intellectually best position the intellectually superior position the position that you believe is correct so please make an argument for that position not the fact that another position which is unrelated is actually false do you understand what I'm saying the, you're asking me to tell you why it is an intellectually honest position for me to yes. be an agnostic, let's say. That's right. right? So give, give an intellectual reasoning, not an emotional reasoning. Like I feel, of course. I think. Okay, know? I say I feel, but I have always been, uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah, uh, so give, I, give an intellectual not, reasoning, not, not an emotional one. That's all Sabur yeah. and the rest of the panel of want to know. So I have mental capacities that I'm aware of, right? Is that correct? Is that? Something uh, because I think I I have a you mental capacity. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how you, how you want me to answer this question. You don't, want, uh, you don't ask me a question. You, but just make the point. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Because I'm asking you. Because right. I'm asking you. Right. Right. Do you believe in free will? I'm not sure. I'm, no, I can. I, I cannot be sure uh. of that either. Uh, I think. I think do we've milked this cow. Do you believe your consciousness? Do you believe your consciousness? Right. <laughs> I want to hear what she Yeah, that's say. that's uh, that's a solipsist position, right? Because that okay. is the one thing that you can be sure of, right? Absolutely sure. Of. Go on, go on. Well, sorry, there are there are philosophical arguments against that, by the way, about being sure of your own consciousness. Okay. Good, but anyway, no. So, but right, a point I, consciousness. I think that can be something that you can be sure of. So I can be sure. I can be sure that right now in this very moment, I'm conscious. So, yeah. Okay. So, so right. So, so there's a few things here. Yeah. I don't think you really look. One, you brought up a verse of Quran which we demonstrate is not contradictory or inconsistent, uh, and doesn't disprove Islam. Secondly, Hashim and his brothers have asked you a question. It makes no what sense. Though. Your, it makes what's no your sense. main reason? What's your main reason as to why you left Islam? And then what you said was, well, actually, there was no justification for Islam. Whereas before, what you said was there are many reasons why you left Islam. That's inconsistency, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, sorry, I sorry. think uh, then so you asked the question. Uh, then you then you made a point. Then you made a point, and you said, "I only believe in things 
that I can demonstrate and prove. Basically, that's what you said that I know is to be true. So he said, "Okay, do you believe your wife exists?" And he said, "Well, pragmatically, yeah, but I can't be sure. But I will accept that as a pragmatic belief." This is what you said. So then I said, and so boy, other brothers have mentioned as well. I said, "Well, look, what stops you from adopting a position where you pragmatically believe Islam is true? Because we know that Islam actually conforms to the human nature, the fitrah of a human being." Yeah. But he wants to see rush he wants to believe in rationality. Do you want to believe in rationality, right? Yes, I want to believe that. Right, okay. Do you want to believe that you have a purpose? Uh I can have a purpose. Uh, there can be a purpose if there if there's a God, he can uh, so. so you want to believe one, yeah? Yes, if there's one, I, I'm definitely open to that. I'm I'm not against it. That's why I said right, I'm an agnostic. Okay. Do you want to believe that there is real meaning in your life and in the life of other human beings? Well, when you say want to, uh, I mean, I again, I'm open to that. I, I, there can be. And I'm not asking if you're open to it. I'm not asking you whether you think. Do I have a desire? Do I I'm have saying, a desire? Do you want, yeah. Do you have a desire that you want to see that there's real value and meaning in other human beings? Okay, so uh, I'm not sure. I wouldn't say that I have any dis particular desire to have a meaningful something, but uh, no, so, I wouldn't say so, I have a particular desire. Right. I have a right. desire for rationality. You, you I have like a desire this... to live. I have a desire to live. Okay. Uh, a happy so right, life. are you like a so are you like a psychopath? And I ask that as a serious question, <laughs> because if you don't, but if no you idea. don't have a desire, if you don't have a desire and a belief. Or you at least a desire to want to see value in other human beings, then that psychopathic okay, so that trait. No, no, no. Sorry, that part. A value. I, I was just talking about meaning. Sorry, I missed that part. You say value, no, other I, meaning. Yes, so yes, I would say I have a desire. Okay, okay. So I would, I would, I want for others to exist with me as well. Yeah. So if you say value right, in others, okay. If that is what you so yeah. right. So you. And you I mean, I, I feel like I'm a social being. So and feel, feel that like they I'm have value person. and meaning, don't don't you? You want them to have you want them to have real value and real meaning. But they're not just in relation to yourself. I already I already feel a connection, right? So I love my wife. So I already feel yeah, that connection. What more should I want? Because right, right, what it is when I say real, the word real here means even if you did not exist, you would still believe. Or feel that this person external to you has real value, or you wouldn't yes, care. I think because no, I, I do have feelings, so I, I would say yes. Right. Okay. But so I feelings toward my. So that's my, what I'm saying. I'm saying rationality, purpose, meaning, free will. You want free will? Do you uh, want the ability? Uh, to make uh, probably yes. Probably yes. Right. Um, I wouldn't say absolutely yes, but I've never thought about it that way. Would I want free will? Right. Okay. So all of these things, these pragmatic realities, which are a state of all human beings, I would say. I'm not saying these are these are just you yourself. All human beings, I think, have this innate desire to want to see real, you know, values in these areas. Purpose, meaning, objective morals, you know, values in other human beings, etc., etc., yeah? Now, how do you know that? Why? Why? I'm not saying how. Like I'm not. I'm not. This is not an argument you know of rationality. This is not a rational argument to justify all these. This is an argument. Why can't to I say, say that? That, that is just fitra, how you feel. Your fitra, your fitra, yeah, is going to push you into adopting mm -hmm. certain positions, which you believe, to, which you will hold to be true, even if you cannot prove them to be true. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. And that's why you'll you'll believe that your wife exists and you believe that your wife has real meaning and real value, even if you intellectually cannot prove it, because your fitra is driving you to that position. Yeah. And I'm saying the same consistent approach would mean that you your fitra would push you to ground all of that in a objective way. What I mean by mm -hmm. objective way is human mind independent so it's so 
when I say actually my wife has real meaning and value and my children have real meaning and value and my parents have real meaning and value, how am I going to ground that? Well, I can ground that with this belief in a necessary being that created us intentionally and is the grounding and the source of justice, value, mercy, etc. Yeah, real true moral propositions. Now that I'm saying there's not a, what what you need to look at is the consistency in your approach. And I don't think you're being consistent in your approach. Does that make sense, Roy? So, so where exactly do you find? Can you point out one inconsistency, for example? Because you're saying you you want to believe. You're saying you want to. <laughs> there's a few I thought I went through at the beginning, but you want to. Yeah. You said that you won't believe in things that you cannot intellectually prove. But at the same time, you will believe. Yeah. That your wife exists and she has real meaning, real value, yeah, independent to you, yeah. So you believe that, don't you? Even if you can't prove it. Yes, I. Yeah. I choose to believe that. Yes. Yes. I mean, I yeah. feel that. I believe that. Yes. Yeah, Pragmatically, yeah, of course. As you said. And you agree, right? It's a fitter drive, isn't it? It's fittery drive. Something within your innate nature drives you to hold that position. Yes, I think yes. Right. <clears throat> so I'm saying, so that 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 part now, that position you hold now, is inconsistent to the position of saying that I only believe in things that I can rationally prove. Okay. So, you see, I understand that that what you're trying to prove, but ultimately, I'm already in that position uh, of you know accepting whatever reality is being presented to me right i'm accepting right right in a way uh, that right, what this world is right, that's why I, I i'm discussing right, islam right I don't think because giving, otherwise i wouldn't I be discussing any particular religion to Sorry? sharif who spent quite a bit of time explaining clearly lucidly you just completely contradicted yourself no no right okay so way he did it no, and let, rather let than me. actually acknowledging and the fact that i think three times now He's laid out that you believe something that you can't prove, yet you previously said that you won't believe in something unless it's justified. So he's just shown you that you've contradicted yourself. Can you at least have the manners to, you know, your argument's dead. Can you at least lie down? <laughs> like, I don't do know. Mind, also, so I don't know which both, particular argument is dead. acknowledging the contradiction here. But also, there's another I'm point as sure. well, which is this, right? Right. Even, look, even as a human being, yeah. There are limits to my knowledge. Yeah. There are things that I might not know. But I have I I recognize that there are there are innate dispositions within myself. Yeah. And those innate dispositions are best explained through an abductive process. Something that Islam gives me. Yeah. Because it will give me an explanation to purpose, meaning, my view. Yeah, value of people around me, that they do exist. Yeah, that there are true moral propositions within the world. Yeah, that um, rationality does exist, that free will does exist. So even if I cannot intellectually and rationally prove, yeah, this aspect of Islam, I can at the very least say that Islam agrees with my fitra my drives and it gives me grounding now the consist in the consistency or inconsistency in your situation is this is you're willing to grant that the fitter can lead you to believe that your wife exists but your inability to use the same methodology to say okay does it now make sense for islam to be true as well using the fitter yeah be i.e that the fitter will drive me to look for real meanings in other people and the world around me and myself and the best explanation around all of that would be a belief in a creator so so you see i can directly feel the things around me whether they are there or not so i accept like i accept them as they are right is it that apparent is islam that apparent just like the yeah. things that are around me or is yeah. that is that another level is, is that a level higher so you, yeah, what you're saying is that I directly, I, I touch a fire and I get burnt and I feel, oh, that exists, yeah? 
Or at least I can so, feel I mean, that. Yeah, I feel something. So I would choose yeah. to, you know, so, I can feel pain and I can feel, yeah. uh, you know, pleasure. So, 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 so some people who get a spiritual feeling, yeah, and they have this, you know, uh, first person subjective spiritual feeling that exists. But the other point is this, which is more of, more of a fundamental point, which is this. And this is why you, you, you do have to think this through a little bit more, which is to say, okay, I want to ground, I want to say that rationality exists, that we can believe that there are things that we can know which are true. Yeah. How do I ground that? Can I ground that from my state as a human being, from my brain, and then ground it? Or do I, I'm an externalist view when it comes to the issue of knowledge, meaning that I can ground it on the fact that God exists and that God gives me the capacity to be able to come to true uh, uh, true propositions about the world. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that the grounding of what you want to believe in, the grounding that your experiences are true, the grounding that your wife exists, the grounding of the fact that there's purpose and meaning and value in your life and other people's life, all of that grounding is best explained if you think about it is best explained uh, if a creator exists now if you're going to be saying i don't care about any of these things then you can say okay i don't need to have an argument for god yeah i don't need to believe in god but if you care about these things then the way that you're going to ground that caring as being real and substantive is to say okay there must be a creator now it requires a bit of thinking and a bit of reflecting, Rai. I know your name's reflecting Rai, but that's what it needs. Okay. Yeah. And there's other, that's just this is a fittery point. I could explain it from an intellectual point as well, but I want you to just to think about this from this fittery angle. Yeah. I mean, my uh, point would be if even if I want to believe in something because that is the innate desire in me right the fitra that you are uh, the fitra argument that you're invoking uh, i am just uh, not able to connect that just because i want it to be true whether it should be true but you already lived this is the point this is right this is a really important point this point is not saying you want to believe in something spiritual therefore you know mm -hmm. you believe in god no this is a bit more subtle than that it's saying you already do this. You already believe in things from a pragmatic point of view because you have this fitri desire. Yeah. And what I'm saying is the way to ground that, to make real sense of it, is say because a creator exists. So you're already doing it. Yeah. All I'm saying is take that step further to coherent. So your worldview becomes coherent in accordance to your fitra your innate nature so um can we can we end this? i'm okay 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 yeah yeah please. That's fine. reflect okay. upon it thank you very much <laughs> okay sure thank I, you can you, I you one last thank question you very much. tell yes. me the process of pascal's wager that you went through the process of pascal's, wager. pascal's wager explain to me that just quickly uh, so, I, I I use as one was when uh, it was just about Islam, as in I was I was I w what you would call an agnostic Muslim. Like I believed in Islam just because I said okay. Tell me I the just, process. Uh, process? What you what, what should I explain about the well, process? Pascal's wager, isn't it? You you said you went through Pascal's wager. Um, if if you um. If you don't, what's the, if you don't it's, believe. It's a sort of, you can call it, I, I would call it a denial phase, right? So I, I, although I was not intellectually satisfied by whatever Islam. Oh, was, shut up. Uh, You're not intellectual at all, mate. On your way. I, I don't uh, understand you something. Can, well, hold on. Hamza, uh, hold on. I'll just get rid of him. Get rid of him. How, how are you, you ask him what was the process you went through? And he's like, he's not sure. But earlier he said he processed information. How can you process information and then not understand what process means like two minutes later? Secondly, has he? I think he should change his name to Reflecting Sourdough or something. Why just does not suit him, to be quite honest. But please continue. 
<laughs> I think just as a quick, I think when he said processing information, he's trying to say that I exist because I process information, not I have processed this information about something. He just, I think his wording was really I, off. I, I'm, I'm sick of him saying the word intellectual. There's nothing into intellectual about this. I thought yeah. Jason was bad. <laughs> The problem is, the problem is, there are other reasons why he left Islam. Probably yeah, has know. been mentioned the new atheist movement, self loathing about Islam, the attacks against Islam, pe weakened people's confidence within it, all of these different things. Yeah, that's probably what led him out. Now, what's happened is because he's abandoned Islam, there's no grounding for anything in his life, including intellectual grounding. Yeah, what? Where, where do you put your feet in the ground and say, okay, this is why I accept X, Y, Z? He's got none of that anymore, and now it's a case of how do I try to justify the reasons why I left, and that's why he's searching for this ayah and that ayah, and you know, you probably never knew these ayat existed when he was Muslim. Well, alam, yeah. Even the ayat suddenly... he gave was nitpicking, you know, it wasn't really. It is it's nitpicking. You're right. Much, much, uh, that was a really good point, man, because uh, about humility. I think it's a very important point. I mean, Allah tells us that he forgives, but he tells he still gives us doers to seek forgiveness. So he'll yeah. probably turn up and ask the same thing. Why would Allah tell us to make dua for forgiveness if he's forgiven? The argument doesn't work. Humans sometimes can control their stream of thoughts. They have as existential doubts. A form of concerned. reassurance to repeat something. Yeah. So even yeah. if you have made the dua once, then that you say, why make the dua again? You know, you've already made it, so it makes no sense to make it again. It's but a another thing. Insurance. That's yeah. all. It is. Reputation is something which Allah and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have encouraged us. Specifically, Amal bin Maruf. You know, the things which are which are good, the things which are uh, righteous. These things we are told to repeat. The prayers, you know, you have the fourth prayers, then Allah tells you to perform, I mean, the Prophet ﷺ told us to perform the Sunnah prayers, and then we have the Nafil prayers. Whereas they'll say, oh, the Quran only says, you know, pray. Okay, so these are the, you know, those Hadith rejectors, they make the same kind of arguments, isn't it? Kind of. So it's, it's yeah. always the whims and desires that come in, because it's how I want to live my life. It's how I feel. That's the reason he used this terminology. I feel, I think, yes. It's always like you know he's a solipsist, so it's yeah. self-centered anyway. How, how do you I mean, end up I wonder being a if these people when they eat the food, is it the real food they're eating, or is it just imaginary? No, food? you know, Hashim, I don't think he was a solipsist. I think it was just because well, he, he claimed was put, to be. Put, no, no, he's put in a corner when he was asked a direct question because, oh, and then he was had to justify it by saying, "Yeah, okay, yeah." Type yeah, of thing. I agree with that. I, I think that's yeah. what happened. I, I, I like putting people we in corners. We could have just asked him that. Um, and it's the same with any of these people. If you just ask them, okay, so that verse you have a problem with. Imagine that verse didn't exist. Would you still be a Muslim? The thing is, it's, it's not it's yeah. not those things that they're so pedantic about. We spent like 25 minutes on this thing where you tried to show it's a contradiction. Deep down at rock bottom, you cannot be in that worldview of whatever he was subscribing to and then make value judgments or even pretend to make arguments against anything else because you're literally just in this silo underground and you cannot reach out to anybody in the world so you know we really have to get people to understand that if you're gonna take that position then that position is gonna make you insulated from the rest of the world so a lot of the times these guys they think this is cool they think this is fantastic uh you know it just makes them sound so intellectual but um, and the sad thing is about the Muslim world is that these uh, uh, murtads and these types of people, they're like 10 years behind, just like technology and other things get to the Muslim world like 10 years late. You know, they're probably like getting hyped up about the atheism of 2012 and 2022. That's what's basically going on. And then in mm -hmm. 2032, they're going to be watching, you know, uh, the sort of they're, stuff. They're that playing, they're playing catch up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, a lot of these atheists, they simply... Um, cannot justify their own position so even if you say to okay fine uh my position is uh you know untenable tell me what shall i convert to just do that and just watch them just you know just just try and come up with something they, they literally can't all they can try and do is take pot shots at islam 
and 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 th this particular example that he gave was probably the poorest uh, I've seen on the arena, if if not on any of these live streams. That's right. I just want to say two things. First of all, chat, stop calling everyone a Hindu. There, there are there are there are people who do leave Islam. Yeah. Second thing, t I'll be honest with you, testing people with Fatiha. If I was an ex-Muslim, I'd be teaching ex-Muslims to learn Fatiha. So I don't think it's a test of anything, to be honest. So. Anyway, yeah. it just All that's right. a very poor test. Remember that next time. Ah, yes. I just wanted to see because sometimes these guys listen. I actually like this guy. I'll tell you why. He thought he was intellectually superior than all of us when he first came on. You guys could not possibly answer the problem with this ayah. I was not even thinking think that was Jason. You guys answer you're, him. Get, you're getting the guys mixed up. I think that was Jason. You have not read any scholarly work, I've read them all. <laughs> yeah. when, you know, when I, brother Sharif asked him Did you read a tafsir about this He's like no I went to Quran.com And looked at the translations <laughs> When he said that I left I went to make lunch right? I didn't have time to listen to anything After I was listening But the second he said that No Quran.com How is that going to help you This is literally the definition of ISIS Jesus uh, let, let me bring the next this oh. is the difference between people actually being intelligent and having the humility to understand that they're not intellectually superior to everyone else. Yeah. And he found himself in that corner, and I feel bad for him. Yeah, but to be honest with you, there were someone said something in the chat which I think was pretty cool was that the geezer was just a conduit to give that knowledge out. And I yeah, other agreed. people made in that position. So when Hashi made the point about the the verse, you know, it made me start thinking about that verse and. You know, the point that you also mentioned here, Hashim, about repetition. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling human beings. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling human beings to say to, to Allah, to make dua to Allah. There's like two ways. It reinforces the point. And it gives yeah. that, and in the point here is that it gives that psychological any uh, reassurance. comfort. Yeah, and reassurance. Yeah. yeah uh, to, you know, uh, on this issue. Because, you know, people face massive difficulties in their life. And so... To be to have that ability to make that du'a eyes, you know, and then also in the mind also know that Allah Subhanahu will never burden you. It's amazing. Oh, no. Okay, uh, next guest. Uh, this is somebody who's following the talk live earlier. Oh, here we go. And um, she said she had questions, but after listening, she changed the questions. So, welcome, Frankie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I saw this TikTok earlier and that Sarah was on. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a lot of questions after that. But then I just heard you say, why did you leave Islam to the last guest? And you said, who was she? Yes. Yeah. So it, it's just making me question about I, Islam's views on women what do you mean what do you think we meant by that when we said that well he said he left islam and you said who was she yeah but why do you think we said that no we didn't you did Hamza. no no why do you think i said that I, I don't know that's what i'm asking you all right so a lot of people who are muslim they they, they basically want to lead a western lifestyle they want to have girlfriends and this that the other and as a practicing muslim you, you can't do that so people actually leave Islam to become secular, to become non-Muslim, so they can have that girlfriend. And it happens a lot. Through, um, well, it, it, yeah, it doesn't it happen was, a lot in terms of people leaving Islam. But, but frankly, what wife. happens is that if a person is he not educated, a person, not, a person who's not educated, wife. sorry, I, let me explain the he point. Because I, I was well, the said one it, who initially asked the question. He said it was I, I initially wife. asked the question, are you going to let me finish the point? Yeah. So but he said it was his wife. That... I will let you finish your point, but don't talk about girlfriends, talk about his wife, because he said it was his wife. Oh, that, that, was Frankie, I think that was later on. That was later on, Frankie. Later on. So firstly, firstly, people who are not educated in Islam who get seduced within a non Islamic uh you know uh, activities, yeah, like girlfriend, boyfriend, or boyfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is, yeah, these days. Um, sometimes the uh, you know argument that Islam is not true to justify their lifestyle, as opposed to 
you know, leaving Islam for intellectual reasons and then adopting a lifestyle. So the point was a flippant point by by myself. I said, as Hamza would say, because Hamza, I've heard Hamza say it before. So it was a joke. It was a lighthearted. And even afterwards, when he said, oh, it, it wasn't the case, we didn't press him on that point. You know, he said he, he's married or whatever to a Muslim. And then I said, oh, it's just banter. We were just having a joke. That's it. Lightening the mood. Right. Yeah. So it was it was flippant. So um, yes. I should probably declare my position here. I'm agnostic. I'm agnostic because of the position I find myself in life at this moment in time with a terminal illness. And I'm potentially looking for comforting answers, let's say, which is how I've stumbled across this Hamza. <laughs> Today. I don't know how you stumbled across me. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. I get yeah. better. Yeah, it's all right. But so when you say you're looking for comforting answers, is that a roundabout way of saying I'm looking for God? It's a roundabout say of... I want to know that there's some way that I can look after my family after I'm gone. You're seeking God. I'm I'm seeking I'm seeking something that can prove itself to me. Security. Okay. So Frankly, something what, 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 so, so to... prove prove Islam to me. Prove the Prophet Muhammad to me. Go on. Before before we we go to the detail, because it's good to get a person's background to understand what they know, what they don't know, you know, uh things like that. You say I know you're nothing an... about religion. I don't okay. follow any religion. I've never followed yeah. any religion. So you, you sound like you're from the northeast as well. That's a good call, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. So, <laughs> okay, so you you so obviously we live in a very secular society in the UK, uh, and obviously you know religion is generally the artifacts of Christianity. So you have your your Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. Yeah, Cadbury's cream egg, and then you'll have your Christmas and the Christmas parties and stuff going I'm on. I'm not there. Christian. No, I mean, most people who celebrate uh, Christmas and have Easter eggs are not Christian either in the UK. But they still. But I'm just saying that's. I'm saying that's the experiences that we tend to have. Yeah, no, sorry, yeah. I have to stop. Yeah, uh, yeah. I celebrate. We do celebrate Christmas, but I celebrate it on a a time that it's. It's it's a good time to get the family together. Yeah, yeah, break that's some right. bread. <laughs> Culturally, not, which not is really. a biblical <laughs> reference, isn't it? But uh, yeah, yeah. But as but I'm saying, I'm just saying it's an artifact. It's an artifact. Christianity, yeah. is the religious aspect, it's just artifact, and it's more cultural. Yeah. Um. So, okay, fine. You you grew up in that environment. Uh, you're an agnostic. You know, you don't really know much about any religion. Um. So you, I think Hashim asked the question as well, which is, okay, why do you want to look for religion now? You sort of mentioned because obviously you've got something that's telling you, you know, you've got a time limit. We've all got a time limit. That's the reality of life. You know, and it's a sad situation that you're in. Uh, and, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, you're able to cope with it. And maybe even God might even cure, cure you of it. Yeah. But even if you're, if I am cured of a terminal illness, I'm still got a terminal illness in terms of in the future anyway. We've all got that expiry date. But what tends to happen living in this type of society, and I can speak about myself, yeah, is death is at the back of our minds. We don't really think about it. And because we don't think about it, questions about meaning and purpose, what is it all about? is never really there, especially when you've got so many distractions. What's the meaning in Islam? So meaning in no, Islam, no. we... Yeah, go on, sorry, go on. What's that, sorry, Hamza? No, 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 I was just trying to explain, you were talking about human beings in general. That, yeah. Um, when, uh, I was going to say something, it really sounds insensitive when I say this, but <coughs> I don't know if to say it or not, but you seem like a tough lady, if I say it. I'm a very it, tough lady, it, it, you, go for it, say it. <laughs> All right, cool. Is, is your illness terminal? It is terminal, yes. Yeah. Right. I will die. So from I'm going to say something if now I, that's going to sound controversial. If I don't get hit by a bus first, I'll die from this. 
right. So, so I, I'm, I'm going to say this now, and it's going to sound really controversial. I think you'll take it in the me- way I mean it, though, yeah? You're blessed. You're blessed. And I'll, I'll yeah. explain why. Because well, then. You, you're fortunate to know roughly when you're going to die. You're fortunate, yeah? You've got an idea of when that time is coming, and you can prepare for it. You can prepare your family for it. Like you said, you want to make sure your kids are provided for and such. Yeah, You can prepare yeah. yourself for it. You can think this this death is now coming coming upon you. So the question is, now, is death the end? Is there an afterlife? And you start thinking of all these things, right? Because it's on you. Now, with us, without this terminal illness, bang, death's going to hit us like uh, from a bolt out of nowhere. We're going to call with our pants down. It could be a bus hitting us. It could be a flood. It could be a fire. It could be a heart attack while we're out jogging. It could be anything. And we're prepared, and we're, we're living like we're going to live forever. Yeah, we're not preparing nothing. We're not thinking. We, we, as Muslims, we're told, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you go to sleep, don't expect to wake up. When you, go, when you wake up, don't expect to go to sleep. Live every day as if it's your last, because it could be. And realistically, in Islam, that's how we should be living, knowing that tomorrow could be the end of days for us. And what have we prepared for it? Do, do, do you get me? So, but you right now, you have, you're in a position... So you're in a position of planning. You're in a position of planning. You're in a position of preparation because death now is upon you. It's a serious subject here. And this is what you should be looking at right now. And this is what you should concern to be right now. I know you want to care about who you're leaving behind. You should be more concerned about where you're going. That should be your initial concern. That is. And, and, and this, and your scenario right now has put that on the table. You get me? I'd like to think that there's a, Afterlife of some sort where I can watch over my kids. Like, but the beautiful thing is, you see, I mean, how old are your children? Fifteen and twelve. Okay, so I'm not, and I, this is going to sound really. And how long have you got? Uh, average is three years. Okay, so look, the best thing that you can give your kids, you know what it is? Love. No. Islam it's the best thing you can give your kids it's the best guidance anyone could give their kids it's the thing that, it's the thing that's going to keep your kids safe from this world because this world doesn't care about your kids the people who govern this country don't care about your kids they care about their vested interest but who does care our creator cares and how does he care he sends us guidance he says forget what Miss Liz Truss is telling you I'm telling you, this is no good for you. And this is good for you. Because what else are they going to be given? <laughs> and so the only way you're going to give this gift to somebody is if you show them how beautiful this gift is and what it is. So you need to look, because you're going on a des- you're going on a journey. You're going on a journey on your own. You're going on a journey you ain't coming back from. You need to know that destination. And you need to know what's waiting there. And you need to know what you need to take with you. This so should be your primary believe, focus. Do you get me? Make me believe. Show me something that proves Islam is the way. But why Islam? Why not Christianity? Why Why is it Islam you're leaning towards? Christianity is beautiful. No, but no I'm looking at Christianity. I'm looking at all sorts of things. I'm looking at all sorts of options. I want someone to show me proof. What, what would what be I'm proof for, for you? What would prove it for you? Show me a God. What is this burden of proof? Who knows? Because nobody's ever seen it, have they? Right. So what you, your pertinent question really should be, Hamza, Darren, 21 years you've been a Muslim. What convinced you this is true? Yeah, what convinced you what uh, convinced that Islam is, is the truth? What convinced you that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of God? What convinced you God exists? Because, you know, when I accepted Islam, I lost, I lost my daughters, I lost my business, I lost my, my father refused to speak to me for 15 years. My brother committed suicide uh, five years later. Nothing to do with me, but just I didn't speak to him because he refused Sorry to speak to, to me after I became Muslim. So my choice of becoming a Muslim cost me everything in my life. Friends, social, everything, everything. Yeah, I started my life again. I moved from South Wales to London as a Muslim and started from scratch. Yeah, I lost everything so, overnight. Why? Put every, everything into Islam. Everything. Muslim. Because it's the truth. Now, if you, if you care about truth, you live it, like it or don't like it. Now, it cost me so much to do this thing. But subhanAllah, there's a promise made by Allah. 
whatever you give up for my sake, I'll replace it with things that are better. And within three months, I was in Morocco getting married. I had a girlfriend of six years. I've been married now 20 years. Yeah. I've got two beautiful daughters. I've got a fantastic business. The pub got replaced with the mosque. Every, everything, subhanAllah, came. Yeah. They must but at the same time, I have the guidance in my life that I can give on to my children. You know, I'm a father of two daughters, an 18-year-old and 12. I've, I've never had to worry about boyfriends and all this nonsense. You don't yeah. have to worry about boyfriends. No, no, of course not. Because of the guidance my daughters have from Islam, that's not the thing. If I had sons, I wouldn't have to worry about them getting some girl pregnant. If they're following the guidance. Okay, so can I just slightly argue that point with you? Yes, yes, yes. As a mother of a 15-year-old who's mm -hmm. out with her mates and, mm. you know, you know, you've got you've got daughters. You know as well. <laughs> you know, Frank, yeah. You've been out there. Yeah, go on. I, uh, yeah, I have, yeah. I offer a guidance and I offer a very firm words of wisdom without being affiliated with any religion. And touched wood... <laughs> to this date, she's abiding by that. So, Frankie, why does a religion? Honest. Why does a religion make that better than a mother's okay. love? Let's say. Okay, you haven't got a clue what your daughter's up to. I do. Just as your mum probably never had a clue what you were up to. Uh, my mum didn't, but my mum didn't have uh, find my iPhone. Don't matter. Don't matter. No, <laughs> at that age, at that age, peer pressure is a lot stronger than um, love of mum. Unfortunately, friends may mean more to them at that point. <coughs> yeah, it is. And you yeah, no, not... peer, peer pressure is bad, but I have a very, very good relationship with my daughter, and I'm very confident that she's a good kid in general, and she's not doing but, anything. But, but, but again, what is what is the what is the definition of good? Does she have boyfriends? She has had a boyfriend, yeah. Of course, she, yeah. Has. Of course she has. And do you know what boys think? Only one thing. Yeah, they do, yeah. But I spoke yeah, to her. What am I going to have for lunch tonight? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, okay, my bad, guys, my bad. Yeah. So, so the point is, the point is. The cheeky the point Nando's. Is, <laughs> no, but the point is, look, look, I'll give you an example. No. We know what, what men are wanting from women. Boys want them from girls. It's just, um, uh, especially in this culture we're in today. Yeah, as yeah? a 40-year-old woman, I can say, yep, yeah, I know that. Yep, yeah? and these 15-year-old girls are yeah. clueless. <laughs> they get played like and a fiddle. Does Islam stop men wanting that, boys wanting that? No. Okay, so in Islam, we have prohibitions, isn't it? We have things that can prevent leading to this thing. Yeah. So okay. there's mechanisms. So we don't free mix in the sense of guys hanging around with girls. Yeah. We don't, the boys don't have girlfriends and girls have boyfriends. And, you know, in Islam, that's, that's prohibited. Are they allowed no to drinking be alcohol, friends? no taking drugs. We don't, what? Are boys and girls allowed to be friends? Look, I'm telling you, right. Boys and girls can't be friends. Because there's only one thing going through the geezer's mind. I'm telling you, it's okay. Look, like I said, um, I watched this, this. There was a, there was an experiment. Oh, that's, asking, that's a bad well, call. <laughs> that's men. That's just men. That's just boys. That's just boys will be boys, and that's what they're thinking. Yeah, you're your best friend. Yeah, of course I am. Yeah. Yeah, there might. He knows there what might he's be. There might be, but I've always gotten better with blokes than I have. Oh, lads, I suppose you would say. Than yeah, I have there's girls. a reason girls, though, why girls are bitchy and awful. And yeah, as a woman, because obviously blood, a, so a girl, a female, right? So when Frank? when those friends have suggested something, let's say, I've always put it to bed. So what? Uh, oh no, that's a bad term of phrase. That oh, say that I've again. Always, say that again. <laughs> when those friends have what? Say that again. Say it again. I, I said put it to bed. When no, no. Blood, when those friends have done what though? Have made it suggested. Suggested when something. The, Suggest when those few friends, male friends, have suggested something, I've always said, No, that's not where it's going, and that's been the oh, end so of you it. just indicated what I just said, then that's what's going through their minds. So, well, a, a couple of them, yeah, 
Yes, not all of them. All of them. Not all of them. No, not all of them. No, no, no. So you only know about shy. the ones who got the bottle to say something. You don't know about the ones who just it, kept it in the bank. <laughs> but it it came down to me ultimately. <laughs> It came down to me ultimately to say, no, that's not where this is going. <laughs> We're friends. So, so Frankie, Frank, Frankie, Frankie, the point here is this, is that I think what Hamza's trying to explain uh, is if you leave a legacy behind for your kids and you want to ensure that they're not going to get into drugs, they're not going to get, you know, alcoholics, they're not going into bad company, all these types of things, then the best way that you're going to leave, what you can leave them with is, a value system but that value system has to be grounded and the best grounding for any value system is going to be that which is built upon the belief in a creator yeah obviously that assumes that a creator exists but if this all-knowing uh, creator exists or wise creator exists uh, and who's the basis of morality and you ground your kids to follow what that creator has told told us and human beings to follow best way uh best legacy that you can give and the best protection uh that you can have and the best watcher over your kids as well would be would be the creator as well now um, obviously frankie before you can't make wait, i kids appreciate what religion. you're saying there yeah uh sorry i can't see your name probably is it sharif sharif yeah like omar sharif omar sorry sharif. sorry i can't see it properly because uh because of the screen so small no so problem. The kids have to believe in a creator, and that creator sets the boundaries. I am their creator. Okay, so right, so Frankie, that's I that's set. Any, I set yeah. those boundaries. Yeah, yeah. So, so we would. So this, now, I think, a, this there's probably, a different take on it, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no. But let's refuel you. <laughs> but Frankie, the point here is this: is um whether you say you're the creator or there's an ultimate divine being god creator who actually you know is the cause of everything yeah the point here is this is that i am the ultimate divine being god creator that created those children <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> that's me but, yeah <laughs> well the issue then becomes is that did were you were you yourself created I was by my parents, yes. Right. And were they created by who as well? My grandparents. Right. And they okay. were created so by my great great grandparents. Uh, great grandparents. Right. And they were great great grandparents. And yeah, we can trace it back. Yeah. yeah. And is there an ultimate creator? I'm yet to see proof. That's what's that's my question mark. But I'm just saying, just from that point, that the, the lineage that you just gave, you said that you created your kids, you were created by your parents, they were created by your grandparents, by great-grandparents, by great-great-grandparents, et cetera, yeah? So, yes. you know, we can we can trace that back, even if I don't have records of my great-great-great-great-great-grandparents. I know they mm -hmm. must have existed. That's true, isn't it? They must have existed. Uh, have, if I go back to, 500 yeah. years ago... Five hundred years ago, I don't know who my great who my great great grandparents were, but I know they must have existed. Yeah, have to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just it just sounds rational and logical to conclude that. So even if I can't see it, I can't see my great 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 grandparents. I know rationally they must have existed. So I'm saying, mm -hmm. in the same way, if we keep tracing that series of creators or series of causes back, you're going to get to a point where there must be at least one thing that didn't have to have parents or didn't have to have a creator or didn't have to have a cause. What was the cause of everything else? Yeah, that's very true. So do we trace it back to a, a, a god or do we trace it back to the Big Bang? Okay. Um, not the Big Bang, the... Um, Evolution, I suppose you would say. Even before the evolution, because evolution would be caused by something else. That's and that would be actually exactly. caused by something else. Yeah. Yeah. So the point being though is at least there's got to be one thing that didn't have to be caused. That's the only that's the first thing that we can conclude rationally. 
there's at least one thing which is has no cause and is what we'd say independent yeah meaning yeah. it's not dependent upon anything else it can just stand on its own and that thing would also be eternal by definition if it's if it stands on itself and it is never caused and it's the cause of everything else then it must have always existed because nothing caused it to come into existence so it's always existed can I ask you about women in Islam, please? You can do, but Frankie, do you, do you, the, the point that I'm trying to just mention on this point here yeah, is this. No, I've got, I've got is, your point. I understand your point, yeah. Do you agree with it? That, that therefore there must be this eternal thing out there that created everything else? I, I agree that there's a starting point that created everything else, yeah. And it has to have intelligence. Um, possibly, yeah. It has to have genealogy, uh, genes. <laughs> it has to have DNA, it has to have... And there's lots of things that it has to have to create man as we know it now, man and women as we know it now. Yeah, so you have but to... That, so... the, but there has to be a starting point, yeah. Yeah, So, th but I'm saying this starting point this eternal cause that doesn't have any cause before it, I'm saying it has to be intelligent, has to have a, some sort of ability to choose what to create. Um, I'd really like to ask you about women is, in Islam, but because you've just said that, I'm going to have to ask you, does it choose who to take out? Does it choose who to give cancer to, let's say? Yeah. It does. Yeah. And why? Because this world's a test. This world's temporary. So this is this is my test then. Yeah. And that's everybody's test. This is everyone's test. Yeah. Everybody but you know look, Frankie, you know, of I know people of, who You see, that's why it seems so unfair. Because at 40, I'm 40 years old and I've got terminal cancer. I've worked since I was 15. I've paid me taxes. I haven't committed crime. I've been a good member of society. So why, why is that fair? Frankie. Me children, me children so far are showing signs of being good members of society and all the rest of yeah. it so why yeah. why is that fair that i've been chosen to be the one that has cancer from a a religious a a, well from an all seeing god let's say because because sometimes sometimes we don't see uh the reasons and the goodness behind something because all we see is what's directly in front of us. There's a nice example somebody gave once, which I really liked. He said that there was an ant uh, that was crawling on the carpet of an elaborate carpet, and all the ant saw was bumps and obstacles in its way. But when the mm -hmm. man stood over the ant, he could see the pattern and the beauty of the carpet. It's a simple point, which is that sometimes we... We only see the bumps and the obstacles. We don't see the elaborate pattern. We, we don't know how things are. And the other thing is this, Frankie, is that, look, Yeah, but this isn't, would... this isn't a bump yeah. or an obstacle. This is a death sentence. Can and I, can I know I, people. So, can I, so what, that perhaps what, interject? What Frankie, have I done so wrong that... Frankie. I, I told you, Frankie, just... Frankie, I told you it's not a bad thing. It's a blessing. Yeah, Go on, it, Ijaz. Frankie. This, this isn't a problem. Like, I've, I I don't have cancer. I have a different set, series of medical problems. And for a long time, you will ask yourself, why me? But the truth is, everyone who lives has to die eventually. And Hamza was right when he said that, uh, you know, fundamentally, everyone is going to suffer in some way or the other. But people like you and I, we have an opportunity here. We have a wake-up call. When I was not sick, I didn't really care about sick people. They're just sick people. Let, let the doctors hear about them. Let the hospitals deal with it. Let the pastors and priests pray for them. But when you find yourself in that situation, all of a sudden, all the little things that we took for granted become that much more greater. 
that little bit of food becomes a bit more sweeter. That hug from the child becomes a lot more loving. It transforms the way that you see life in a way that someone who does not sit in your shoes, sorry, stand in your shoes, they're not ever going to experience something similar to that. Yeah, I can appreciate and, that. Yeah. And you mentioned that you had two children, and I'm happy to hear that. But there were people out there who will look to you and say, I wish I had cancer, but instead I can't have children. Why is it that you get to have children, but not me? People will ask that, Frankie. So what I say I've to these people that. is... Yeah, and I've listen, asked I'm that. Saying, why have, why have I been allowed to have children and have cancer okay. and have to leave them at a young age when there's people out there desperate not, to have children? But you're not going to leave them, Frankie. This is the thing. You are a mother to those children. And a mother helps her children prepare for the life that they will face. And no one... You know, we, we think this, but it's not true. None of us have a guarantee of life. Your children, God forbid, something could happen today. Tomorrow oh, it could be no. me. It could yeah. be my kids. No. I don't have kids. So none of us have this guarantee of security. But you have an opportunity to give your children something that no one else can give them. And that relationship with your children will benefit them long after you have left this earth. So what Sharif is trying to ask you very, very simply is, you have to understand, put our emotions aside. I had to put mine aside as well. All this pain, all this suffering, all these pills. I can pull out a whole bag of pills for you right now. Garbage bag, not, not, not a carry bag from the, the takeout. Yep, None of that is going to help me. <laughs> right? So I identify with your situation. But here's the thing. I haven't lost faith in God. I haven't given up my Islam. Rather, I found that there was greater meaning in my Islam than there was before I was sick. All of a sudden now, I understand and I can see the mercy in God giving us faith and religion. Uh, Brother Sharif asked you a question about, you know, who created you, who created your grandparents, your great-grandparents, ad infinitum until the end. But you and I are not creators. The Quran mentions this. It says, did you think you created yourselves? And the answer is no. You know you didn't create yourself. I know I didn't create myself. I'm not as intelligent to create another being. You know, you had babies, you know, praise be to God. But you didn't choose to put your hands and toes and your teeth together, did you? So please, to consider what Sharif <laughs> is offering you from the Islamic perspective. Brother Sharif, do you want to continue? Just a quick one, Frankie. Um, I lost was, my daughters and I'm it? still alive. I was going to say so much to Jazz there and I've just forgotten it. Sorry. Uh, that's it's the okay. tablets. <laughs> um, no, I was going to ask you about women in Islam because it's a bit of a hot topic, isn't it, in the Western culture? Women are queens in Islam. And I don't want to be shouted down or anything, but like the hijab, it's, it's mis it might be misunderstood or... It might be very well understood in the Western culture, but why do women wear, or why is it expected that women all wear the hijab? Because they love it. <laughs> Frankie, the problem, <laughs> that you, the problem that you're going to have here, on a serious note, is that you've got like four or five men <laughs> that are going to tell you about the hijab. <laughs> Whatever we say, so oh, it's gonna be so I'm gonna have to stop you there. You four or five men. Why did you? Why did you point out the fact that you're all men? <laughs> but but oh, we yeah, have an advantage. Good. We have an advantage. I've... Hamza owns a hijab store, so he's an expert yeah. on the hijab, as it would seem. No, well, Frankie, I've got. Why... I've got four or five people who are going to tell me why women wear the hijab. So explain to me why they wear the hijab. But what I was wow. going to say, Frankie, was about what would be really good, <coughs> especially on this topic area, is, and I'm sure Hamza or the other brothers here can do that, is connect you with a Muslim woman. You can ask a Muslim woman directly. And it's not going to come across as though this is men mansplaining I, the hijab. I want to explain on. the hijab, though. Oh, I want to explain it. Right. Hang on. Hang on. I'm not up for mansplaining. I don't believe in mansplaining. Oh, I'm a hijab seller. I've got a hijab shop. I know. I'm not. I'm not one of those feminists. So no, I, I know. I, would know. Like, yeah. I would like you, whoever's here in the group here now, to explain why the hijab is worn by women. Why do they have to cover? Okay. okay. So Hamza's going to explain. 
I'll, I'll yeah. give you the basics. Um, I'll, I'll tells them to. Not the basics. I want the intricate details. <laughs> okay, so Allah tells them to. All right, okay. So in Islam, it's like everything. It's like everything in Islam. Allah gives us a command to do something. Yeah? Tells us to do this, prohibits this, whatever it may be. Now, the best we can do is rationalize. Hmm, I wonder why that's the case. Because sometimes Allah doesn't explain why not a thing. Allah, Allah tells the believing women to cover. Standard. Cover what and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told said that a Muslim woman when she reaches a certain age needs to cover such and such. Done. Okay. Now we can rationalize. So I'll, I'll give you a, an, a, an anecdote of mine. So one day there was a, um, a Muslim ladies event and I was tasked to give out leaflets to Muslim women. Yeah. So I go to this um, high street and I'm, I'm looking to Muslim women to give to this, um, this leaflet to. How do I recognize a Muslim woman? How would I Why recognize you, a Muslim woman on a high street full of Asians? Why did you... Look. Who knows? <laughs> well, obviously the hijab, isn't it? So I look for hijab and I say, oh, I see the hijab. She's a Muslim. Yeah, salam alaikum, my sister. There's a talk, such and such a thing. I see a sister in a niqab. I'm like this. Salam alaikum, my sister. There's a talk. I'm going to look at her. Just to hold my hand out. And then I get women not wearing hijab saying, oh, I'm a Muslim too. I'm a Muslim too. And I'm like... Oh, really? I thought you were Hindu. Oh, all right, yeah. Is it? So the point is, the first thing is for recognition, yeah, that Muslim sisters can recognize one another and Muslim brothers can recognize their sisters in, in the streets, yeah, first thing. Second thing, Muslim women, as Muslim women, have values. Those values include uh, not going drinking, not going on dates with men and such like that. So when a, a man, a non-Muslim man, sees a hijabi sister, it's like she's holding a banner up. Don't come to me. I don't drink. I don't. I don't go clubbing. I don't go to cinemas with strange men. That's it. Done. So she's sending off a signal to these guys. I ain't interested. Now, if she didn't have a hijab on, she might get chirps. Yeah, she might do. She might be looking <laughs> sisters. Someone might try and chat her up with the hijab on. It, it it stops that. Yeah, that's another reason potentially why she wears it. Yeah, if I see a Muslim sister. In a hijab, and I see she's in an altercation with somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm thinking she's being harassed because she's Muslim or whatever. Yeah. If it's a, a non-hijabi, she, I don't know. It might be a boyfriend. She might be having a, a drunk <coughs> argument. I don't know. But with a Muslim sister, I take this is my sister in this in Dean because because when you become Muslim, you become part of a family, an ummah. Now I guarantee you, you would ha if if you had a, if you said to a mugger, would you mug the handbag off a woman if you knew her brothers and her uncles and uh, were all around her? Would you stick steal that woman's handbag? And the answer would be no. Yeah, and that's what a Muslim woman has. She has the identity that um, she's recognised as that, as our our sister. Do you get me? So the main part is recognition. You can you can see who a Muslim woman is and who she isn't. And I guarantee you, Frankie. I guarantee you, Frankie. When you become a Muslim, yeah, and your values change, you will want to wear the hijab. You'll want to show the world you're Muslim. You'll be so proud to let the world know you're Muslim. You want to let other Muslim sisters know I'm your sister in Islam. Without Wait. you going, oh, I'm a Muslim too. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I, I'm a, no, I'm doing Scottish there. Right? Um, oh, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm Muslim too. Yeah. You wouldn't have to do that with the hijab. I'm not from Newcastle. It's, what's the difference? You're on the northeast. You all sound like that. <laughs> Sunderland. <laughs> Is it Middlesbrough? Sunderland. Darlington. <laughs> It's not Middlesbrough, but it's closer to Middlesbrough than Newcastle. What about Darlington? Spot on. Who said that? Hamza. <laughs> Darren. Darren. Right, so the point is this. You'll want to wear the hijab. And you'll understand why these women wear this hijab now. Right, so yeah? you... Because, look... We, you we, we, we... why they wear it in 2022, but why did they initially start wearing it, though? Because those sort of Same reason. Didn't go on back in the day, did they? Same reason, man. You're living in the desert in a, in a hostile environment. They're meant to be pure it's the same principle. Can it, I just can I just add something? Yeah, possible. Yeah. So, uh, Frankie, I don't think it's important whether we talk about hijab or not. What we need to talk about is whether Islam is true. Because if Islam is true, then whatever God says, we should try and follow. Now, of course, oh, no, no, no. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. My question was, why do women 
wear the hijab. Yeah. So it is important. Just one second, Frankie. Oh, so Frankie, Frankie, just, just add, really quickly. Sorry, just, just add this final part. Go. I didn't finish. Oh, you, see, now you're to talk over each other. No, no, Frankie. <laughs> okay. So what I'm saying is this. So I just want to finally finish it off, you see. So as Muslims, alhamdulillah, we take the guidance of our creator <laughs> and we do what he says to do and we avoid what he says to avoid. Yeah? Right. Okay. So if Allah tells a Muslim woman to wear hijab, it's for her benefit. There's something beneficial in it. Yeah? So, and like I said, okay. we can only rationalize. Everything I've just said to you right now for the past five, well, ten why, minutes was why, rationalization. Why did Allah tell the Muslim woman to wear the hijab to start with? I've just explained it to you. You haven't, you've explained it in like the sense of 2022 where some bloke might come on to her. So, well, back in the sixth century, some bloke might try and kill her. If she didn't wear a hijab. Or kidnap her or take her as a slave. Yeah, why not? This age of empires. Who would have tried to kill her? Enemies of Islam, slavers, whomever. Age of Empires, Persian Empire, Roman Empire, bandits. You're not, you're not like me really, or get or get on my call an Uber. You're in the desert. But as my brother Sabor says, and I think you're missing the point, and I tried to finalize it. Oh, please don't get annoyed. I'm right. genuine. No question. one's offended. No one's offended. But what, what we're trying to say to you is this Allah, when He tells you to do something, there's benefit in it. So if a Muslim woman is told to wear hijab, there's benefit in it for her. What that benefit is, I've just tried to rationalize. Yeah. But, but, but as, as Brother Sabor is going to kick in now, the point here is this. Look, like, what's more, what's harder? Let me just explain talking. something. What's harder? Just, just one second. What's harder? You putting a scarf on your head or me leaving my daughters? What's harder? What, what do you mean, putting a scarf? Well, I had to leave my daughters when I became Muslim. So that's harder than wearing a scarf. What's harder? Uh, wearing a scarf or leaving your business? Because of, of its dealings, because it contains interest. What's harder? Put a scarf on your head or that? What's what's harder? Leaving the love of my life at that time? Because you didn't want to marry me as a Muslim? Or putting a scarf on your head? See, the thing about Islam, you don't do it because, oh, I like to do that. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to become Muslim then because I don't like to wear a scarf. That's not no, what Islam is about. Islam the, is about... Don't one don't second, Frankie. Frankie. One second, Frankie. Islam... No, Please don't talk over me. I don't know your history. So you're saying about leaving your wife and, yes. or your mother and your daughters. And I don't understand what you're talking about there. So you'll have to explain that. Okay. As a Muslim man, I can't live as boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. So you have to marry your... Uh, either marry her, either yeah. marry her or leave the house. Right. Yeah. And she, I had two daughters, three and four years of age. And yeah. I knew my missus would die for them. Yeah. I, yeah. I would never take my daughters off of their mother. Yeah. But I, I make, I've made this choice. I've put this on me, myself. I can't live here now. Where do I live? How do I feed myself? Because my business was finance with my father as a business partner. And I couldn't do that anymore. Now I'm a Muslim because we're prohibited from dealing in interest. So now I've lost my business of my income and I've lost my home overnight. Yeah. My father refused to speak to me from that point onwards. Yeah. And I had friends in London who said, come, come and stay with us. Yeah, you can, I'll give you a job and you can stay at my house, no problem. So I had to go from, I had to leave South Wales where my daughters were to, to live in London to start my life again from scratch. I didn't become a Muslim to make my life easier. I didn't become a Muslim because I, I liked the things about Islam. I did not become a Muslim because oh, I don't want to give these things up. Yeah. I became a Muslim because Islam is the truth. And whatever it meant, it meant. I didn't cry about these things. I didn't whinge about these things that being a Muslim would involve. I didn't cry that I can't gamble anymore. I didn't cry that I can't have a bacon sandwich in the morning anymore. Islam was true. Get on with it. Yeah? I didn't whinge about these things. And what you've got to do, Frankie, is forget these peripheral things and, oh, I might have to wear a scarf if I became a Muslim. Deal with the fundamentals. So Deal with the fundamentals. That's all I'm going to say. Go on, Sabo. I never said you'd whinged about any of it. You're whinging about the scarf. I'm not whinging about the scarf. I was asking a legitimate question. And it was you're giving a beautiful answer and you continue to whinge. 
Anyway, go on. I'm asking what the reason is behind women having to cover themselves. What is that? What was my answer? What was my answer, Frankie? Uh, Alice said. Done. But why did Alice say he had to have reason? No, you don't. Yeah, well, the the thing is, uh, as it mentions in the Quran it's, about uh, women um, being recognized and not. Um, I'm gonna have to. Say, sorry, I can't see your names that well, Sharif. I know we were talking earlier, and Sabua Ahmed. Yes. Right, you you're conducting yourselves very very well, but that Hamza is just going so, off. The, on. So, so, so uh, Frank, can I can I just look about the hijab? Um, you know, it, we had a, it's a legitimate a, question. Why? No, it is. It is. It is. Uh, why it is do a legit cover themselves? Is are, are yeah. women? Yeah. So look, ugly? Is it? Is it? No, no, no. Like that? Is it? Is there a legitimate reason behind why women have to cover themselves? And yeah. saying that Allah said women should cover themselves is not enough. He has to have had reason behind why women had to cover themselves. Yeah. So look, and firstly, that is my question. No, no, it, it is. It is your question, and I'm not saying it's a le illegitimate question. Uh, so something which God says in the Quran, I'm going to give you the uh, exact uh, wording of it. Um, just give me a moment, uh, Sharif. Can you, while I bring out this verse, can you just uh, speak to Frankie, please? Yeah. Yeah. So. So, Frankie, I think the issue is this, is that uh, you're right. God doesn't do things arbitrarily. There are good reasons. But sometimes we are not. We don't have access to those good reasons. Sometimes we're told to do it out of observance of faith and submission, you know, and that's part of the test as well for us. So I don't know why, uh, you know, I have to pray five times a day, why God wanted me to pray five times a day as opposed to two or three or six or seven or, you know, or any number, actually. But out of my reliance upon God, knowing that a God exists, that's all powerful, all good, all merciful, all wise, all knowing that if he tells me to do something, if this creator tells me to do something, then I have that reliance that I'm following somebody who knows better what's good for me, even if I can't rationalize it. And sometimes some of these informations are kept from us because it's about that test. It's about showing our observance of faith. And so the test of women and the sign of their faith is to wear a hijab. Yeah. And it's not any different to other religions. And this is maybe, frankly, this is the point that I think maybe you need to really focus upon because. You never hear people say, why do Jews wear the little hat on the head? Why do Sikhs wear a turban on the head? You never hear that. You only ever hear it about Muslim women and their sign of faith. Same thing about nuns. You never hear about why do they wear a habit? No, to be yeah. fair, I don't know why um, Sikhs wear it. it it's, they've got to grow the hair, haven't they? Yeah, but they could just let it go down like uh, yeah. Sabo's doing. I, I'm not saying about you, by the way, yeah. Frankie, I'm not so, saying your so, question. In all honesty, I don't know why Jews wear the little cap yeah. that they do. But, but Frankie... I've, from the start, I've said I'm a bit tuned off from all religion. No, so no, I understand that. Fra Frankie, I'm I understand that. that. Different religions now. That's what I'm trying to do. Agreed, that, agreed, agreed. That all I'm saying, gone off it because I'm trying to find out about different religions. Agreed. And all your questions are valid and they're important to address. All I'm saying is that sometimes me, myself, I have to introspect why I'm concerned about certain questions as opposed to other questions. Why don't we ask questions, uh, you know, because, look, let's let's be quite frank. When right, it comes to Western... What's that? I appreciate your answer about the hijab. You yeah. don't know why women have to wear it. You just know that your God, that you believe in wholeheartedly, has said that it should be so. Yeah, yeah so right, Frankie, 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 just read on the screen. That's, 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 that's so, Frankie. Uh, 
Frankie said. No, but Frankie, I'm going to read out the verse for you, which I said, in which God explains why he, he did this. So it says, um, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves part of the outer garment. So this is the hijab. This is more suitable that they will be known and not abused. And ever is God forgiving and merciful. So the reason that God gives in this verse is that so they can be identified. They can be seen as chaste women. They can be seen as women who are not going to be flirting and they're part of a religion that doesn't allow them to have boyfriends and girlfriends in these things. Now, I just want to say something, Frankie, and I know you're a very direct woman. So look, oh, you can very... accept you yeah. can <laughs> you, you, you can accept Islam, but that uh, and and somebody can accept Islam, but they're not wearing the hijab. Hijab is an obligation, but if they don't do it, it doesn't mean they're not Muslim. Okay, because they are Muslim women who don't wear the hijab. The reason I'm saying this is because some people don't accept Islam because they think I have to wear the hijab and I can't do that. The other thing which I wanted to mention to you is, look, the most important thing, Frankie, and you've been turned off religion is why is a particular religion true? That's more important than the teachings of that religion about hijab or anything else. Would you agree with that? Um, no. <sighs> I haven't been turned off religion. I've never been shown anything that's proven. Sure, sure. So, so let, let me just yeah. With Can regards I make a case? To hijab, with regards to hijab, as a Western woman, yeah, find it borderline offensive that I would be asked to cover my face in such a way. I mean, nice. I don't, I don't have a pretty face at all. It's not no, your face, it? Frankie. It's the hijab is oh, for the hair. Just cover your face. Uh, but it's my what? My hair. Yeah, your hair. Yeah, but not your face. Oh, my hair's shit as well. I've got a short back and sides because of the cancer and all the rest. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so look, look. So, for, no, for but, nobody, yeah. nobody wants to look at me. Honestly, it's not a pretty side. Yeah. So look. But, for, yeah. Even back in the days when. You know, I was 20 and I wasn't bad looking. I had long hair. What what was wrong with being seen? What's wrong with your hair now? Uh, cancer. So I'm on so cancer. Yeah. So is your hair part of your beauty? Um, not... I wouldn't say beauty. I don't think I would ever class myself as being a beauty. Um, my hair was part of who I was, yes. Did you ever go out without brushing your hair? No. Nope. Did you do your hair nicely? No, not always. I just sometimes tie it up, but my hair was part of who I was. Of course it was. Hair is part of a woman's beauty. Yeah, You see the amount of money women spend it's... on their hair. Right, yeah? stop, stop, stop. You're talking about beauty. I was yes. never beauty. Never. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. You've got two yes. kids. So, so, Frankie, can I just look? Can I just say something which I've been trying to say for a while now? And Sharif also alluded to it. Um, it's important for you to know, and you've asked, what's the reason that we believe Islam to be true? So, let me just lay <laughs> out, so let me just lay out a few things for you to think about. The yeah. first is that. To come to the religion of God, the, the 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 truth, God wants us to use our mind, not just go with the religion of our parents, or not just go with the religion or that people tell us to. We need to use our mind. Do you do you agree with Sorry. that? When you say God, who do you mean, God? Okay, so let's just say the Abrahamic God, the God of uh, you know uh, the prophets, Moses, Jesus, the the general concept of God that is accepted in society. Is that in Christianity, honestly, I don't know any of these religions. Sure, sure. So look, um, there is one creator, and that creator is nothing like the creation. It, all across the world, there's different ways that people are trying to uh, describe that same reality, right? Some get it right, some get it wrong, but there's ultimately one reality that people always point towards. So let's just call it God, right? Okay. For the sake of argument. Okay. Yeah, okay? yeah. So that God that God would want us to use our mind, isn't it? He wouldn't want us to just uh, come to any religion willy-nilly. He'd want us to use our mind, right? 
Yeah, well, I, I'd like to think that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, you are. You are, which is why you've come onto the stream and you're asking intelligent questions. So, um, when it comes to uh, looking at nature and looking at all of the uh, uh, world as it is, the world gives us signs that there's a creator. You know, your mobile phone. Your mobile phone is made of what? Plastic, metal, glass. You can get all of these things in a desert. In a desert, you can get glass. In a desert, you can get oil. You can get metal. However, you wouldn't say over millions of years, lightning struck the camel trod and you had a mobile phone uh, coming out of nowhere, right? You would say someone designed this, but your mind is more complicated than this mobile phone. Your body is more complicated than that. So there has to be a creator for the human being for this universe. And that creator, what does Islam teach? Islam teaches you worship that creator alone. That's it. It's very simple. So Islam is a continuation of the prophets of the old. Moses, Jesus, Abraham, all these people I'm sure you've heard of. And all it teaches is that you worship God alone. A very simple message. Now about why do we believe the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet of God? Well, it's quite simple. He called to the worship of God alone. That itself is evidence because he's calling to a very clear cut truth, which we all know deep down inside. Why are you turning to religion when you have cancer? Because that's what the Quran talks about. The Quran says that when a human being is on a ship and there are waves coming through, they oh, call I'm out not, upon God. I'm not turning to anything. I'm looking for answers. Let's yeah, you are looking, yeah, that's what I mean. You're looking for answers. Whenever human beings go through distress, they leave aside all the things that used to make them happy before. Money, uh, you know, uh, their status or wealth, whatever it is. So you're looking for those answers. You are doing what your innate nature is telling you to do, which is to look for the truth, which is the right thing to do. So the Quran is a book which is there to teach you how to connect with your Lord. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is a man who from many different directions, when you look at him, you, you can recognize he is a prophet of God. He made predictions about the future that came true. He was somebody that was known to be truthful. He was somebody that called people to God and called people to righteousness. So if you investigate this, and uh, I'm glad you said you live in Darlington because we can actually post you out some material uh, for free. So in the private chat, if you leave your email address, we can Are get you in Dalo? Sorry? Are you in Dalo? No, I've been there though, and we have uh, people. We we have, we have a team in Middlesbrough. We we know people in uh, the oh, north. Uh, sorry. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know, uh, the thing is, you're in the right direction. It's going to take time for you to actually look into the truthfulness of Islam. But there are reasons. There are rational reasons why we believe in God and why we believe Islam to be true. And those things, Frankie, are far more important than any other questions about. <laughs> You know what you wear, or the beard, or, or these types of things. Yeah, what I wasn't do you think? thinking about beards and stuff. No, what, what I mean is, if you focus and look into why Islam is true, that's more important than other aspects like hijab. Well, it's not because I wouldn't like to think that the men in my life were. Covering me up. I mean, I'm not a beauty to, to behold. But, but Frankie, um, Frankie, Frankie, look, the popular media like narrative. The popular. So, so, Frankie, the popular media narrative in, in Britain is to say that Muslim women are oppressed by Muslim men. And they generally try to put, paint the whoa, picture. Whoa, whoa, hang on, hang on. I'm going to have to stop you there. I never said cool. that. At all. I, know, I know you didn't say that, Frankie. I know you, yeah, didn't you say that. You just did. <laughs> you just did say that, Frankie. No, I didn't. Well, you, you didn't. You say just, those you words. just alluded to men no, covering you up. He sat there with his head in his hands, and I never said that whatsoever. You just said you wouldn't want men in your life to cover you up. No, you no, said, but, uh, uh, Hamza, Hamza. The point I was trying to make to Frankie is, look. Yeah. I just said that I wouldn't want the men in my life to think that I needed covering up. No, you didn't say that. She, she, did, did. she did say that, but she, she did say that. But, fr but Frankie, exactly what look, I said. What, what, what's more important, what's more important is 
the the question that you initially asked, which is why do we believe Islam to be true? That is a very important question. So right. in in the private chat, if you can leave your email address, we can post you out some material. But in terms of uh, um, belief in God, what I said did that make sense? Does it make sense that there is a God? Right. Hang on. I'm gonna have to stop you because this Hamza, what's he doing? He's he's terrible for your cause, honestly. The, the question the question I asked, right? Like, do you know what I was saying about God? Did that make sense to you? It it makes sense, yeah. Yeah. So if there is a God, then it makes sense that we should worship that God, isn't it? That we should be grateful to that God, that we should believe in that God. Absolutely. And that will, yeah. And the thing is, your cancer and and you know, I know people, uh, you know, my own uh, friends. I know people that went through cancer, and it's an extremely painful experience. Now, knowing that God's going to be with you in this pain, and you know, is going to ease your suffering. This is something that's going to give you hope for the future, right? <coughs> right. I'm. I'm sorry. Uh, how would you like me to address you? Sub Sabua Ahmed, yeah. Sabua, yeah. yeah, is that right? Am I saying that right? Yeah, no, that's right. That's right, Frankie. Yeah, right. So Hamza there is just had his head in his hands and exhaling when I said something. I'm not quite sure what he took offence at. Would he like to say? Yeah. Okay. I I've just watched it again. You did actually say you wouldn't like the men in my life. I'm not a beauty. I wouldn't like men to think they have to cover me up. That's what you said. Then Sharif says we know there's a you, there's a there's a thing about a misogyny where men oppress women, and you said something on lines. Of, no, I didn't narrative. say that. I didn't there's say a, that. Yeah, I'm, you I said that. No. media narrative. That's all. No, yeah. yeah, he said something about a media narrative. Yeah, yeah, he's not a media narrative, and I'm you not, said I didn't say that, but your yeah, first thought I'm was not following were, the media narrative. I don't follow media whatsoever. Agreed, agreed. But your first, you, I've just watched it back on the video here. I just watched it, and you actually said those words. I wouldn't want the men in my life think they have to cover me up. So yes. as if men are doing the covering of you. That. Yeah, you did say so, that. So, I know you did say that. So Frankie, yeah, the point implies that you, you think men are covering you up. No, but uh, Frankie. No, I never Frankie. said that men are covering no. me up. Right. So, He's a so, so. very bad person. <laughs> oh dear me! No, Frankie, we're, we're we're getting past the most important aspect, which we were getting to, which is very important, which is you. The right. belief in God, that's way more important than having these discussions about who said what and the hijab. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's way more important. Look, you have three years left to live. You just said, and you're being very... Um, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Sorry, is that how I address you? Yeah, 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 it's fine. That's your name. Right. I apologise. You've been very polite. You've been very... Um, acceptive of my questions and you've answered them. But Hamza has just been very, very rude. C could you please send your email address in the private chat? Can you see the private chat on the right of the screen um, where, where people are typing? Not the I comments, the private chat. I can't. No, I'm sorry. One second. Okay. He, Hamza was also asked earlier on TikTok. I ended up on TikTok um, stumbling across Hamza's TikTok live. And that's how I've ended up here tonight. Yeah. And Look, someone, what I, somebody you, you seem to have forgotten. You yeah, seem to have forgotten the fifteen-minute explanation of hijab. No, you seem what, to have forgotten that. Oh, I'm just going to talk what, over it. No, no. Uh, so, uh, somebody, Frankie, somebody, Frankie. Sarah, or something who he's obviously got a problem with. Asked him about having sex with a six or nine-year-old girl. So, uh, Frankie, uh, do you have a pen and paper? I do. Yeah, so I'm going to give you my email address so you can what email me, yeah, and then we can send you out some materials because I think that the real conversation is what you asked about why do we believe Islam to be true? That's way more important than any of these side issues because you only, like you said, you only have a, a very short time on this earth. Do you see my point? I think your bigger issues are dealing with people like Hamza. Okay. <laughs> and he's, you, he's the horse team. 
going to kick me off any minute. Okay, can you take down my email address, please? But he's he's making silly comments about I've just watched that back and you've said this and I okay, never okay. Did, Look, did don't, I don't worry. Look, don't worry about that, Frankie. My email address is s dot. Yeah. S dot a h m a d. Ach band, yeah. Yep. A h m e d at. Yeah. I e r a. Yeah. I e r a dot o r g. Dot org. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So s dot a h m a d at i e r a. We can send you out some material and we can continue this conversation. But the the main thing I just want you to uh, to do is to look into why Islam is true. And we can send you out some really nice uh, materials and and you can look at them and we 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 I, I can get your uh, uh, what's it called email and we we can exchange uh, conversations and stuff. And How does that sound? So we can keep having these conversations and we can share emails and we can do all the rest of it. But as long as Hamza is gonna make comments like he just has about me, you you were there, you you heard it, you saw it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's it's it's, it's that's gonna put people off. Sure, sure. Like, yeah, no, so fr and Frank, you can sit there laughing and stroking his. You're, humor, you're humoring me, Frankie. Frankie, thank you so much for coming onto this live stream and asking the questions that you did. Sharif, do you want to add anything before we on, on end TikTok, our conversation? Somebody made comments about uh, is, it, is it the Prophet Muhammad? I apologize if I get this wrong. Having sex with a six or nine year old, and he said, What's wrong with that? It's like he's a bad. Yeah. Is a bad advertisement for Islam. So, Fra Frankie, we can continue this conversation via email. <laughs> and, 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 and Frankie, it's like 12 o'clock in the UK, right? So you can get some rest and uh, just email me and we'll continue this. Century or in despair, whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah, so I'll get I'll get Sharif's email as well. And, and I think he's a bit closer to you. He's up north. He's... He's moving. You can see. <laughs> yeah. It feels yeah, awkward. <laughs> okay. Th thank you, Frankie, for your time. Thank you. See you on TikTok. See you on TikTok. Amza, don't start. Amza, don't start. <laughs> leave it, leave it. Thank you, Frankie. Thank you very I much. Move. Oh. I'm done four hours now. God. I've got a session going on then. Flipping heck. Anyway. Ooh. You know, sometimes um, th you, th there's this uh, uh, Frankie, and then before that, it was the other guy. Both of them were in a similar situation. Like uh, Frankie has, uh, yeah, I was thinking illness, the same, bro. Terminal illness, and then th uh, the other guy. And I was kind of thinking that more and more people are starting to realize that um, th you can't get sufficient help for these types of things if you just look at material things so you know doctors say this and you're trying to do your inheritance and you're trying to do this you're trying to do that but more and more people are starting to realize actually no that they need to look for spiritual answers because you know medicine and all of these things they're ultimately not going to give you a purpose because without purpose if you think about it it's so difficult to go through the smallest difficulty but when you have god on your side you know, things are so much easier. I mean, there's a book I was I was, I was just thinking of. Uh, I'm sure um, some uh, viewers have, have read it, and maybe some people on this panel as well. It's uh, Victor uh, Frankl's uh, Man's Search for Meaning. Sharif, you look like you read that book. I'm just going to nod to pretend that I have. Yeah, but you know <laughs> what it's about, right? You know, it's about the guy who's uh, in a concentration camp, and he came out. And he's talking about the suffering that they went through. and Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, you know, these things, like, I think we need to use them more in the Dawah. They're, they're very relevant. Yeah, but we should also realize this is not a therapist session. I think some people generally need help, you know, from professionals. 
Um, I have a feeling many of these people maybe can't afford those kind of therapies or maybe they don't have it in their countries where they can have access to it. And they just need someone to speak to because things like death, things like loneliness, things like single mothers, you know, these things are real problems and issues we have in our societies. Yeah, uh, I, I think yes and no, because there is definitely a professional element missing. But when it comes to existential questions being answered, you know, all these medical professionals, they don't really care about that. You know, they yeah. can be really cold. You go to a doctor and, you know, you have cancer. You think he's going to give you empathy, but he's dealt with 15 patients that month who have the same problem. So I don't know, these medical professionals, they just generally, because of the industrial scale at which they're working, I think they sometimes can't really be that. No, I think when I say therapy, I don't mean just the non-Muslims. I'm sure there are a lot of Muslims who cater for these kind of sessions as well. Yeah. Yeah, but I, d I don't want to get, um, I, 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 you know, I, I don't want to get too much into this topic, but using this element, right, using this particular element, some people would say this is being, you know, almost abusive, that someone's in their last stages of their life and, you know, you're chucking religion down their throat and this type of thing. But the fact is, it's the other way around. When somebody has terminal cancer, it's them who's looking for answers. It's them exactly, who are not yeah. content with... It's the, op it's the opposite, isn't it? No, but if they're going there on, on their own, by their own free will, you know, who's going to turn around and say that they shouldn't be doing that? So, yeah. for example, um, a man or a woman walks into a therapy session given by a Muslim, and they know the Muslim will obviously tell them about uh, the Quran and Hadith and about Islam. Um, then why is that wrong? Yeah. See what I mean? Well, yeah. I because thought you gave a beautiful can... answer about the hijab. Yeah. The thing is, I I actually don't like answering questions about the hijab. And the reason being is because it's like we can give an answer and because their paradigm is different. Okay, so I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give it in another way. Wow. When a young man came up to the Prophet ﷺ and said, allow zina for me. Because, you know, he was young and he's passionate and whatever, right? Um, and the Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? He said, would you like basically someone to do that with your family members? Would you like someone to do that with your mother or your sister or um, your daughter? And the man, you know, refrained from it and then he pledged not, never to commit zina, right? So that example is then used on the streets of London. Right. So there's a guy who's like, why, why can't I have a girlfriend? You know, Islam says you can't have a girlfriend. And then the Muslim turns around and says to the guy, well, would you like it if your girlfriend, if your sister uh, was with another man or your daughter? And he'd be like, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. And the Muslim's thinking, but I'm using a hadith. And why isn't it working? Well, it's not working because the Prophet ﷺ was speaking to a Muslim who comes from the same paradigm. But yeah. here you're talking to a non-Muslim who comes from a different paradigm, with different sets of belief, different morality, different ethnic, uh, sorry, uh, uh, ethics, right? So the same thing applies for the hijab. We can say this is what Allah says in the Quran about the hijab, but that's for Muslims. A Muslim woman will understand that. But a non-Muslim woman, it's going to be very difficult for them to understand these things, which is why you have to go back to why Islam is true rather than... No, I get you. No, these things yeah. I get you but she was adamant she wanted to answer on hijab I want to talk about hijab she wanted to talk about hijab so I I said to her I give I give the disclaimer Allah knows Allah tells us and then I give a rationalization as to some anecdotes as to why it could be with some of the benefits and yeah. she should have turned around and said okay fair enough that's that's good and then she then she went well what about in the sixth century well the, the bloody hell is more no, important to, then no but this is where you have to be empathetic because She's coming from a different paradigm. You, so she you know, not, yeah. No, I was going to say I, I agree with Sabor and Hamza both on what you're saying. Is that Sabor's basically saying she's, and I think it's really hard for us to sometimes to think because we're saying things, and I'm hearing, I'm hearing myself saying things, and I realize she doesn't understand what I'm saying, and I'm thinking it's quite basic, but she doesn't get it, and it's because. A lot of things. It's because all of these are completely new discussions for her. She's never really had these types of discussions. I think you have to answer the hijab question directly because she doesn't get why 
the discussion about belief being true because she's thinking the hijab is part of Islam. I've got to prove hijab is true if Islam is true. So you have to sort of make the connection, uh, I think, to say, okay, hijab, the reason why we follow hijab is because we believe it comes from an all-wise creator, but we have to establish whether an all-wise creator and Islam is true in the first place. <laughs> and these are some of the rational benefits or observable benefits, which doesn't give the un ult ultimate meaning. So I think a, you got to sort of answer it and then move it to the... Yeah, 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 I agree with Or that. contextualize it in that discussion about belief. But it's, it's a, such a... It's, it's a really hard situation because if the... We're, th we're constantly involved in these discussions. We get it quite quickly. But when somebody is out in the, you know, ordinary world, not the online world, and he's asking these types of questions, it's a very different paradigm. In your microphone, is it Sharif or is it Hamza? I don't know. One of them. Hamza? Is it me? I don't know. I yeah, don't I think know. it's you, Sharif. Oh, yeah, so guys, I'm just gonna, Can I just say something quickly? Yeah, I'm just going to read Isha and come back because it's getting... I shall. I'll be about so, 10 minutes. Yeah. Look, let's put things... Let, let's call a spade a spade here. All right. She watched my TikTok earlier. And on that TikTok, Sarah Garvey came on, which she said. And he came on with a loaded question. And I've dealt with Sarah Garvey in the past in Speaker's Corner. There's videos about it, yeah? And he came on and asked me, um, do you believe that the Muhammad, him, do you believe that he was the, the best example for human, for man, for mankind? I said, yes. And, you, and then he said, oh, didn't he have sex with a nine-year-old girl? Right? Now, right now, I'm on, I'm on my morality flex that I've been learning with support. So I said, what's wrong with that? Why is that wrong? Yeah. And all she's heard <laughs> watching that TikTok is Hamza thinks it's okay to have sex with nine year olds. But that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking Sarah what, what morality is he using to go back to the sixth century to determine whether something's right or wrong? Because moral skepticism won't help you, moral relativism won't help you, nihilism won't help you. The only thing that will help you is more, more moral realism. Right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, I told him, look, we're not babies anymore. We've grown up. Yeah. So. I want to understand how you how your juices flow. And he started trying to explain about the size of hips and this, that, the other of girls and stuff. And I'm like, bro, you don't know what the body form of a nine-year-old in the sixth century was. Why are you acting like you do? That was the conversation. And I told him to come to the arena, put his big boy pants on and come to the arena. Yeah. Um, and I was like, she's heard that. So she's come here fuming with that in mind. Then she's watched the conversation and we know we said to her, what was her name? She got flipped by that for some reason. And then we got some problem with women. So she's got me saying nine-year-old girls. Then she's got me saying the skeezers after women. And, now, <laughs> and then there's that. So she's got this bee in a bonnet. She's come from TikTok with a grudge against me anyway. Right? Already. She's come after me straight away. And then she wanted something extra to come after me with. And when I smashed her stupid point about the hijab and give her a good explanation, she didn't thank me. She didn't say, oh, fair enough. When I told her about my life and how I give up so much things for Islam, Islam is not about... Uh, what you're going to get or what you're going to lose is about being the truth. Ignored all of that and then played the victim and then obsessed. So, are you trying to say that they may not necessarily be genuine? <laughs> no, I think she may have been genuine, but you know, yeah. it's shocking. You know, it sounds like that guy said she could have sex with nine year olds, which is yeah, not what I'm saying. I'm asking why like is it wrong? Point. What yeah, makes like it wrong? Hit and run thing at the end, yeah, it was, yeah, 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 yeah. that was out of place as well, yeah. To be, so to be honest, who's, who's it, it's, next? it's really hard to assess whether some of the people on here yeah. are absolutely genuine or not. Like the one who came on before was talking about his wife. You know, yeah, it, it exactly. Seemed, we can't tell. We can't tell. We can't. We have to assume the best. Yeah, and I know exactly. we are all assuming the best here, but also at the same time, we have to be a little bit wise and. Sometimes people do say certain things at the end, uh, like when he when she started having a go at you, Hamza, it was a bit strange. But then, <laughs> but then I just thought it was just a little don't bit. Don't listen strange. to this guy. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I just found it funny. Don't have him on again. Don't have him on again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this guy's been waiting ages. Jason Robinson. Oi. Hello. Right. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, shit, man. Let's see if you're better than the previous Jason. 
Jason, I'm the best Jason, Jason of the Argonauts. That's what he said as well. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> bro, better than this guy. 500 IQ. Only. Let me wait for a lot. Okay. What, what's the topic, guys? What's your question? A uh, question. So, how long have you been waiting? Oh, too long, too long. About hour. What do you think hour. this? What do you think this stream is about? Um, Islam, Dawa, spreading Islam. Am I Jason, right? you it's, it's actually the opposite. Go on then, enlighten me. It's for you to come and challenge Islam. Challenge? Oof. <clears throat> okay, one thing. What one thing that's rattling my brain? Yahweh is clearly the god of the Hebrews, yet they don't like saying it. Only in Yankee Paw, you're allowed to say it. So one time a year, you're allowed to say that. Not even you. It's the high priest that says the name. The Tetradomicon, you know. The, so it's not, no one's supposed to say Tetra God's what? name. Tetra, Tetranomicon. Con. God, you got 500 IQ, you can't say Tetragrammaton? I, I haven't seen it in a while, brother. Te okay. Tetranomicon. Necronomicon, Book of the Dead by Horus, Egyptian. Do you know what's a tetragrammaton? It's the Yahweh, isn't it? It's the three-letter abbreviation for Yahweh. Four letters. Oh, tetra. Four. Letters. Four. 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 I'm watching TV. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm watching telly. I'm watching bloody okay. countdown. What, what's your Eight, question, nine, nine, nine. Jason? Jason, what's your question? Is where does Allah come from? Is Allah God's name? Because clearly Yahweh is the Abraham God, Abrahamic God. Jason, you sound Asian. Why do you sound Asian to me? Do I sound Asian? I might be just muffled because I'm tired. No, no, you sound like you've got like that Asian English twang. You know, the, uh, Asian guy yeah. that's born, a Desi guy that's born in the UK. Desi. No, I'm not Desi. No, I'm not Desi. You, you sound What's like from... Desi? Desi is back home in India, brother. Back home in India. Back home in Pakistan, the... brother. You ain't bad. He's he's a troll. How long has he been waiting? Hours. <laughs> guy, guy is a joker. I don't think he's Hindu. I think he might, probably might be Pakistani or something. I don't know. Who cares anyway? I, but I hey, did you like that? Hamza was able to pick that triangle. You look drunk, you know. Beautiful, bro. Beautiful. Okay. Smash. Then just put like a bottle hat on. These guys, they come back from the pub and board. They just Honestly, waste the time. they wait two hours, man. Well, you know, some people are nuts. <laughs> right, Jesus is the King of Kings. You muted, you muted, you muted. Unmute yourself. Oh, this is your favorite. You've been waiting for this guy. I don't think he's going to last more than two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Thumbs up. Nice to meet you. Shakti uh, man. If, uh, Shakti man, where are you calling from? I live in Australia. I'm okay. Indian. Yep. Right. So <laughs> you sounded like our oh, goodness gracious me. <laughs> I'm not Indian. Hey, go on, continue, continue. See, are you, for the fact, are you, the, are you the same Hindu? fact. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Hindu. Oh. This Hamza guy oh. removed the last guy for doing the same thing that he's doing right now. So, I mean, Hamza is a disgrace, to be honest. And just, what? just let me finish. Just let me finish. You said Hamza's a what? A disgrace. disgrace to Islam. Oh, okay. Uh, let him let him come back. Uh, him. That's that's okay. gonna help you. Listen. Okay, Adam. <laughs> Shakti man is gone. Okay. No, I kicked him. Gonna come here and insult me, exactly. Adam. He's, he's crazy. Adam, come on, man, you're muted. Adam, Adam. Oh come on. You're muted. Maybe he's gone to sleep. <sighs> Possibly. A3. Hello? Hello? <laughs> can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. I, I'm I, 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 I can hear you. Okay. I'm a Muslim, by the way. I'm not here to debate or anything like that. I'm just trying this new banal thing. I got here in a wrong way. I clicked on a wrong link. But I'm really... Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. <laughs> 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 he didn't realize this is only for Ams. Muslims. Maybe some people. Ams. Hi, yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you. 
Yeah. Um. So I was just wondering about um, like um, you've probably heard it a lot of times anyway about like the evolution according to Islam. So um, like um, so like what's the like uh, view on evolution? Is it like I know that Adam like uh, in Islam did you believe that? Ad was it Adam and so, Eve? So, like so the Pams, are you are you a Muslim? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, what are you? I'm actually um. I, I don't know. I just I'll just say agnostic, but I'm learning about different religions at the same time. Bro, you 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 know that it's not allowed to deny that you're a Muslim if you're a Muslim. Yeah, that would be kufr. Sorry, what was that? You're, you're not are... allowed. To, if you're Muslim and you're asked the question, "Are you Muslim?" You can't say, "No, I'm not Muslim. I'm not, I'm agnostic." That's not no, allowed. No, no, I'm, I'm actually. Yeah, no, no. I'm, 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 life, I'm, I'm actually it was a agnostic. life and death situation, and you were under duress. Yeah. Yeah, no, because I'm I'm not from a Muslim background anyway, so like I'm agnostic. Do Do you believe in Allah? Um, I'm I'm just questioning it. Like, questioning no, no. Do you believe it, in Allah? Just answer that question. No, no. Okay, so do you reject Allah? Um, I don't believe. No, I do. I reject. I don't know. You You reject That's Allah. Not... You don't reject Allah. He's agnostic. I'm agnostic, so I don't believe, but I don't Bro, reject you're, either. You're hesitating every time I ask these questions. You know, if you were really agnostic, you wouldn't hesitate like that. So there's something fishy going on here. No, no, I'm, I'm actually like, um, I'm like, I'm actually like, um, I don't know basically about if there's a creator or not. So I don't know what that classes me as atheist or agnostic. Okay, it's agnostic, on. isn't it? Why, why do, you, why are you agnostic? Um. I think it's just basically the it's just like I don't know if there's a creator or not, so um, that's why I'm like I'm on this like stream now. Just so are you like some... a simple what we would say a, a naive agnostic, somebody who's never come across any reasons to believe in a creator. He just doesn't know. Like, if, for um... example, if I come in a chat, I say to a child, "Is the world round or not?" and the child goes, "I don't know." Because they just don't have, they've never come across that They're clueless, concept yeah. before. And, and... I think it, it would probably just be out of, um, uh, probably just being lack of evidence then. Um, you no, no, say it's simple, not, but I don't know if that's the... Yeah, sorry. Perhaps uh, it's not a problem uh, being that type of agnostic, as I mentioned. I'm just, I'm just trying to understand why you're you're an agnostic because for example a person could be agnostic because he says all the arguments fail to prove that god exists he could be agnostic for that reason but he says but also all the arguments that disprove god fail as well or he could be an agnostic because he says we have an epistemic limit and we can never prove that a creator exists or does not exist therefore we're agnostic over the question or a person can be naive and simple in terms of his approach towards that, which basically means he's never come across any arguments for or against a creator. He's never really thought about it before. And so he doesn't know how to formulate a, a conclusion from it. Yeah, it's not a problem per se. It's just how we approach these questions. Does that make sense, Pams? Yeah, yeah. I think um, for me then, it would probably just be like um, lack of knowledge slash evidence and just believing in like the material world. Like what, like around me? Yeah. Um, is that, is that, 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 that the Pams, can I just ask a question? Because I need to verify it. Is your, are you, is your parents Sikh? Uh, no. I know. I come from a Sikh background, though, yeah. You come from a Sikh background? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Parents, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so... I, can, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can say Sikh, but we're not really practicing, so I wouldn't really class myself as that. So just from a Sikh background, yeah. I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> okay cool so it's just your questions is just constantly hesitating but no worries i will we'll take you uh as you are yeah uh so all right okay so uh when it comes to the issue of uh creating lack of evidence what evidence have you come across or how how do you approach this discussion i thought for what, what for there being a uh, lack of evidence yeah when you say there's a lack of evidence what do you mean by evidence what 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 evidence will convince you? Yeah. Um. You have a criteria. I mean that, that. I mean I think that's what um I was like on this um, stream for as well. So like if you know like I mean what's the what's the evidence that you have like that um 
Like what and makes like, you believe you know, in Islam? When, when you are seeking something, you know, you need to have a criteria. Okay, if this, this and this satisfies. Was that a pun then? Evidence for me. Otherwise, I'll reject it. See what I mean? When you're seeking you need, something. You need to have at least some criteria. Yeah. Um... Maybe you don't know, Pams. It's not a problem. Some people don't realize what the criteria could or could not be. Yeah. But Hashim is right. Because before we go into the actual evidence and argument, we have to talk about what the criteria should be. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I get you, yeah. Um, I think, um, I mean, I think it would probably be, um, I'm not too sure, actually, to be honest. That's why, um, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, you don't believe it's the Quran, isn't it? Like, that's the one of the main evidences for the truth, isn't it? Yeah, it's Maybe. a revelation we believe from God, just like the way yeah. the Sikhs believe the Guru Granth Sahib. Yeah, the, well, the, yeah, that's what they believe as well. Yeah, yeah. But I was just asking, mm -hmm. I was just wondering about the question on evolution as well. So um, before we get to evolution, if I were to ask you, where did the universe come from? What would you say? Um, I would just say um, the Big Bang, as far as I know. Okay, the Big Bang didn't just. I mean, it, there must be a cause, you know, anything that began to exist in time is not eternal. It's it, it it must have a cause, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, everything needs to have a cause, yeah. Right, so what do you think that cause is? Um, it would obviously have to be a creator, isn't it? I don't know about you. For me, yes. Yeah. So um, what do you know? I mean, like, I've, I've what is the most in... rational, uh, I don't know, understanding you yeah. i would say you have about the cause of the beginning of the universe yeah no i mean i mean i've i've seen like these arguments before but um i mean i, th I think maybe i've come on the wrong stream because i'm not trying to defend like me being agnostic i was just trying to uh, get more information about uh, a certain uh like a uh, thing in in islam so I don't know, like, I'm not defending what I believe in, like, I just... Um, you know, we, it's not about defending. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, I am hoping you're seeking the truth. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to, right? yeah, to find out some more information so, about, yeah. For that, we'll have to go right at the very beginning of your understanding of this worldview. Because we can, we cannot deny the existence of the universe. It's here, right? We are in the universe. I'm yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. One of those guys who says, uh, I don't believe in this reality. Um, it might not exist, you know, not that kind of guy, I'm hoping. So if we were to trace back and the furthest point you can imagine in this naturalistic world, it's like probably like you said, the Big Bang. So the question naturally arises, what caused it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think um, logically it's probably a creator then, isn't it? I mean, I think science obviously can't really... Uh, 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 give the give an answer to that question, really. So, um, I mean, okay. it has to be something like, yeah. I mean, it has to be like a, there has to be like a divine creator. Then, okay. Alhamdulillah, your progress from being not an atheist, not an agnostic, but to a theist at least. Yeah, if you say, yeah, you can say so. Yeah. Okay, so this creator. What what is your understanding of? I mean this creator because obviously you come from a Sikh background um, you must know something about the creator uh, I'm, well I don't think you're completely ignorant or oblivious to the idea of a creator and the attributes of a creator um, yeah I mean like um, even according to Sikh uh, Sikhism yeah we they believe in a creator like a one god as well yeah. um, so like um, yeah I mean I suppose, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, I do, so, like, um, logically, yeah, I do believe in a creator then, yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, you, how much do you know about Islam? Um, I know the basics, and I know, like, maybe a bit more than the average person, but, okay. um, yeah, I'm not an expert, obviously. So, from, from what you know, do you have any objection to um, belief in Islam? Um... Like we believe uh, God is one, He's all yeah. powerful, He's a creator, He's a sustainer, He's eternal, He's almighty. All these, you know, like He has got 
so many attributes um, which define him, uh, which makes him distinct from the creation. So we don't believe in pantheism, panentheism, that God is within the creation or God is the universe or something like that. What do you, from what you know about Allah, do you think he is the creator? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, I can't really like too many to find any faults in it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it does make sense. Um, like that, yeah, like he's a creator of everything. Um, yeah, I can't really deny that. Right. So in your worldview, I mean, I'm again, assuming that because you come from a Sikh background, how do you think the creator differs in Sikhism compared to Islam? <laughs> Um, from what I know, I think uh, Sikhism they is quite similar. I mean, we um, they believe in one God as well, but um, right. I think it's more of like a uh, pantheistic. I don't know if that's the term. Is, is it pan? Isn't is pantheism when like God is within everything? Uh, yeah, pantheism. So, pantheism means the universe is God. I mean, basically, the universe itself is God. So everything God is everything. Basically, every atom. He's, yeah. he's the universe, literally. Panantheism is like the universe is within God, if that makes sense. I think, yeah, um, yeah. I think it's the first. The first one is that, yeah, it's pantheistic. Like God is okay. everywhere. Like the universe is God. Yeah, like like God is within the atoms and stuff. But right. it's also one. It's not like a Hinduism where like there's different versions or something. Yeah. So Hinduism is more panantheism because they believe that God. Uh, the universe is within God. Yeah. Uh, whereas from what you told me, uh, Sikhism seems like if everything is God, then that's pantheism. Yeah. Now, Allah, you know, you, you do know that the universe, you mentioned Big Bang, so which means that the universe is finite. It began at a certain point in time. So uh, the scientists yeah. say that it's 13.8 billion years old. Okay, they, they measure it based on, you know, the universe is expanding at a rapid pace. Yeah. You heard of that, right? The expansion of the universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if, if it was infinite, I mean, we wouldn't see it expanding, would we? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand yeah, and that. And that's, yeah. that's how they compute the age of the universe. So what they do is like, because it's expanding at a certain pace, they, I think, they have a formula which traces it back to its origin. And that's how they... Uh, come to the understanding of this 13.8 billion figure in terms of... How old are you? I'm um, uh, 28. 28? 28. Yeah. Okay. Why you think he's a baby? <laughs> Sounds very young. <laughs> well, see, he's, he is young. 28 is young. Okay, so... I, I mean, because it's finite, because it has, let's say, a date of Wait, birth... So, um, yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt. It began you know, to exist... Like... Um, it cannot be infinite, hence this pantheism understanding is it's wrong because it's definitely not eternal, the universe. So it cannot be the universe like constantly expanding. So it is, like, yeah. So can't I make it infinite if it's constantly expanding? No, if it's if it's infinite, the expansion doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> how can how can something that's infinite expand? Expand to what? Like constantly expand, like the yeah. like a infinite rate. I don't know if that makes sense. Or no, not. it's not infinite because they have already. The thing is, it's not eternal. I think that's the main question we need to deal with, because you do believe one of the attributes of God is that He's eternal. He didn't begin to exist at some point in time. Yeah, I mean that's yeah that that's the only logical. Exactly. Yeah. And because you mentioned the Big Bang, so you understand the theory, how it works, that there was um, there was this um, um, there was a point in time when it began to exist. So there was a singularity and then this Big Bang happened later. And that's how and then the expansion happened. I'm just trying to fast forward everything. But there is definite it's definitely finite. It had a time when it initiated. Hence, it cannot be eternal. And we believe that God is eternal. Okay, yeah. Okay? So yeah. It, cannot be panthe it cannot be pantheism because the universe itself is finite, had a beginning. Hence, it also has a cause. 
And that cause is like you said, it's logical only to believe that it's a creator. There must be some someone powerful who willed it into existence, who created it. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it cannot be, again, because um, the other thing that differs in Sikhism, I think, is, I don't know, do you believe in reincarnation? Um, I personally, not really, no. Oh, sorry, I meant in Sikhism. They believe in reincarnation, right? They actually believe it's kind of like a mixture between like heaven and hell and reincarnation. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, like they do believe in reincarnation, yeah. And you believe in karma as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what is your understanding of karma? It's basically like if you do something bad, it will come back to you. Right. And what do you think about that? Um, I think it's quite subjective, to be honest. Uh, I mean, it, some people say it happens. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it could happen, but it can also be man-made. Obviously, if you do something bad to someone, they can. It's, it's just a bit obvious that they can, like, you know, do something bad to you. So, yeah, I mean, karma. Yeah, I mean, I do. I don't know if it's like. I don't know. I, I like. I don't believe it's like a spiritual thing. I just believe that it's just like um, like a man-made thing. Like it's just, it's just like common sense. You know, if if you do something bad, obviously it's gonna like come back to you. You can you know, if you do a crime, you can go to prison or what. Like you know, if you hit someone, they can hit you back. So yeah. So but, I mean, what you what you saw is what what you reap. Basically, that kind of principle. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So, but in you know, I I see kind of a flaw in that kind of system because. One thing it lacks is forgiveness. So it's more like a it's it's more like a, a vengeance rather than justice as such. Do you see what I mean? So if you do if you do bad to someone, then bad will come to you. If you do good to someone, then good will come to you. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, like let's say if, if you do bad to someone and then you regret it and you feel um, remorse and you even apologize to the guy. Will the karma system uh, still punish you for the bad you have done? I think I, I don't. I don't think it will. Then, innit? because if you, if I mean, if the if the guy accepts your apology, then obviously he's not gonna do anything bad to you. So, what if he doesn't? Yeah, you got a point. I mean, yeah, he obviously <laughs> like, yeah, like they. I mean, it's the other whatever they decide yeah. to do back. Yeah, they can like not so forgive that's... you. Yeah, yeah, that's the other difference in Islam. Because in Islam, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is merciful and He's able to forgive. So, for example, if uh, you have done many sins in your life, and if you were to take the shahada now, all your previous sins will be forgiven. Okay? No karma. Okay. And this yeah. is this is the mercy of Allah because that gives you a new lease in life where you can start over. Yes, so put your past behind you. And restart with a clean slate. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the main attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his mercy. Yes, and his his mercy excels over his wrath. Okay, yeah. So he's off obviously he's also not just going to forgive everyone. Uh he's also just, isn't he? So based on his I mean, his his wisdom, his mercy, his love, and his justice, he decides whom to punish and whom to forgive. Okay, so it's yeah. entirely up to him. But there is obviously, we have the, um, I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to forgive. Yes, he's, he's not bound by any law to say that you can't forgive, he can't forgive anyone. And there has to be a vengeance all the time, like the karma system. It's not like that. Okay, yeah, that yeah, that, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we don't believe in reincarnation. So you get one life, one chance, and that's it. So there's no uncertainty what you, whether you're going to become an animal or an insect or whatever it is, you know, uh, that uh, depends on you. Again, the karma principle, isn't it? So yeah. you get one life and you have, until you breathe your last, you have the option to... Seek forgiveness from Almighty for the sins you have done to to change to turn your life around and to do the will of the Almighty God. Because He didn't just bring us to this world unguided. He gave us guidance through His messengers, His prophets, 
and through the revelations, you know, like we have the Quran, the last revelation, which was revealed to the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. 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 So what is your understanding of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Um I mean I know I know I know the basics. I mean he was um like given a revelation was it in uh in a like fourteen hundred years ago in a cave yeah. by the angel Gabriel. That's right. Angel Gabriel, yeah. Um and I knew that he was like illiterate and like he couldn't read or write. And like he was like a um, was he a shepherd? Is it something, something like something like that, isn't it? Yeah, I mean he was he he was a trader. So it's one of his uh, um, what do you say? This this was his um, career kind of thing, and he obviously he had uncles who were traders as well, and within his family he learned he learned the trade. So yes, I mean, so fourteen hundred years ago, um, at the age of forty. He received the revelation in the cave of Hera in, in Mecca. And since that time, he's uh, been preaching the oneness of God. You know, all uh, we don't believe that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the one and only prophet in Islam. We believe um, that the very first man, uh, we believe in Adam as being the first man. And then there was a series of prophets and messengers after him. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the last in the series. Okay, yeah. Yes, I know that, so, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So as I, as I mentioned earlier, like Allah created us and he didn't just leave us in this world to fend for ourselves. He told us the do's and the don'ts. So you must have heard of the halal and the haram. Okay, the yeah, prohibit, yeah. Uh, the halal is the permitted and haram is the, uh, the things that are prohibited. Things like alcohol, gambling, fornication, adultery, uh, usury, all these things, you know, which are bad for the individual, bad for your family, bad for the community. So everything Allah has forbidden is something that if you if you look into it, it's some, uh, you will come to the understanding that this is definitely something that should be prohibited, that we should avoid, that we should keep away from. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the last message. And by the way, Allah sent messengers to every nation. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah it's about the world, to, yeah. Exactly, so every nation. And that's the reason, you know, many times you hear these stories, many times, even in uh, the Dharmic faiths uh, or even in the Abrahamic faith, there are many similar stories, like the story of the flood, for example, uh, the story of um, Abraham, for example, the story of... Um, uh, Noah, Lot, and all this. So there are similar stories, but with dip, with a few variations, um, depending on which part of the world you're talking about. Yes, and this gives us an indication that there must be a common source. Yeah. Yeah. And this common source, we believe, is the Creator. Yes, He's Allah, and He's the one who sent messengers and prophets to every nation. Why? Because to warn them. And to give them the glad tidings of um, the reward if they obey and do the will of God Almighty. Because it's it's very important. You know, whenever you, uh, whenever there is a rule, for example, you're, you're from UK, right? Yeah, yeah. So when you when you go for your driving test, you are told about the uh, the handbook how how to uh, what to do and what not to do. Yes, the the traffic laws, for example, the traffic rules. And this is something, the do's and the don'ts are there in every single system out there. So if, it, if it's a robust system, and that is something which is implemented, whether it's in a company, whether it's in a country, whether it's, uh, um, I don't know, state-wise, nationwide, depending on it, every system has a handbook. So similarly, these revelations which God gave us through the messengers are guidebooks. They are, the, they are a source of our guidance. So we have a handbook which tells us what to do and what not to do. So on the day of judgment, you cannot say, when you're standing in front of God, you cannot say that I had no clue what to do. Because clearly, if you had read the Quran, or you have read, if you were in the previous time, read the previous mes uh, messages, the previous revelations, then you would be told clearly and distinctly as what things are prohibited, what things are permitted, and how you should go about uh, your daily life, for example. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, 
from what you heard about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you think he was a true messenger of God? Um, yeah, I mean, I can't really deny any of the any of the claims um, that yeah. I've seen so far. So, um, yeah, I mean, it seems genuine. Because you, uh, you see, if he was not a true messenger, if he was just pretending to be, uh, you know, just just for his name or for wealth or something, then he could have easily got that. But when he died, he was not a rich man. You know, he had a few possessions, less than us even. So he was given, in fact, when he started preaching, you know, I told you that when he received the message at the age of 40 from God Almighty, the revelation, he started to preach and he told the people to believe in the oneness of God, to believe in one, one God and to leave all. So there's no God except Allah, uh, which means that all the other deities that you were worshipping, because the, he lived uh, amongst the Meccans, the Quraysh, and they used to worship idols. And there was a lot of idolatry. And he said, there's no God except Allah, which means all of those are negated. All of those false gods are negated, except the one true God. And when he gave this message, I think a lot of Quraysh, they were unhappy. Because, you know, you're used to this um, cycle of belief because you, you're you living in a family, in a culture where everybody else is worshipping idols. So you feel left out, you know. That's the reason you do it, maybe. Uh, so and they they used to worship idols, and because they had some like like in Hinduism today, you know, if you go to different um, parts of India, they have their favorite idols. So for example, they have uh, I don't know, they do more Durga Puja in the is it gone? I guess so. Did I bore him? <laughs> so I was just saying they do Durga Puja in India in 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 the in Bengal area and they do Ganpati in the eastern area and so on. I'm yeah. gonna try. Can you kick? Can you kick? Can you kick me off? I'm <laughs> there. You're not muted. Yeah, kick me off. Kick me off. I can't get off. I'm stuck. I'm there. Press this. I'll kick off. Yeah, I'm off. Sorry, I was on TikTok with Frankie. Oh, Talking around. Right. Oh That's okay. My God, man. Come on. So are all these people you dragged in here from TikTok? No, I've just been speaking to an owl on her live. No, no, I mean all the guests today, were they all from TikTok? Um no, no, no. Just Frankie, I think. Is it? I, don't I know. thought Did that lady was all oh yeah, she was Frankie. That is Frankie. And the one <laughs> before that. No? Yeah, no, so people said I've upset Frankie, I was harsh on her. I just <laughs> chatted to now, no problem. Yeah, you're just abusing me, tell everyone, warning everyone away from me. And now you're like, saying, no, good, good problem. Anyway, she's okay. chill now, which is cool. Well, Welcome with that, mate. Hopefully, Sikh. hopefully our Sikh, ex-Sikh brother will uh, listen to the discussion, and inshallah, may Allah give me there. So, mm. yeah, we can only make good for them. And just okay. for everyone watching yeah. as well, who thinks I'm harsh on Frankie, there was another lady who abused me big time on the stream, uh, Dan Danielle, if you remember her. Proper abused me for leaving my daughters and all that. Oh, well, yeah. She went on to take a shahada, so and, and and apologized me for to me for that abuse. So relax, people. <laughs> Let's end up with this geezer. Oh no, it's still me. Just, 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 the, just the name knows he's going to be stupid. Just the name. I wonder if it's that guy. He used to come before. I don't. Know, he, he can't even switch off his flipping. Super ultimate perfect excellent. It's going to be a minute. <laughs> Can you speak? Thing? Can you take your mute off? I think they're all scared of you now, Hamza. Me? I'm, you I'm, might I'm abuse fucking... them. <laughs> all right, bring in someone else. Is there anybody else? No, that's it. That's it. I, okay, I took the link away ages ago. So maybe we've been going now in five hours. Alhamdulillah. Can you hear me? Oh, finally. Hey, we can hear you. You woke up. <laughs> woke up. The arena to challenge Islam. Yeah. yeah you, can, you can talk about Islam. Yeah, go ahead. A quick question, please. Yeah. On this planet for millennia, when it comes to concepts such as justice, punishing crime, a certain level of proof has to be provided. For instance, for a theft, X number of weeks imprisonment, manslaughter, higher sentences. The higher the claim, the higher the sentence or punishment or rule, the higher the burden of proof required or the crime committed or crime made, claim made, which everyone can clearly understand in their own jurisdictions and languages. On that basis, when talking about eternity in the hereafter as per Islam, 
there must be in this life almost an intensely high, almost infinite level of clearly understood evidence. Where is that evidence from the Quran for its authenticity? The Quran 1038 itself provides a literary test of excellence. It tells us to bring a surah, even verse like it. Question is, who will judge its authenticity? Because no matter how Arabic grammatically it is authentic or eloquent, no Muslim who knows the Quran would ever accept it. For instance, if I was to say to you, there's a verse, a small surah, Kul la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. Nobody would accept it as being a surah or a verse. So the question is, what kind of test is that? Are, are you reading from a script? Oh, definitely. Come on, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to be as quick as I can. I swear he stood in front of his room like this. <laughs> <laughs> reading from no, a but... scroll. To be fair, it's good for him because at least he's concise rather than some of the other guests that we've had on. He can prepare. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. At least he's preparing. So, okay. So, uh, so your question was twofold. One is you need to have a high burden of proof because of the potential punishment. Is, is that the first part of the question? Yes, absolutely, and especially yeah. in Islam, because you claim the Quran is a verbatim word of God. It has to be clear, understood in the languages for all peoples, all time. Authentic and eloquent. And if somebody, if that is the test, that bring a surah verse like it, as I said, if I was to say, to claim, first of all, I have to say, I respect your beliefs, I sincerely respect it, but I'm just making it the question, is if I was to say this is a verse, Cool. La ilaha illa Jesus, sorry, Allah. hold on one second. La, one second. Uh, uh, you meant two uh, points. Muhammad Rasulullah. You made not finish points. the script yet, Sharif. This is not. You a can't stop. <laughs> I must read. Hey, 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 hey. Don't make a laugh. This is very serious, Hamza. About a religion, 1.6 billion and 2.3, uh, 2.8 billion uh, Christians. Oh God. 2.8 billion Christians now. Okay, so Jesus. Can I? Is that is that his name? What's his name? Do you guys not know? What's okay. your name? The name is not important. Far more important is the question. The yeah, question yeah. Is okay. It's a simple question. It, What's it, your it name? Gives you the test, not your <laughs> test. Just call it for its test. The Quran okay. test for its authenticity is. Bob, do the surah like it? Bob, uh, Bob, you will judge yourself again. Who will judge time. that test? Because <laughs> the Muslim claims the verbatim word of, time, yeah? of the Quran is the verbatim word of Allah. So if it is a verbatim, so, unlike the oh Bible, which is not claimed ever to be the verbatim word of Allah, where fourth time who is going to judge? You're mentioning the same point. Should we go for a a simple question. The same script. That's the reason. <laughs> God's God. sake! What's his argument? Do you, do you want do you want to have a productive conversation, or you don't want to? Absolutely, if Hamza, uh, be quiet and let you speak. No, no, you need to be quiet for, <laughs> and you need to start to realize. What the question I'm asking you, I'm not, I'm, and, and I'm asking in order to clarify what your contention is. Do you understand? Absolutely, this is an arena to challenge Islam. This is not your other, other, uh, streams no, like, you understand uh, my religion. point. Christ I'm asking you, religions. I'm trying to ask you questions. We ask the questions, you answer the question if you can answer. If you can answer, then respectfully say, I don't know the answer. You don't answer a question with a question. I, you need I'm to be asking quiet a question for to, to answer. clarify, <laughs> to to clarify your no. I would like a chicky panini and I would like a latte, please. <laughs> I don't know. Speak you normally. Know, I'm really Speak tired normally. now. Relax. <laughs> yeah, just relax, bud. I'm tired. I'm quite chilled. At it's the so moment. tense. <laughs> Although I'm trying to understand, the reason why I'm asking you questions is because I'm having a conversation with you. And the reason why I'm having a conversation with you is because I'm trying to understand what your contentions are. Now, it seems to me, yeah, and you can clarify, you know, to say, no, it's not. But it seems to me you've got two parts of the question. One part is like an argument to say that the burden of proof has to be extremely high. The second part is related specifically to the Quran as a linguistic miracle. Yeah. And how do we judge it? Am I correct? Are those two parts to the question? Yes, you are correct, and they are right. Linked. So this, so now let me ask you another question to clarify further. So in that first part, why is Islam, because I assume you're Christian, why is Islam exclusively got this very, very high burden of proof and maybe Christianity doesn't? 
again, you are asking a question with a question to divert. This is a, cha a restraint oh for this challenging Islam. It's a dialogue. This is I'm asking Islam. I mean, it's, 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 it's not a court of law. I'm asking you your Hinduism. contention. I would ask Hinduism. Since you're Muslims, you're all Muslims. This is why is Islam. And in particular with Islam, as I said, because you claim the Quran is the verbatim word of God, other Christians just do not claim there to be the verbatim's the word. The verbatim. The verbatim. Uh, agency or others. So that is why. So please do not ask any uh, uh, answer a question with them. Just answer the simple. You understand the question. Answer it, please. Who will judge the test? And what kind of a test is that of a linguistic? No, test? you do. Hold on, hold on. I just said to you, I explained to you that there's two parts to your question. You've got two questions. There's one part, there's a second part. You said, yes, I do. Then I asked you a question to further clarify the first part, because we're going to take this slowly, yeah, and painfully, sounds like, as possible, in order to understand what you're trying to say and break it down and then demonstrate how you don't really have an argument and you're not really, you don't really understand what the whole discussion here. But so the first part is to do this idea of the high burden of test. It sounds very much like an argument that somebody like Schellenberg, who's an atheist, brings called the divine hiddenness argument, yeah? To say that if God exists, loving, he would ex he would then manifest himself in such a way that people would be compelled to believe in him. So your similar argument is saying, if Islam is true, then Islam would have to compel itself or provide such a strong enough evidence that people can't deny it. So I'm asking you, you being a Christian, why are you singling out Islam for this criteria and you you're not applying it to to your own religious belief what does it why and that's a clarification question about is why you're looking at islam on this do you understand now mr sharif abu Layth, i understand your dawa tactic i can guarantee you islam, islam, uh, I, islam i'm not singling out islam if this was a buddhist channel i would ask the buddhists hindus hindus sikhs accordingly do you, you ask yourself Christian, you ask yourself that's why I'm asking you the question. Oh, you ask and yourself. also because the Quran makes Do the you? Bob, 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 pay attention. Bob, Bob, this is how it works here, right? We don't accept double standards. We don't accept hypocritical positions. You're coming here with a position that refutes your own belief. That's your argument. Yeah? Mr. All Sharif, all Sharif is asking... Well, all Sharif is asking, all Sharif is asking is you is, is to how do you explain away Islam. your own belief? This stream of yours is to challenge. It's very, very simple. Other religions. You say want again, say again. I will stream answer, of answer whose? questions on that and answer your question. No, it's too late. I'm gone. Too late, man. I'm tired, man. You know <laughs> Get out of here, you punk. Too, Richard. Do you know what? Gonna waste our time with that. It honestly sounded like he was on some trolley. You know, the guy was he was so hyped up and so ready. And it's waiting like, a while. You could feel his teeth were like, you know, when he's reading the script, they're like crunching with each other. Well, you know, he's, I'm trying to understand why he's making this specifically about it. So now he's saying, no, I'm not because I'll do it for Buddhism, this, that, and the other. Okay, but that's not how he presented the argument. He presented the argument, say, Islam has this big burden of proof that in essence, almost like no other religion has. And then it's the, because it's the exact word of God preserved, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, you had a linguistic miracle, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm trying to understand why he's connecting these two points together. Yeah. yeah. And why he doesn't apply it to Christianity, this type of argument, you know. And then we could have gone into the discussion about, you know. You couldn't get does... past that because you can't say, stop answering my question with a question. I uh, know. He they, doesn't. They... The, the Christians in the chat are like, why'd you kick him? <laughs> the battle! He was their best shot. <laughs> oh, that was a good arena. That was a nice mix-up of people. Sorry we didn't get any hardcore atheists support, but you had some earlier on. That was good. We, we, we had that weirdo, the guy who's a solipsist, but he's not really a solipsist. So. Oh, Peter, he was, was all right. Him. I quite liked him. Peter. Oh, no. no. Right, uh, right. Oh, Ryan. that reliant Ryan or whatever. No, yeah. re re reflective Ryan. He was called reflecting. Ryan. Ir irrelevant Ryan. <laughs> yeah, reflecting. I, I, yeah, reflecting Ryan. Yeah. All right, guys, yeah. we'll kill it there. So I'll say salam to everybody. Uh, Sabor, Jazakallah khair for joining. I shall see you on Wednesday, inshallah. Tuesday. Oh, yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> no.
And Hashid Dawais, anything going on with you? Yeah, alhamdulillah, we're having uh, some good um, live streams with the Hinduism topic uh, again. So we had a... Oh, you... No, yeah, you were there in one of them, isn't it? The rise I showed my face uh, a little bit. I didn't know what I could add, but I tried. Rise of Hindutva in the West. And the other topic we'd covered last week was um, a sister who became a Muslim from Hinduism. Oh, I heard so she was just, really good. Yeah, mashallah. She was... Uh, sister Swat is pretty good, yeah. You bring her to the arena? Um... Maybe inshallah, yeah. Is that that sister who was really good the other day on your? Yeah. You've been on twice now on your channel. Yes, yes, sister Saudi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very energetic, mashallah. Very eloquent. I mean, be nice to try a sister out on the on the arena. See how they. Yeah, thank her. Yeah. But, I encourage uh, more women to come on. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. So we need. Right. To, we need. To, yeah, alhamdulillah. Just See if I remember the Hashim at Dawawise.com ever ever promoting himself. Get in there <laughs> with them subscribers. How many now, bro? Get in there. <laughs> Only 60k. Allah <laughs> Akbar. Say Allah. Akbar. Only 10 behind. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Take care. Uh, brother Sharif, man, you might as well stay. You're always here, man. I'm always I'm here, here man. man. You know what? I, I'm going to ask you to now change the uh, the channel's name now. Isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. <laughs> What's that? Good cop, bad cop. Honestly, you became the bad cop again. I like it. I like it. We, switch, we switch roles. Oh, yeah, that's Good. true. That's good. Uh, good but, but yeah, no, yeah. seriously, thanks for coming, man. I know you were, um, I asked you last minute, and uh, yeah. mashallah. And then, one and of your other tap boys, it, huh? the problem, I was going to say, the problem is that you send me these private messages while the stream's going. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> uh, say, we have to get to pay ourselves. Why laughing or smiling? <laughs> What's that? I said, then the stream, the, the comments in the stream are saying, why, why is Sharif la laughing or smiling? <laughs> and, and I think it's worse because I'm tired. So then I get giggling and it's inappropriate. You know what I mean? No, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's the right time he just has to just put off his camera, honestly. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyone who wants to know where Sharif is? Because, mashallah, you've seen his eloquence in action. Thought Adventure podcast. No, no. Uh, if anybody wants to know where I am, just come here. <laughs> just, oh, yeah, yeah. Just come to the arena. You'll be here. You'll be here, inshallah. All right, dude. Salam alaikum. Thanks for coming. Thank Always a pleasure. Mashallah. And that was that. So, um, no, no after party. Come on, man. It's been five hours. Alhamdulillah. Um, mashallah. 21 years of Muslim. Oh, actually, that was yesterday. No. Been on years in a day, alhamdulillah. All right, guys, um, what's coming up? Yeah, I'm going to try. Maybe we'll speak to Swati, see if she wants to come on, inshallah. I heard she was really good, inshallah. So, uh, alhamdulillah. So, what's to come? What's to come? Um, there's no stream this uh, There's no stream this Sunday because um, we've got um, EF Tower doing their stream, and I don't want to clash with them. So, we're not going to do a, a video this week. So the next time I'll see you guys is Sunday Chill, inshallah, uh, where we can relax and have a chin wag over what's happened um, today in the arena um, and do what we do. And I do it all really nicely. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you for being part of this. Arena wouldn't be the arena without you guys in the chat. I mean, if there was only like 50 people watching, it wouldn't be the arena. So we need you guys to come and keep um, poking us, prompting us. You need to calm down a little bit on the uh, paranoia. Everyone's a Hindu. Everyone's not an ex-Muslim. Get to read Fatiha. No. We have to get out of this habit. Don't worry. I can smell out uh, trolls if necessary. Um, Frankie, um, I think her medication was playing up a little bit. Um, I've spoken to Frankie on TikTok just a minute ago. She, she dragged me onto her live. Um, we had a chat. She's not offended. Um, she's a northern lass, tough as nails. So you don't get offended by what people say to you. You know what I mean? Um, and she was asking me questions about Allah and things like that, which is cool. So we'll have the conversations, inshallah. Watch this space. I think she'll become a Muslim, to be honest with you. Um, she's just in that resistance phase right now, inshallah. Um, that's that. I've no idea what Axel's on about. I've no idea. Yeah, the last guest just had to go. Flipping it, reading a, reading a flipping scroll. You know what I mean? 
Um, but yeah, but thank you for coming. I really do appreciate it. Like I say, it wouldn't be the arena without you guys. Mashallah, we nearly reached, I think, 1,500 viewers, which is really good, inshallah. Uh, the channel's hit 70,000, so we're going from strength to strength. Hopefully we can get some new friends in the chat from the new subscribers that are joining the channel, which is pretty cool. So I'll give them all a warm welcome. We might find trolls coming in, do what we do. We don't have to abuse them. We 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 uh, we cajole them. We make them friends. We make them allies. Um, hindsight's back. As, as an anniversary of me being a Muslim, I released her from the troll, from the box of trolls. So she's back in the chat now. Uh, good behave yourself. Um, and that's it. Uh, is it really good stream? This is your anniversary. I want to tell you to be really well with your channel. Sometimes I disagree with you, but I can never stop watching your videos. I'm, uh, so nice to hear that. Thank you. Appreciate it. I can't please everyone all the time. I, I do my best. Um, there's hindsight. I do it. Um, I do my best. I try. I try to be nice. And then I need to give it a slap when necessary. You know, not a, not a slap as in um, abusive slap, but a slap as in to... to, to crack someone out of delirium. You know when someone's delirious and you slap them to wake them up? So that's that. Om, thank you very much for your uh, super sticker there. Keep it up, inshallah. Ah, oh, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so hindsight's going to be good, even though she started preaching during the stream. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, going to make a podcast. Um, I've been told to make a podcast. And actually, um, Musim gives some really good ideas to have a podcast. So we shall see. Uh, yeah, slap back into your senses. It sometimes it needs to be done. Do you get me? Just yeah, it's an intellectual slap, but it's also a flipping slap. Just a flipping, flipping. Have you seen that airplane um, thingy? The, the 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 slap on airplanes. Hamza, don't mind what they say about you. You're uh, nice to the right ones. Keep doing, please. Yeah, like it, bro. Sorry, bro. And my sister. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words of support. Uh, you know, my missus was telling me, calm down, calm down. I said, look, I know what I'm doing. This is what I do. Relax. Don't worry. Um, everything's under control. Um, this, is, this, is, this is how I operate. Alhamdulillah. You know, sometimes you need to tell someone straight, but then you need to say, you know, I, I didn't do it to offend you or anything like that. It's just sometimes, you know, the truth is going to hurt you sometimes. And I'm a kind of person, rather than peel the band, the plaster off, I'm going to rip the plaster off and stab. Oh, the podcast with Sharif. Sharif's awesome, man. Honestly, really do like him. I have to do something with the Ponders as well. Ponders is really good. Support's really good. They're all, alhamdulillah, they're all, they're all top lads. That's the beautiful thing about Islam. Friends got replaced with brothers. Alhamdulillah. You know what I mean? Uh, Hamza, remember the debate when a biologist claimed that he ha has... A <laughs> remember the debate when the biologist claimed he had an experiment in a lab where he made genes mutate and do something delicious and support was there. Never completed was their second part. Uh, I don't know. I don't even remember that particular. I remember the one who said, when I asked him, have you done any experiments in evolution? And he's there thinking, listen, I'm like, what are you thinking about, mate? You ain't done nothing. Oh, alhamdulillah. Oh, you're too kind, Katakuma. I wouldn't say I'm one of the Dawa champions, but I do know what I'm doing. I do know what I'm doing to a point. Um, All right, let, let's, uh, let's, we, we, we can't leave without this, can we? There's a mental in Speaker's Corner. Mental? Have you seen Mental, me I swear, it's like the local mental hospital had a day, has a day trip every Sunday and the coach piles up and Hatun gets on it and Acid gets on it and Captain Bloodfire gets on it and Kay gets on it and Soko gets on it. And you they all and they bring it to, to Hyde Park and they all pile off. They spend the day at Speaker's Corner, go for a meal later, and then it's back to the hospital. Because they're all mental. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm not saying Christians are mental. I'm just saying the Christian speakers at Speaker's Corner are mental. All right. Um, that's it. Oh, I hate leaving you guys. I shall see you on Sunday. Sunday chill. Maybe a little bit earlier than usual, maybe like 10 o'clock, maybe because I've got something to do on Sunday. But uh, yes, I was trying to, the irony is I was I was having that conversation with Snoop. I think if I you should be on the bloody bus. Uh, anyway, I'm done. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi. Thanks for joining. Here comes that lion. I'm out of here.